Jello program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston and Phil Harris in his orchestra. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we have a little surprise for you. Jack wired us that owing to a slight delay on the train, he'll be just a few minutes late. So in the meantime, while we're waiting for Jack, I'll turn the microphone over to his good friend and pinch hitter, Georgie Jessel. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Hello again. This is George Jessel, the stand-in talking. And I want to tell you folks, I'm very happy to be here tonight for two reasons. First, it's an honor and a pleasure to help Jack out. And second, it's a job. And, of course, Don, it's nice to be working with you, too. Well, thank you, Georgie. I think we'll get along just fine. Oh, by the way, Don, uh, Jack does expect to give me something for this. By that, I mean I hope he won't take advantage of our friendship. Oh, no, Georgie. Jack wouldn't do a thing like that. I'm sure he'll compensate you for your work. Well, I hope it's with money. You see, Don, (laughs) I've already got a Boy Scout knife. (laughs) And I don't mind playing benefits for the needy, but after all, Jack is not the starving Armenian. Well, I think you'll find Jack perfectly fair. I'll be happy if I can find him. Well, well, how are you, Phil? I'm glad to see you. Hello, Georgie. Are you substituting here, too? No, I'm on the program every Sunday. Oh. Say, Georgie, I heard you talking to Don. Are you worried whether or not Jack's going to pay you for tonight? Well, Phil, I'm not exactly worried, but I'd like to do one program where I don't have to write in a part for my lawyer. (laughs) Anyway, Don... What happened to Jack, and why is he late? Well, it seems that Jack's butler, Rochester, got off the train at Albuquerque, and Jack went out to look for him. I see. And the train pulled away without him. Well, any train that would do that, I'll bet it whistles at girls at every crossing. (laughs) Well, I guess he'll be here pretty soon, though. He's on a pretty fast train right now. Well, Rochester, we're rolling right along now. Yeah, Mr. Benny, it sure is a long trip. I'll say. Just think four whole days on a train. Oh, well, we'll be home pretty soon. I hope so. We're running out of sandwiches. <laughs> well, we would have been home yesterday if you hadn't got off at Albuquerque to look at those Indians. I thought I was back in Harlem. <laughs> Harlem, I told you before, all those people at the station were Indians. Indians? Yes. Well, just the same, I saw a papoose eating a pork chop. <laughs> Well, what of it? He can be an Indian and still eat a pork chop. I know, but he had it between two slices of watermelon. <laughs> All right, you win. But I want to tell you something, Rochester. It's the last time I'm going to take you to New York. You're supposed to help me. The only time I saw you is when you needed money. Why, you spent more than I did. That ain't no record. <laughs> well, never mind that. Another thing, you lied to me. You told me you needed the money for a new suit. Now, where is it? The suit? Yes, the suit. You mean the one I had my heart set on? Yes, where's that new suit I gave you the money for? Well, I'll tell you, boss. I was on my way to the store and got mixed up in a game of African badminton. (laughs) Oh, so you lost your suit in a crap game, huh? Yes, sir. I rolled myself right out of the Easter parade. (laughs) Oh, you did. Well, it's a good thing we're going home. Say, Mr. Benny, who's taking your place on the program tonight? A fellow named Georgie Jessel. He's a great pal of mine, he is. Georgie Jessel? Yeah. You know, I've never seen him. What does he look like? Well, I'd say that Jessel was medium height, nice personality. Looks something like an anteater. <laughs> Although I doubt if he does. <laughs> say, is there a radio in this observation car? There's one right over there by that lady. Oh, fine. Pardon me, madam. Do you mind if I tune in the radio? No, not at all. Go right ahead. Thanks. I'm very anxious to hear the Jack Benny program. You're just the type. (laughs) Well, there's a fan for you. Rochester, tune in NBC. It's around 65 on the dial there. Yes, sir. Well, Don, how am I doing so far? Do you think I'm handling the program all right? Well, to tell you the truth, Georgie, and uh, please don't repeat this to Jack. Oh, you can trust me. You know, I think you've given this program new life. Frankly, you're much more amusing than Jack. He ain't kidding, Georgie. You're dynamite. He didn't even ask Bill. Say, uh, Georgie, you've known Jack quite a little while, haven't you? Yes, Jack and I have been in show business about the same length of time. As a matter of fact, we started out in the very same theater. Oh, in the same theater, huh? Mm-hmm. And even in those days, Jack was a real showman. He wouldn't sell one single peanut during my act. <laughs> That's a lie. It was popcorn. <laughs> oh, say, Don, where's Mary? Here I am. Hello, Georgie. There's Mary. Doesn't she sound natural? Well, Mary, I bet you're anxious for Jack to get back. It'll seem sort of strange working with me. No, I like to work with you, Georgie. You want to know something? Now, don't repeat this to Jack, will you? Oh, you can trust me. Well, believe me, it gets pretty tiresome week after week looking at that blank face of his. Hmm. (laughs) 
Looks like a bowl of mush. Hmm. Mush yet. Well, Mary, after all, I'm not so much to look at myself. I've never been taken for a Myrna Loy. Of course, she's much taller than I am. But at least you're different than Jack. You smile and laugh once in a while. Jack never laughs. Well, my teeth don't slip out. <laughs> Rochester, my teeth don't slip out. No, sir, you hold them in better than anybody. Get away from me. I want to hear this. Say, Mary, I'd like to ask you something, and believe me, you're the first one I've mentioned this to. Now, what do you think Jack's going to give me for taking his place tonight? Oh, he'll take care of you. First, he'll tell you how wonderful it was of you to come up here, and then he'll give you a great big pat on the back. You mean the same as I get every place else. <laughs> but, Mary, Jack isn't that tight. He isn't, eh? Listen, Georgie. Jack has been in New York a week, and I'll bet he's still got California air in his pocketbook. But surely... But surely he'd open it up to let the moth see Radio City, wouldn't he? <laughs> Rochester! He ain't no good at all! <laughs> see, I wish this train would get him. Uh, come here, Georgie. You want me to tell you something? What is it? You remember that birthday party Jack gave for himself about a month ago and he invited a big crowd? Yes, I remember. <laughs> <laughs> what are you laughing at? Well, between the first two courses, he ran out and had all the presents appraised. <laughs> <laughs> and then what happened? Was Jack mad. He only broke even on the dinner. <laughs> hmm, the little traitor. They're sure tearing you down, boss. Hmm, to think I bought them all gifts. And Mary's I can't wear. You can fold it up and use it for silk handkerchief. Right. <laughs> well, Mary, you've given me a vivid picture of what I'll have to go through when Jack gets here. Georgie, by the time you get your money out of Jack, you'll be so bent over, you'll have to endorse a check on the floor. Oh, well, play, Phil. With my luck, not only I won't get paid, but when I leave the studio, I'll probably tear my pants. Go ahead, Phil. Swing Annie Laurie through the ride, played by Phil Harris and his orchestra. And I must say, Phil, after hearing the boys, I'm surprised at the way Jack stands up here every week and keeps running down your music. He shouldn't do that. Of course he shouldn't. My music is all right. No, it's pretty bad, but Jack should never mention it. <laughs> I tell you, Phil, the way I feel about swing music is just this. Now, wait a minute, George. Here comes Kenny Baker. Do you know him? Well, no, not personally. You like him, George. He's a great kid. He thinks Gracie Allen should be president. Mm. <laughs> Quiet, my wife thinks she is. But anyway, <laughs> you leave Kenny to me. I'll handle him all right. I'll bet your dollar he'll drive you nuts. All right, it's a bet. Here he comes, Georgie. Oh, yeah. Hello, Kenny. Hello, Jack. Did you have a nice trip? <laughs> a nice trip? What is this? Hey, Don, didn't Jack go to New York? Oh, wait a minute, Kenny. It's Jessel. Jessel. Where's that? <laughs> well, I've lost 35 cents already. Listen, Kenny. I'm just taking Jack's place till he gets here. My name is Jessel. Oh, yes. Well, gee whiz, I didn't recognize you there for a minute. I thought you didn't. Well, you know me now, don't you? Sure. Say, didn't I see you in a picture the other day with Betty Davis? What picture? Jessel Bell. <laughs> Jessel Bell. Look, Kenny, the name of the picture is Jezebel. It wasn't me. I don't make pictures. And here's your dollar, Mary. Thanks. <laughs> Hey, what's going on? Nothing, Kenny. I just bet Mary a dollar that you couldn't drive me nuts. Gee, you're a sucker. <laughs> well, this entire event looks good for a loss to me. Well, hello, fellas. Here I am. It's sure good to be back. I'm certainly glad to see you, Jack. Believe me. Me too. I really missed you, old pal. So did I, Jack. Gee, am I tickled to see you. Oh, yes, yes, of course, certainly. I'm tight, except for my teeth, which slip out. And I got a face like a bowl of mush. Doesn't have to be in a bowl. <laughs> well, there was a radio on the train. I heard every word you fellas said. There was fine loyalty talking behind my back. Well, I didn't say anything against you, Jack. I know you didn't, Kenny. I just got here. <laughs> I know that, too. Hello, Georgie. How do you like it here? I'll know in a little while. <laughs> well, I, I appreciate your coming over and helping me out tonight. It was a great display of friendship. Here it comes, folks. 
Now, look, Jack, patting on the back, that's for children. You know that, don't you? <laughs> We're very good friends, but this is my business, the same as yours. I understand that, but look, Georgie... Look, we... nothing. You wired me to come over here, I did, and I expect to get paid. Well, all right, all right. Gee, you'd think I was a chiseler or a tightwad or something. Up to something, you were pretty hot. <laughs> I just don't want to be robbed, that's all. Robbed? Why, I left my own birthday party to come here, cake and all. Strangers had to blow out my candles. Well, now, come, calm down, Georgie. Come, look, I'll give you a check for whatever you think your time is worth. Now you're talking friendship. All right. All right, what do you want? Well, Jack, I don't want too little or too much. In other words, I don't want a cigar or an annuity. Now, don't beat around the bush, Georgie. How much do you want? I'll take $500. If you want to give me 10% extra for my birthday, that's up to you. <laughs> up to me? If it's up to Jack, it's back to you, Georgie. Well, all right, George. Let's not haggle about it. I'll write you out a check. Well, that's okay with me. I got my checkbook right here. Now, let's see. Uh, April 3rd. Gee, look at his handshake. Mary. <laughs> April 3rd, 19... Now, the amount... Hey, wait a minute. This is 1938, not 40. All right, so I made a mistake. <laughs> now, just a second. Pay to the order of... Say, how do you want this made out? George Jessel or Georgie Jessel? Just put down man, $500. <laughs> All right, here's your check. Oh. Thanks, Jack, and it's really been a pleasure. If you ever need me again, don't fail to call on me. Oh, I will, I will. By the way, Georgie, where can I get in touch with you? I mean, what's your phone number? Anthony to 8056. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs> well, <laughs> the last time I'll ever ask him to help me out with anything. Gee whiz, Jack, you don't expect Georgie to come over here and work for nothing, do you? Well, why not? He's a friend of mine. Well, would you work on his program for nothing? I'm talking to Miss Livingston. Well, would you? That's Phil's question. Think of your own. I've got one. Shut up. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Last week in New York, Fred Allen, Kate Smith, Ripley, Lyman, and Von Zell all appeared on my program for nothing. No wonder you told them it was for the Red Cross. <laughs> well, that didn't make any difference. Say, uh, Jack, tell us all about your trip to New York. Did you have a lot of fun? To New York, yeah. New York. That's fine. I went to New York. Oh, I do. I'm glad though. Well, I'll tell you about it later. Wait till I get settled here. Kenny, are you ready for your song? All set, Jack. Go ahead. Wait a minute. Come in. Benny? Yes. Here I am, bouncing in again. <laughs> well, for heaven's sake, who are you? The check you just gave, Jessel. Well, goodbye. <laughs> I can't understand that. The banks are closed today. Sing, Kenny. Well, can I, from right this way, sung by Kenny Baker, right back on the job again and in the same old form. Say, Kenny, did you listen to me last Sunday when I was in New York? Well, I wanted to, Jack. I, I ran over to my girl's house to hear it, but her father doesn't like you. Oh. He doesn't, eh? Why didn't you and your girl go out in your car and listen to the program? Well, she doesn't like you either. That's great loyalty. Why don't you find a girl that likes me? I did, and she was slap happy. <laughs> Gee, I'd like to know how the program came over last Sunday. Did you hear it, Mary? Well, I invited a big crowd over to the house that night. You know how it is. Some wanted to dance, and some wanted to listen to you, so we took a boat. Oh, how did it come out? The big apple won by a landslide. <laughs> That's fine. You were the hostess. Why didn't you put your foot down? I did. I said, this is my party. You can either listen to Jack, the program, or go. <laughs> <laughs> Read that again, Mary. It's an awfully good line. I don't know. <laughs> you know, put force into it. Go ahead. I did. Uh-huh. Wait, I'll ask you first. Right. You were the hostess. Why didn't you put your foot down? I did. I said... This is my party. You can either listen to Jack's program or go home. That's great. And what, uh, what else did you say? Nothing. I was alone. <laughs> so I went to bed. Well, as long as you're left alone, you could have listened to me. Why all this hurry about getting to sleep? I'm having a continued dream about Clark Gable. <laughs> oh. And I didn't want to miss Chapter 12. <laughs> That's a very feeble excuse. 
Did you hear the program, Don? Well, uh, to tell you the truth, Never Jack, mind, I... never mind. All I can say is, I'm certainly proud of my associates. Not one of you listened to me. Now, wait a minute, Jack. Don't be so hasty. I heard the program from beginning to end. It was great. Thanks, Bill. Say, how'd you like that routine I did with Paul White? Oh, that was swell. <laughs> I'll tell you, Jack, I'm still laughing. Well, stop laughing. Whiteman wasn't even there. <laughs> You double-crosser, you didn't hear the program. I did, too. Well, how could you hear Whiteman when he wasn't there? I could have been drunk, you know. <laughs> well, on, you were nowhere near a radio last Sunday. I was, too, and I heard every word of that program. Why, Phil, you're nothing but a great big liar. You've got something there. <laughs> what a gang to think that not one of you could devote a half hour to me. Come in. Well, look who's here. Hiya, Buck! Hello, Slater! Well, well, if it ain't Huckleberry Finn and Tom Sawyer. <laughs> so what do I owe this double feature? Happy welcome to you. Happy welcome to you. Happy welcome to you. Call a real greeting. Say, Andy, how come you and Schlepp came up here together tonight? Huh? Well, I'll tell you, Buck, Schlepp and I are neighbors now. While you were away, I sold him part of my ranch. Oh, you did? Well, that's a surprise to me. So you're a farmer now, eh, Schlepp? Well, that's me, my crack is Zeke Schleppelman. Well, Schlepp, I can't picture you behind a plow. What do you what do you keep on your ranch? Oh, I got everything. Sheep, cows, dogs, gooses. Goosey? You know, I see going chicken. <laughs> Yeah. And you bought the land and all the livestock from Andy, huh? Yes, sir, Buck, and I gave him a square deal. Yeah, a square deal, he calls it. Three times already he sold me the same homing pigeons. <laughs> no kidding. Did you do that, Andy? <laughs> well, you ought to be ashamed of yourself selling pigeons to Schlepp to fly right back to you. I only sell them, Buck. I can't change their habits. <laughs> Well, tell me, Schlepp, what did he charge you for them? You mean for each pigeon? Yes. A dollar and a half a round trip. <laughs> well, that's fair enough. <laughs> but I'll, t- I'll tell you one thing, Buck. I gave him a real bargain on a cow. Oh, he sold you a cow, too, eh, Schlepp? Yeah, a fine bargain. Only one faucet worked. <laughs> Technique isn't right. Now, look, Andy. Andy, what's the idea of selling so much stuff to Schlepperman? <laughs> well, I'll tell you, Buck. Pa had to have some ready cash. He's going to buy an aeroplane. Oh, your Pa wants to be an aviator, huh? Has he ever been up in the air before? Just once when our goat caught him unawares. <laughs> well, your goat made an aviator on him. What does your Ma think of the idea? She says, let him go. He's always been hiring a kite anyhow. Well, I wish him a lot of luck. Well, Buck, guess we'll be running along now. Just dropped in to welcome you back home. Goodbye, Jackie boy. Come out and see me sometime tomorrow. Thanks, I'll do that. What's the name of your place? Slepperman Hacienda. Suit, clothes, and fresh eggs. Fine, I'll be there. So long, boys. Oh, say, Buck, I forgot to ask you. Did you have a nice time in New York? Oh, swell, Andy. <laughs> Well, that's good. Well, come on, Zeke. Okay, partner. I'm from under range. There's a deer in the cantaloupe play. <laughs> well, well, so Schlepperman is a farmer now. That's as big a surprise as Andy talking with a dialect. Won't be long now. <laughs> well, fellas, the program's nearly over. I think I'll call it a day. I'm so tired from that long train ride. Guess I'll run along home. Huh? I don't blame you, Jack. Get some rest. That's just what I need. Gee, it'll be good to see the house again. You know, I don't care where you travel. There's nothing like home sweet home. Well, so long, fellas. Come, Come on, Jack. Jack. Oh, wait a minute. There's the phone. I'll take it. Hello? Hello, Mr. Denny. You yeah. coming home for the zoo? Yes, Rochester. Why? Is there anything wrong? Well, boss, I think we had business while we was away. Visitors? Yeah, the drawers are all mussed up. Well, the mice could have done that. They must have been big ones. The grand piano's missing. <laughs> the grand piano? Why, we've had burglars. It could have been the finance company. That's ridiculous. What else is missing? You know that great big picture view that hangs on the north wall? Which one? The one where you wear evening clothes. Yes, yes. What about it? You're in BBDs now. <laughs> Oh, well, I 
don't care. Everything is insured. I'll be right home, Rochester. I'm tired and I want to get some sleep. You better hurry and turn the bed off now. <laughs> well, stop him. Stop him. Play, Bill. Play, play, play. And we'll be with you again next Sunday night at the same time. I want to thank Georgie Jessel for helping me out this evening and wish him good luck on his personal appearance in Detroit next week. Say, Jack. What? Uh, did you hear Fred Allen's program Wednesday night? No, but whatever he said, I didn't do it. And the idea of accusing me of stealing everything out of the Waldorf Astoria. Thought you didn't hear him. Well, I say that you think that... I mean, I... Oh, good night, folks. <laughs> The Jell-O program, starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston and Phil Harris in his orchestra. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we bring you a man who has just become Beverly Hills' latest taxpayer and homeowner, Jack Benny. Yes, sir. Jello again. This is Jack Benny coming to you through a second mortgage. <laughs> And, Don, I'm tickled to death that you brought up the subject of my new home. I've been dying to talk about it. You know, it's the first real thing I've ever owned. Well, how's the place coming along, Jack? Is it almost finished? Well, it's moving along all right now, but at the beginning we had an awful lot of trouble. Oh, is that so? Now, what happened? Well, the first month when they were putting up the wooden framework, the termites were way ahead of the carpenters. <laughs> Oh, they were hungry little devils, you know. <laughs> yes, indeed, those termites are vicious. Why, they'll eat the lumber as soon as you put it up. Put it up nothing. These babies used to run down the street and meet the truck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're go-getters, you know. <laughs> by the way, Jack, who's your architect? Oh, a fellow by the name of Carlton Burgess. He's very clever, Don, but a bit stubborn. You see, he feels he knows more about building a house than I do. No. Well, now, that's only natural. That's his job. I know, Don, but this fellow Burgess is so extravagant. I didn't mind when he hung a crystal chandelier in the garage. But when he put a guest room in the doghouse, that was going too far. <laughs> you know, if Fido has friends, let him move over. <laughs> but I guess you have to expect those things, you know. Say, Jack, are you going to have a swimming pool? What's that, Phil? I say, are you going to have a swimming pool? Oh, sure, it's already built. And that's another thing Burgess went overboard on. I asked for a little place where I could wade. You know, I, you know, I wish, I wish you could see the size of the swimming pool he built for me. How big is it? How big? Well, there's a lighthouse in it. That's how big it is. <laughs> now, when I go swimming, I'll have to put an outboard motor in my trunks. <laughs> Say, Phil, <laughs> Phil you've, got a, you've got a home of your own, too, haven't you? Oh, sure. I built a beautiful ranch house right off of Ventura Boulevard. Oh. I have 14 rooms and an eight-car garage. Well. I'm mighty proud of it. Well, I don't blame you, Phil. What do you call your place? Auto cab number seven. <laughs> oh. Well, of course, uh, mine is going to be a private home, naturally, you know. Hello, Jack. Oh, hello, Mary. Say, I want to thank you for helping me out, you know, doing so much shopping and everything. Did you pick out the wallpaper for my dining room yet? Oh, sure, Jack, and it's beautiful. It is, huh? It's a deep salmon color and has pink billy goats sleeping over lavender cactus plants. Is that for my dining room? Yes. I've lost my appetite already. Eh? <laughs> uh, what did you get for my bedroom? Uh, well, for that, I got bright gold wallpaper with little red butterflies chasing baby blue gorillas. Hmm. And there's an American flag spread all over the ceiling. That's fine. I'll have to sleep standing up. <laughs> See, what, uh, what else did you get? Uh, now, for the doghouse... Mary, I don't want wallpaper in the doghouse. Fido doesn't need such ritzy surroundings. Well, he entertains more than you do. <laughs> Well, well, he's a good mixer. Anyway, <laughs> I like that. He's a good mixer. Anyway, thanks just the same, Mary, really. Say, Jack, you know, I'd like to drive out and see your place sometime. Is it a nice neighborhood? No, that's a silly question. I <laughs> <laughs> sure I'm... <laughs> Bernie, I'm in a swell neighborhood, ain't I, Mary? I'll say... Listen, Don, you know Ginger Rogers, the movie star, don't you? Oh, yes, Barry. Well, her uncle buys fish at the market right next door to Jack's house. 
uncle, it's her brother. That's even closer. <laughs> well, oh, hello, Kenny. Hiya, Jack. Hello, Don. Hello, Kenny. Hiya, Mary. Hiya, Phil. Hello. hello. Well, we're all here. <laughs> yes, we're all here, Kenny. In fact, we've been here since the program started. Where were you? Well, I was driving in from my place through Beverly Hills. I passed a bunch of carpenters building a house. <laughs> Boy, what a screwy place. <laughs> well, what are you fellas laughing at? It probably wasn't my house. No, this is right next to a fish market. That's Jack's place, all right. <laughs> now, wait a minute, Phil. That doesn't mean it was my house. There are a lot of fish markets. Uh, say, Kenny, was there a turkey bath on the other side? Yes, there was. Wiggle out of that, Jack. <laughs> Say, hey, maybe it was my place. What were the carpenters doing, Kenny? Were they busy? I'll say they were selling lumber. Selling lumber? <laughs> I've warned them time and again. Mary, get me Mr. Burgess on the phone right away. Play, Phil. I'm going to get a bloodhound, so help me. <laughs> that was, um... That was, uh... Say, Phil, what was that number you just played? Uh, just a minute, Jack. I'll ask one of my boys. Hey, Frank, uh, what was that number we just finished? Oh, that moon's here again. No, no, that was last week. I mean the one we just got through with. Well, never mind, Phil. No, I want to find out. <laughs> hey, Charlie, do you know what that number was? Crestview, 1478. Not her, I mean the number we just played. <laughs> now, Phil, look, you're the leader. You ought to have some idea what it was. Well, how did I know you were going to ask me? <laughs> Good heavens, I've got to announce something. Mary, did you recognize the number Phil just played? No, and neither did the guy that wrote it. <laughs> oh, well, let it go. Anyway, folks, that was something or other from the picture of the same name played by Phil Harris and his orchestra. <laughs> and very good, Phil. And now, ladies and gentlemen, going from our mystery to our dramatic offering, tonight for our feature attraction, the Benny Cutrate Theater Guild <laughs> will present their version of that current metro goldwyn Mayor success, A Yank at Oxford. Oh, boy, Robert Taylor was in there. Yes, Mary, also Lionel Barrymore and Marino Sullivan. Now, in our version, I will naturally play the part of Robert Taylor. Why? Why? <laughs> well, because Bob and I are very much alike. He's about as tall as I am, and we uh, buy our handkerchiefs in the same drugstore. <laughs> and we... Oh, really, we do. And we even like the same girl, Barbara Stanwyck. Only he goes out with her. Is that so? <laughs> Say, I could get a date with Barbara Stanwyck, too, couldn't I, Mary? You couldn't get a date with Barbara Fritchie. <laughs> Barbara Fritchie? What studio is she with? 18th Century Fox and Keep Still. <laughs> now, getting back to our drama, I will play the part of that track star and all-around athlete, Robert Benny, better known as Speedy. And Mary will be Marino Livingston, my sweetheart. Uh, say, Jack, who's going to play your father? You know, Lionel Barrymore's part. Well, I'll tell you, Mary, I've been trying to get Lionel Barrymore himself to play it. I've been sort of fishing around for him, but so far, no luck. Why don't you put some money on the hook? <laughs> uh, don't, don't tell me how to run my business. Anyway, I couldn't get Lionel Barrymore, but I did get a fellow who I think can handle the role very well. Mr. Lionel Kvetz. <laughs> Is he here yet? Here I am, Mr. Benny, just raring to go. Uh, now, uh, Mr. Kvetz, you're sure you can play the part of my father all right, huh? Well, I played Hamlet, and your old man ain't no better than he is. <laughs> Well, then I guess you'll do, huh? But there's just one thing, Mr. Benny. What's that? I've been listening to Fred Allen, and according to what he says, I think I better get paid in advance. <laughs> well, let me tell you something, Mr. Kvetz. Fred Allen should be the last guy in the world to say that I'm cheap. Why, is he that way, too? <laughs> now, listen. Any man that'll use the same toothbrush for nine years and then have it re-bristled... <laughs> well... <laughs> Gee whiz, he can't be that bad. He can't, eh? Now, you may not believe this, Mr. Kvetz, but Alan makes his own underwear out of old flower sacks. <laughs> his shorts have swans down stamped on them. Is that a fact? Absolutely. I kicked him in the pants one day and started a dust storm. <laughs> Well, 
Well, that ought to take care of Mr. Allen for this week. <laughs> and now that our play, A Yank at Oxford, is all cast, we will go on with it immediately after Kenny Baker's number. What are you going to sing, Kenny? Good night, Angel, from Radio City Revels. Oh, from Radio City Revels. Uh, say, Kenny, uh, you're in that picture, aren't you? I don't know. I haven't seen it yet. Oh. Well, you ought to know whether you made a picture or not. Well, I know I was in the Golden Follies, by gosh. Well, how do you happen to remember that? A lamp fell on me. <laughs> oh, well, brush the glass off your head and sing your song, will you? Okay. Sing, Kenny. Now, let's call, concentrate now, and get in the mood of our play. Everybody. That was Good Night, Angel, sung by Kenny Baker. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to present well, our... Wait a minute, Jack. Am I going to be in a play tonight? Oh, sure, Kenny. You're going to be a young Englishman. Why can't I be a professor at Oxford? Well, in the first place, Kenny, you haven't any brains. <laughs> and in the second place... That's enough. I think so. <laughs> and now, folks, we are going to present our dramatic highlight of the evening, our own little vehicle, a Yank at Oxford, or a cluck in Waukegan. <laughs> Take it, Don. The scene opens in the general store of Lionel Benny in the thriving little community of Waukegan, Illinois. His son, Robert, the star athlete of the town, is leaving that night for Oxford. Curtain. Music. Hello? Waukegan Emporium. Yes, Mrs. Smith? Yes? All right, I'll tell him. Goodbye. Oh, Dad? What is it, Speedy? <laughs> Mrs. Smith says that the mouse trap you sold her yesterday is the wrong size. Wrong size? How does she know? She just caught a bear in it. <laughs> there ain't no bears around here. It must be her husband. Well, I better tell her she's going to make a rug out of him. <laughs> Never mind that. Here, son, deliver this order of groceries to Mrs. Bunker. She lives at 216 Maple Street. Well, that's only about a mile away, Dad. I can make it in no time. You know, I won the hundred-yard dash this morning. You did? Who did you run against? Sea biscuits. <laughs> well, here I go, Pop. Here are your vittles, Mrs. Bunker. Thanks. Goodbye. <laughs> well, what's next, Pop? <laughs> Well, doggone speedy, you made that pretty fast. Now take this step ladder and get me that box of crackers off the top shelf. I don't need a ladder, Paul. You know I hold the record for the high jump. Here I go. <laughs> Out. <laughs> Darn that low ceiling. <laughs> Here are the crackers, Paul. Well, I better run home and pack my dudge. You know I'm leaving for Oxford tonight. That's right, my boy. I hate to see you go, but you got to get a good education. Yeah. Here's your steamship ticket from New York to London. Steamship ticket? Keep it, Paul. I'm going to swim over. <laughs> now, hold on, Speedy. Just because you swam across Lake Michigan don't mean you can swim the Atlantic Ocean. That's right, Paul. Maybe I better take it easy. Yeah. I'll row across. Uh, that's the way to talk, my son. Say, did you tell Maureen you're leaving? No, Dad, I didn't. I just couldn't bear to tell her. We've been going together for eight years, and I'm afraid it'll break her heart. I know, son. It'll be a great shock to her. Uh, here she comes now. Gosh, she looks pretty. Hello, Maureen. Hello, Speedy. That's Speedy. <laughs> Gee, you look sweet, Maureen. You're always so classy and stylish. And... Uh, how do you like this new dress I knitted? Oh, it's beautiful. Turn around. Let me see the bag. Oh, no. It isn't finished yet. <laughs> now, listen, Maureen. There's something I must tell you. Something that... Gee, I, I don't know how to begin. Well, I do. I want a can of corn, a pound of coffee, three lamb chops... Maureen, I must tell you. I'm leaving tonight for Oxford. A dozen eggs. Can't you understand, honey? I'll be gone four long years. Four years, Bob? Yes. That's terrible. And a bottle of ketchup. Now, don't take it so hard, gal After all, it won't be forever You'll be true to me while I'm gone, won't you? Yes, Bob I'll be as true as Ben Turpin with a bow and arrow That's the spirit 
You're the sweetest, dearest girl I've ever known. Say you'll wait for me. Why, Bob, I'll wait for you till the cows come home. That's wonderful. When are they coming home? Tomorrow. Oh. Well, i got to run along now and pack. Goodbye, Maureen. So long, Dad. I'll see you both at the station. Goodbye, son. So long, Speedy. Hey, Maureen, watch me uh, jump over the pickle barrel on the way out. Here I go. Oh, gee, it's the first time I've missed. Now I'm all dill. We now take you to the railroad station where the whole town has turned out to see Speedy off. Listen to George Pritchard and his Philharmonic Orchestra. Well, friends, as you all know, today I am bidding Walt Keegan a doy. I may not be the best student at Oxford... But I'll win every athletic event from ping pong to screen Thanks, friends. And I'll be seeing you in four years. Hooray! Of course, I may come back sooner. Ooh. But I doubt it. Hooray! Well, so long, Paul. Goodbye, my boy. Take good care of yourself. Well, Marine, aren't you going to kiss me goodbye? I'll say I am. And aren't you going to... You're going to miss me, honey? I'll say I am. Gee, it looks like rain. I'll say I am. Oh, stop already. <laughs> I'll say I am. I'll say I am. <laughs> well, goodbye, darling. Goodbye, Bob. Hurry back in four years. I will, dear. Come on, Marie. Let's go to a movie. Okay, Stanislaus. <laughs> Stanislaus? Who is this guy? Uh, my new boyfriend. The cows came home early. Oh, I see. All aboard. Train leaving for Chicago, Cleveland, Buffalo, Syracuse, Albany, and oh, a lot of places. <laughs> we now take you to the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, where we find Speedy Betty in a rowboat headed for dear old England. <laughs> Uh, stroll. Uh, stroll. Uh, stroll. Sixteen days in a rowboat. Gee, I wish that shark would stop following me. What do you want, shark? A cup of coffee, a sandwich, and you. <laughs> uh, stroll. Uh, stroll. Uh. Oh, another boat. And look who's out there. Hello, F.D., you're fishing kind of far out, ain't you? Uh, stroll. Uh. Roll. Uh, roll. Uh. At last, our hero arrives in England, and now we pick him up on a road 15 miles out of London. He's lost and trying to find his way to Oxford. Uh, stroll. Uh. Oh, pardon me, folks. I'm on land now. <laughs> Gee, I've been walking around for days, and no one seems to know where Oxford is. Uh, pardon me, sir. Is this the right road to Oxford? Oxford, old boy? My word. Is that in England? Well, gee whiz, it's supposed to be. Are you looking for Oxford on the Thames or Oxford on the A-bomb? I want just plain Oxford. What size? Nine and a half B. Oh, go away! <laughs> gee, somebody must know where Oxford is. Oh, I say, young fellow. Hello, old thing. Can you tell me how to get to Oxford? Oxford, old thing? Yes. Well, old thing... Stop calling me old thing! <laughs> Now, do you know where Oxford is? I don't even know where I am. Cheerio. Cheerio. Seems about as English as a hot dog. Two weeks later, and our hero is still trying to find the road to Oxford. We pick him up in the little village of Marmalade on the Crumpet. Gee, <laughs> hey, I'm so lonely and homesick. I wish I was back at Walk Egan. I wonder what Marine is doing right now. Kiss me, Stanislaus. I'm sorry I asked. <laughs> oh, well. Gee, I hope I find that school pretty soon. Oh, I beg your pardon, ma'am. Carry on. Now, how do I get to Oxford University? Well, first you have to go through high school. I've been through high school. <laughs> Look, all I want to know is what road do I take to get to Oxford? There's an inn right across the Y. Why don't you inquire there? I will. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> My, what a quaint little restaurant. Ye Brown Darby. I think I'll get something to eat. 
What ho, so help me fish and chips, another customer. How do you do? How do you do? I'm, uh, I'd like a ham sandwich, please. Sorry, and we haven't any ham, sir. What's that? Big pardon? I said I'd like a glass of milk. I yes. heard you. I say we haven't any ham, sir. Oh. We have yolk pudding and stewed stripe and uh, gooseberry treacle tarts. Treacle tarts? I'll have a go at that. <laughs> And give me a glass of milk. Oh, come now, old boy. You want tea. I want milk. Don't be a silly arse. Have tea. I'm not a silly arse, and I want milk. <laughs> now, you give me milk, or I'll tell Anthony Eden on you. <laughs> Say, Lord love the duck. Give over. <laughs> oh, by the way, maybe you can help me. I've been having an awful time trying to find <clears throat> Oxford University. Oxford? Do you spell it with an O? You spell it with an ox. <laughs> Now, how do I get there? My, there is a stumper, isn't it? But there's an American sitting over at that table. Perhaps he can guide you. Uh, why don't you ask him? I will. Well, pip, pip. Pip, pip. And I do mean pip. <laughs> uh, pardon me, sir. You're an American, aren't you? Yes, I am. Well, maybe you can help me out. Do you know where Oxford is? Why, certainly. I just came from there. Oh, thank heaven. Now, how do I get there? Well... You go right down this road until you come to a big stone mill. Uh -huh. And then you finish seeing the part to stay to me. The ram see the part to right. The more of a sea for the test is for the ram the five is thin me. And what friend with sulfur, don't miss it, finish. Oh, you can't miss it. <laughs> now, wait. Look, I'm still at the old mill. Well, look, at, uh, yeah, it, I know. At the old mill, you turn to the right, yeah. and you go on the sea for the first is friend me. Uh -huh. You're don't You mean not the place that... Oh, no, don't miss it, miss it. Oh, you mean the, the right... <laughs> Uh, they're, they're the they're sitting there at practice board and see. Oh, you I, turn to the... No, no, he's just like part of the Oh. Oh, never mind. I'll go back to America. Maybe I can find Yale. Please. Then we'll be with you again next Sunday night at the same time. I hope you all liked our play, A Yank at Oxford. Say, Jack. What, Mary? When I was in your father's store, I forgot to order a pound of cheese and a loaf of bread. Look, Mary, that was only in the play. I don't care. I'm hungry. Well, so am I. Good night, folks. The Jell-O program, starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston and Phil Harris and his orchestra. For now, ladies and gentlemen, we bring you a man who is celebrating Easter with a new suit, new shirt, new tie, and new shoes that squeak, Jack Benny. Yes, sir. Yes, Hello again, this is Jack Benny, who is also looking for a new announcer. And listen, Don, it was nice of you to mention my Easter outfit, but it so happens that my shoes do not squeak. They might chirp a little because they're happy. <laughs> but they do not squeak. <laughs> Why, Jack, I heard you when you came into the studio. You sounded like a rusty beer sign in the wind. Now, Don, every new shoe has a little something to say, but I repeat, mine do not squeak. All right, then, just walk around the microphone and see what happens. Okay, Smarty. <laughs> hmm. Well, what do you think of your shoes now? Well, naturally, they're a little nervous. It's the first time they've ever been on the air. <laughs> but say, Don, now you're kind of dolled up for Easter yourself. That's a nice-looking suit you're wearing. Well, thanks, Jack. I just bought it last week. It's very snappy. Where'd you get it? Well, uh, Art Schaffner and Marks made the pants. Uh, Art Schaffner and Marks. Mm. I knew it wasn't a one-man job. <laughs> Did they, uh... <laughs> Did they uh, make the coat, too? Well, Jack, they put in a bid on it, but I finally awarded the contract to the Tri-State Construction Company. <laughs> oh, yes, they also did the Boulder Dam. Or something big. Um, say, Don, come here a minute. Uh, look at Phil standing over there. Isn't it disgraceful the way he comes dressed on a holiday? Well, it isn't very good taste. Come here, Phil. What is it, Jack? You want to know a funny thing? And here I bother to get all dressed up for Easter with a new suit and shoes and spend hours fixing myself up. And you come to the studio with slacks, an old sport coat, and no necktie. Yeah, and you want to know another funny thing? What? I still look better than you do. <laughs> you do not. And I'll leave it to anyone here. In fact, I'll leave it to the boys in your band. Which of us is dressed better for Easter? What do they know? They tried to buy firecrackers today. <laughs> Well, that's a nice organization you've got. Don't tell me they all thought today was the 4th of July. No, the drummer held out for St. Patrick's Day. Oh. Yes, I see the shamrock on the symbol. Well, Phil, uh, your boys might be mixed up about holidays, but when it comes to music, they're mixed up. 
Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. Happy Easter. Thanks. Same to you, kid. Gee, you look so cute in the Easter parade this morning, all dressed up in your new spring suit. Oh, I wasn't out there to show off or anything. I like to walk down the boulevard on Easter. Everybody does. So you were in the parade this morning, huh, Jack? I certainly was. You should have seen him, fellas, strutting along with a cane on his hand and a flower in his lapel, and he was wearing the swellest derby hat. Oh, Mary. Way down over his ears. <laughs> Well, it was a little too big. I bought it before I got my hair cut like a darn fool. <laughs> and you should have seen that funny double-breasted suit he was wearing. Well, what was wrong with it? That coat fit me like a dummy in a window. Well, you should have stayed there. <laughs> well, after all, Mary, I don't have to spend a fortune for a little Easter outfit. You're right, Jack. Yeah. Tell him what happened on the boulevard this morning. Never mind that. <laughs> what was it, Mary? Well, Jack was strutting along in his new suit, proud as a peacock. I was just walking. Go ahead, Mary. <laughs> well. <laughs> oh, you're silly. Okay. Well, he was walking along, and all of a sudden, a man behind him sneezed. <laughs> he sneezed, eh? And then what happened? Jack's coat shrunk four inches. <laughs> Oh, well. Is that right, Jack? Yeah, before I could say Gesundheit, I was nearly strangled. <laughs> anyway, what if it did shrink a little? Who cares? Huh? Oh, Jack. Oh, hello, Kenny. Come here a minute, will you? What is it? Well, come over here. It's important. I can imagine. Okay. <laughs> oh, darn these shoes. Huh? Hey, what's that noise? A squeak at Oxford. <laughs> All right. Now, what is it, Kenny? Well, I did something last week, and I don't know whether I ought to tell you. Well, you called me over here, didn't you? Well, if I tell you, will you promise you won't fire me for it? Yes, I promise. What did you do? Well, I listened to Fred Allen Wednesday night. <laughs> oh, you mean the guy that wears flower sacks candies? <laughs> well, Kenny, I don't care who you listen to. I heard Fred Allen, too, Jack, and the way he ran you down, you ought to do something about it. Well, I'll admit he is a bit of a nuisance, but what can I do? Why don't you have him bumped off? <laughs> bumped off? You know, I'll take him for a drive. <laughs> drive? You mean ride. Take him for a drive. Well, you ought to do something about it. Allen keeps saying you're cheap all the time. Oh, he does, eh? Well, he's got a lot of nerve to talk about me. Any man that'll open a can of sardines, eat them, and then save the tails for hash, well. <laughs> Glad I didn't blow that line, too. Don't tell me about that guy. Hmm? He had another thing. He said your toupee didn't fit. Now, that's a big lie because I don't even wear one. Mary, look at the top of my head. What do you see there? A parking lot. <laughs> Well, let's forget my head and Alan and everything else. Go ahead and sing your song, Kenny. Okay. Oh, Jack, wait a minute. I just thought of something awful. What's that? Here it is, Easter, and I forgot to write a poem. Well, Mary, what will people think? Now, you go ahead and write one while Kenny sings and work hard on it. Oh, her and her old poems. Oh, yeah, you and your old songs. Well, my songs are better than your poems. Now, children, children. <laughs> sing, Kenny. Oh, me and my new shoes. I'm sorry I tore off that guarantee. <laughs> that was uh, Donkey Serenade from the Firefly, sung by Kenny Baker. Hmm, Donkey Serenade. It's kind of a silly title, isn't it, Kenny? Silly? Sure, after all, who would serenade a donkey? A jackass, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> hey, that's... That's right, come to think of it. Hey, Mary, are you coming along with your poem? I need one more verse. I'll be through in a minute. Well, hurry it up. We haven't got anything to do here. Oh, happy Easter, happy Easter. You are Well, wait a happy... minute, Mary. Wait a minute. Take it easy. Now, what's the name of your poem? Uh, Easter Greetings by Mary O. Livingston. Now, what's the O for? Oh, happy Easter, happy Easter. <laughs> hmm. You are with us once again. With your Easter egg so tempting, summer candy, summer hens. Well, well, that makes sense, yeah. Uh, boys and girls all dressed up pretty parade the streets in every city and all show off their Easter stuff, even though it's on the cuff. Now, that's a little too personal, I think, Mary. I like to smell your Easter lilies, your hot cross buns I love to tackle, oh. your rabbits all lay eggs, they say. But, gee, I never heard one cackle. Cackle, tackle. Now, that's just loony. Say, Jack, did Longfellow work with a stooge? No. Then keep still. <laughs> uh, last verse. That's 
good. <laughs> yes. So I salute you, happy Easter, with one ship pip and two hurrahs. Until you come next year to greet us, I say farewell. The end. Applause. got a nice hand there, Mary, but you asked for it. Do you think that's ethical? No, but it's short. Oh, yeah. Well, you got something there. There's nothing like going after it yourself. Say, Jack. Yes, Phil? What are we stalling for? When are we going to do something interesting? Well, Phil, we're doing the best we can. If it's dull here, why don't you pick up your orchestra and go home? That's what I say. Thanks, Kenny, and mind your own business. He always comes to at the wrong time. What I meant, Jack, are we going to do a play tonight? No, Phil, we don't have to do a play every Sunday night. What is this, a stock company? No, but I just thought we ought to. Well, putting on a play week after week is no picnic, you know. But people seem to like them. Yes, but gee whiz, do you think it's easy? Do you think it's necessary? It's none of my business. <laughs> I'm talking to Phil. Kenneth. <laughs> Anyway, fellas, I'll tell you what I've planned to do, and it's a surprise. We're going to cut the program short tonight, and I'm going to treat you all to the Al G. Barnes Sells Floto Circus. Now, what do you think of that? Oh, oh that's right. Right. Yeah. 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 Yeah, sir. Now, remember, fellas, remember, it's my treat. A man gave me five passes for tonight's show. <laughs> passes? How'd you get them? Well, I've got a friend with the circus, and besides, I let him put posters up all over my new house. You know? <laughs> I won't be moving in for quite a while, you know. Say, Jack, you know, I happened to drive by your new house last night. It's coming along fine, isn't it? Yeah, and did you notice all those circus posters with lions and snakes and zebras all over them? Yes, sir, I threw my jug right out the window. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you did, huh? Well, tonight you're invited to see the real thing. We'll have a lot of fun, too. I'm terribly sorry, Jack. I'd love to go, but I got a blind date tonight. Oh, you and your blind dates. Well, I guess you're stuck, Phil. How about going now, fellas? We'll just about make it. Oh, there, I think you better hurry. Wait a minute. Come in. Well. Hiya, Buck. Well, hello, Andy. Say, you're just in time. We're all going to the circus, and I got a pass for you, too. You want to come along? Sure, Buck. I got an aunt with that show. She's the bearded lady. Your aunt? How did she happen to become a bearded lady? Oh, she just got tired of shaving one day. <laughs> Oh, well, come on, let's go. Oh, by the way, Andy, I meant to ask you, uh, did your Paul buy that airplane you were telling me about? Oh, sure, he's been flying around in it all week. Already? Say, he's learning fast, isn't he? Yeah, too fast. Yesterday he was practicing a loop-to-loop and he fell out. Oh, that's terrible. Yeah, lucky thing he had on a parachute. Well, I'll say it was lucky. Too bad he forgot to open it. <laughs> What? My goodness, he fell right down to the ground, eh? Gee, he must have hit it pretty hard. I'll say he did. He swallowed his chew in the back. Well, I'm glad it was nothing more serious. Come on, Jack, let's go. All right, wait, let's see if I've got the passes. Yeah, we're all set. Come on, fellas. All right. Hey, Phil. Hey, Phil, take care of the show from now on. Okay. Well, fellas, let's play the next number and go home. What are we playing? Oh, anything. Squeaky shoes won't know the difference. <laughs> you ready, boys? Wait a minute, hold everything. Come in. Mr. Harris? Yes. Have you got a blind date tonight? Yes, I have. Well, don't keep Mama out late. Goodbye. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, boys. Play slow. I'm in no hurry. <laughs> Well, fellas, here we are. There's a big crowd, so everybody stick close to me. We've got a little time to kill before the big show goes on. Well, what do we do first? I want to see the elephant. I want to get my girl's name tattooed on my chest. <laughs> What's her name, Kenny? Genevieve Carson Pepper. <laughs> you better get another girl or a bigger chest. <laughs> it's a fine name. Where's the fat lady? I'd like to see her. She'd like to see you, too. <laughs> Hey, she'd go for you. Oh, Jack, what? look at the India rubber man over there. Oh, yes. Yeah. Say, that is the India rubber man. He must have a cold. A cold? Why? He just tied his nose in a knot. <laughs> Say, I must try that sometime. It'll save handkerchiefs. Hey, but... fellas, get a load of the wild man of Borneo. Look at him there in that cage. He's a tough-looking mug. Let's go over and talk to him. Goo, 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 goo. Gow! Oh, boy, he is ferocious. Hello, wild man. <laughs> 
Tell me. Tell me, what makes you so wild? It's town hall tonight. <laughs> oh. Very well, I can understand that. Balloons, balloons. Get them out of there, blowing up. Balloons, balloons. <laughs> Oh, Jack, buy me a balloon. Yeah, I want one, too. That pretty pink one. Say, that is pretty. Do you want a balloon, Kenny? No, nah, that's for children. I want a Tom Collins. <laughs> Kenny, you don't even know what a Tom Collins is. I do, too. It's a hard-boiled lemonade. <laughs> All right, stop showing off. Oh, Mr. Benny? Why, Rochester. I thought you was at NBC Broadcasting. Yeah, and I thought you were home where you should be, working. Well, here we are at the circus. <laughs> Well, now that you're here, you can stay. But don't let it happen again. Yes, sir. Say, boss. Well? Are you in the mood for a little conference in the field of finance? <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you're broke again, eh? What happened to that $5 I gave you last night? The what? I gave you $5 last night. Now, what did you do with it? I sent that out to fight the recession. <laughs> Now, tell me the truth, Rochester. What did you do with that money? I went to the barber shop. Now, that's ridiculous. How could you spend $5 in a barber shop? The barber threw a seven. <laughs> well, here's a dollar. That's all you're going to get. Now, run along. Thanks, boy. Here I come, Josephine. <laughs> hmm, that boy can't hold on to a dime. Gee, I'm hungry. I'm going over and get a hot dog. Yeah, me too. I could go for one myself. Hot dogs. Get your hot dogs here. Get them while they're red hot. Hey, I thought you were selling balloons. Well, you taste the hot dog. <laughs> oh, I see. Well, we don't want any. Hey, Jack, look, look. They're lining up the freaks for the sideshow. Right this way, ladies and gentlemen, our sideshow is about to begin. We have with us the greatest and most stupendous aggregation of freaks and curiosities this world has ever seen. Come on, fellas. Let's get a load of this. Oh, yeah, oh, 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 and now, right over here on my right, we have Elmar, the living skeleton. Why, this man is so thin, we can't weigh him. <laughs> He's blowing off the scale. <laughs> a living skeleton. I'll bet he weighs 150 pounds. Come on, your shoes squeak. <laughs> How does he know? Now, over here on my left, we have Mademoiselle Lulu, the greatest snake charmer that ever made a cobra say uncle. Well, well, hello, Lulu. Hello, Andy. Why, Andy, do you know the snake charmer? Sure, I used to know her when she played with worms. <laughs> oh, way back when, eh? And right over here, we have one of the greatest novelties on the face of the globe. Sailor Smith, the tattooed man. Pictures from head to toe. Tattooed man, why, there's hardly a mark on his body. We sent him to the laundry and shut up. <laughs> shut up yourself, you old windbag. And right over here, ladies and gentlemen, we have a new attraction. The man with the pin head. Where? I'm looking at you. <laughs> oh. Why don't you keep quiet, Jack? The nerve of that guy saying I had a head like a pin. Yeah, how could he tell with your hat on? <laughs> Wise guy. And now, folks, last but not least, for the real sensation of the evening, we have with us none other than that famous old reactor dancer, <laughs> Prince Zaza, direct from Cairo, Egypt. Yes, sir, she dances. She shakes and she quivers. Oh, boy, that's my dish. Kenny. Yep. Right inside, folks, Prince Zaza goes on immediately. Come on, fellas, let's go in. Yeah. Huh? See you later, you little cut-up. Wait a minute, Jack. We haven't time to go in here. The big show starts right away. Yeah, we got to go over there, darn it. Have you got your passes, Jack? Here they are. I've got to exchange them at the box office. Well, here we are, fellas. Huh? Yes, sir. How many? I'd like to exchange these for tickets. I've got five passes. Here you are. Listen, buddy, these passes are good all right, but not for tonight. These are for the matinee. <laughs> Matinee, the man that gave them to me said they were for tonight. I can't help what he said. These are for the matinee. Matinee or no matinee? <laughs> so fine, how do you? I'm going right home and rip those posters off my house. Go ahead. We're leaving town tonight anyway. <laughs> well, this is the dirtiest trick that I've ever... Move along, buddy. We're holding up the line there. Well, I've never heard of such a rotten thing in all my life. Oh, Jack, why haggle about it? Why don't you buy tickets? 
Sure, Buck. A couple of dollars won't Now, break listen, it. fellas. It's not the money. It's the principle of the thing. Oh, come on, Jack. Come on. If you feel that way about it, I'll buy the ticket. Oh, no, Don. You can take us out to supper later. <laughs> but we're going to get into this circus for nothing. Now, follow me. Hey, the main entrance is over that way. I know what I'm doing. They're not going to put anything over on me. Come on around to the back. <laughs> now, quiet, everybody. I'll show those guys. Now, look nonchalant, fellas. I know what's coming. Now, wait. Now, wait. Here's a good place. Lift the tent, Kenny. We'll all crawl under. Oh, gee whiz. Oh, John, John, what do you want to do? Oh, don't wall be wall. afraid. Now, come on. Now, listen, fellas. Mary, Kenny, and I will go in first. And, Don, you and Andy can watch until I give you the signal to come in. Now, come on. Follow me under the tent. Woo! Kenny, don't push. <laughs> Quiet, quiet, everybody. Gee, this is like going to the circus with Harry Lauder. <laughs> All right, here we are, up on your feet. Well, here we are on the inside. What's wrong with this? Hey, Jack, look at these bars over here. What are they for? That's a cage, Kenny. There are lions on the other side. Oh, yeah? Turn around, Jack. Oh, for goodness sake! Oh, hey! Come on, Kenny! Hey, hey, wait for me! Jack, Jack, go away! Calling Frank Buck! Calling Frank Buck! I'll be with you again next Sunday night at the same time. Well, folks, I'm all out of breath, but I got away from that lion. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to announce that next Sunday night we are going to present the highlight of our entire season. We are going to offer our version of Walt Disney's greatest film success, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. So be sure and listen in. Say, Jack, have you seen the picture yet? No, Mary, but I'm going to see it tonight. I've got passes. Um... <laughs> Do you want to come along? No, I'm not going to sneak under the Carthay Circle. <laughs> Good night, folks. <laughs> the Jell-O Program, starring Jack Benny. With Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Kenny Baker, and yours truly, Don Wilson. For now, ladies and gentlemen, we bring you that Don Juan, that Casanova, that answer to a maiden's prayer, Jack Benny. <laughs> Hello again, this is a woman's home companion talking. <laughs> and Don, you certainly went to town on that introduction. If I do say it myself, you hit the nail right on the head. Oh, you liked it, huh? Well, Don, before you mentioned it, I never quite looked at myself as an answer to a maiden's prayer, but come to think of it, I guess I do have a way with the ladies. Oh, I've got to tell him, Phil. I'll oh, keep still. Let him rave. Hey, wait a minute. What is this? Well, Jack, if you must know, Phil bet me a dollar that if I introduced you as a ladies' man, you'd go for it hook, line, and sinker. Oh, I see. A frame-up, huh? Well, that's one on me. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> So you're making money on practical jokes now, eh, Phil? Yeah, that's my sideline. Yeah, well, just pull one more on me, and your sideline will be your main occupation. <laughs> anyway, I don't see what you fellas want to rib me for. You know, you never see me outstepping unless there's a pretty good-looking girl with me. I admit that, Jack, but they always look so bored. Well, certainly they look bored, Don. That's because they're sophisticated. They're blazed. I mean, they're blasé. <laughs> That's what. So your girls are sophisticated, eh? They certainly are. I saw you with one last night, and she had a gold tooth right in front. Well, she's from the Klondike. <laughs> That explains that. All right, now explain those high-button shoes she had on. Oh, high-button shoes. I suppose she was wearing a bustle, It too. was either that or a papoose. <laughs> you know, Phil, it's funny, but I just can't seem to scream at you tonight. <laughs> Maybe I'm not in the mood. Who knows? And let's not discuss my love life any further. We've got a long play to do. Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. Who was that goon I saw you with last night? <laughs> Goon? Yes, why don't you go out with good-looking girls once in a while like Phil does? Now, wait a minute, Mary. Miss LaRose may not have been the most beautiful girl. <laughs> Miss LaRose may not be the most beautiful girl in the world, but she's delightful company and very refined. Yes, yeah, she's the only girl I ever saw that ate a steak like it was corn on the cob. <laughs> 
Now, she wasn't that bad. Go on. She ordered a baked apple and Bob for it. <laughs> All right, Mary, just relax and mind your own darn business. Say, has anyone seen Kenny? We've got to get our play started. You want me, Jack? Well, I don't want you, Kenny, but you're supposed to be here. <laughs> Where have you been the last 15 minutes? I was outside in the telephone booth talking to my girl. Oh. But somebody wanted to use the phone, so we had to get out. <laughs> well, that's a shame. <laughs> and now, now that we're all here, tonight, ladies and gentlemen, by special request, we are going to bring you our 1939 version of Walt Disney's screen classic... Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. We are? Well, what do you know about that? Well, don't act so surprised, Bill. I announced we were going to do Snow White last week. Well, I didn't hear you. Oh, you didn't? Bill, don't you ever pay attention when I say something on this program? Not unless I say something right after it. Hmm. <laughs> I wish you'd think of someone beside yourself, Maestro. Oh, stop taking on, Phil. I didn't hear you say anything about Snow White either. Well, of course you didn't. All during the last half of the program, you were pitching pennies with the orchestra. Well, I won 30 cents in a piccolo player. Well, give him back to Phil. I'm going to fine you 30 cents. <laughs> anyway, believe me, fellas, I announced Snow White last week. That's a lot of baloney. <laughs> oh, brother. <laughs> Kenny, I said it, and I said it so everybody could hear me. I guess I must have been worrying about Congress. No doubt, no doubt. <laughs> In our version... Hey, Phil, what's a dwarf? My salary with a beard on it. <laughs> That's right. Now, in our musical comedy, folks, as none of us look like dwarfs, we are going to call our play Snow White and the Seven Gangsters. Mary Livingston, who left her rouge at home, will be Snow White. Now, let's see. Who's going to be the witch? The girl Jack was out with last night. <laughs> she is not. I'm getting the same witch we had last year. Where are you, witch? Here I am. <laughs> See, is she going to be my stepmother again? Yes, and she's going to give you a poisoned apple. You stole pigeons? <laughs> Quiet, you old bat. <laughs> now, our play will go on immediately after Kenny's song. And by the way, Mary, you want to know something? Walt Disney is sitting in our audience. Well, as long as he stays there, we're all right. Hmm. I don't mind him coming, but he didn't have to bring Ferdinand the Bull with him. Sing, Kenny. <laughs> One song from Snow White sung by Kenny Baker. And thanks, Kenny. It was certainly apropos. Apropos? Who do you think you're talking to? <laughs> Kenny, apropos means that your song fits the occasion. Oh. Yeah. You mean like pajamas in bed? That's it. That's it, exactly. Yeah. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for our musical comedy, Snow White and the Seven Gangsters. Uh, which we will present in four acts and 38 scenes. And as a special inducement for tonight only, we are going to give away to each and every listener a genuine solid gold soup knife. A soup knife? What's that for? It's for scraping it off of neckties. <laughs> the opening scene is an isolated farmhouse. As the curtain rises, Doc Benny is giving his boys a pep talk. Curtain. Music. <laughs> Now, listen, men. We got a big job on for tonight. The biggest thing we've tackled since we cracked the mint. We're going to stick up the 12th National Bank. Do you get that? Now, call the roll. See if we're all here. Sleepy. Oh, here, Doc. Sneezy. Kerchew, Doc. Gesundheit. <laughs> Happy. I'm right here, Doc. Feeling fine and raring to go. <laughs> well, what are you giggling about? I got an awful toothache. <laughs> oh, isn't that jolly? Grumpy. Right here, Chief. But I'm afraid we're soon going to get caught this time. Oh, you're too pessimistic. Bashful. Where's Bashful? Here I am, Doc, under the bed. Well, come on over here with us. What makes you so bashful? Well, Doc, when I was a kid, I went to a party and I caught a sealing horse's trade and it was splitted. Of course, I didn't know they were going to fight the sealing way for start. <laughs> and when I caught as far as sealing across the street, and I've been flushing ever since. <laughs> hmm, fine gangster. Now, let's see, who else? Oh, yes, Dopey. That's me, folks, and very apropos. <laughs> 
<laughs> and you're a fine crook, too, the way you waste your time. What do you mean? I sent you out yesterday to pick pockets, and the first guy you hit was Fred Allen. What did you find there? Some chewing tobacco and some chewing gum. Oh. They taste awful together. <laughs> I shouldn't wonder. And you, Bashful? Yes, Doc? I sent you out for bullets yesterday, and you brought back a bag of jelly beans. Well, the man at the store said they'd be corner seat if I fit with a boom boom. <laughs> I don't care what he said. Now, listen, fellas. You've been laying down on the job lately, so I want you all to be on your toes tonight. Uh, stay, Doc. What is it, Sleepy? What time are we going to rob the bank? About midnight, and this time don't fall asleep on the burglar alarm. Uh, okay. I'm afraid of that job, Chief. We're sure to get caught. Oh, we are, eh? How do you feel about it, Happy? Grumpy's right. We'll all go to Sing Sing and never come out. Gee, it'll be awful. <laughs> <laughs> I certainly got a brave bunch of men here. Scare your own shadow. Ah, oh, shut up. Yes, sir. What's that? Gee, it darn near worked. <laughs> now, listen, men. We got a big job on tonight, and we got to get some money. There's a payment due on our beards. <laughs> so let's all work together. Just as soon as our supply of dynamite gets here, we'll go. Come in. Package of dynamite for Doc Benny. Sign here. Now, wait a minute. Is this dynamite good and strong? I think so. I had two arms when I started out. Goodbye. <laughs> All right, men. Now, listen carefully. We'll meet tonight at 1130 in the alley right in back of the bank. Is that clear? Sure. Right, 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 right there. Sure. Right there. What about you, Dopey? Will you remember where we're going to meet? Yeah, I tied a string around my little finger. Well, take that yo-yo off the other end. <laughs> Now, remember, fellas, 11.30 in the alley behind the bank. And then, do you know where we go from there? Where? Hi-ho, hi-ho, to rob the bank we'll go. I'll say we'll go and grab the dough. Hi-ho, hi-ho. Hi-ho, hi-ho, hi-ho. Now, don't be late, you know. We gotta work quick for the chisel and pick. Hi-ho, hi-ho. Hi-ho, 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 I'm sleepy that I know. And I'm so fast, if all the folks said that, hi-ho, 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 to rob the bank we'll go, but say we'll blow and grab the dough, hi-ho, 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 hi-ho. now don't be late, you know, we gotta work quick for the chisel and pick, hi-ho. The scene changes. We now take you to the home of Miss Snow White, who lives on Park Avenue with her cruel stepmother, Mrs. Agatha Witch. Oh, she's a meanie. Take it away, Park Avenue. Hello. Who? No, she can't talk to you. Don't keep calling up here anymore. Goodbye yourself. Who was that, stepmother? That was your boyfriend, Prince Charming. Now listen, Snow. <laughs> I don't want you to go out with him anymore. He's just after your money. So are you. Well, I saw you first. <laughs> now, don't you dare to leave this room, you little brat. Isn't she awful, folks? Quiet, you Waukegan weasel. <laughs> My stepmother's so cruel to me. Is she jealous of me for chance? Or is she jealous of me good look? And where is my Prince Charming? If he would just come and take me away, I'd be so happy. He'll be here, folks. You see? That must be him now. Is that you, Prince Charming? If it ain't, I whitewash my horse for nothing. <laughs> Charming. Hello, Snow White. How's my itsy bitsy lambsy piesy? <laughs> Isn't he lousy wowsy, folks? Oh, Prince, I'm so glad you're here. My stepmother's getting crueler every day. Boo hoo hoo hoo. Is that so? Well, what's the matter with that old Mickey Finn? <laughs> Why, only this morning she tried to kill me. She gave me a poison apple for breakfast. A poison apple? Yeah, and another thing. My stepmother says you're not a real prince. You are a real prince, aren't you? I'll say I am. My blood is so blue every time I cut my finger, I feel my thumb pin. <laughs> then I don't care what she says. I love you, my prince. And if you'd only take me away from here, I'd be so happy. Don't worry, my little angel cake. Someday I'll take you to my castle in Van Nuys. In Van Nuys? When? 
Someday. Oh, someday. Someday we'll go away. Stepmother and says, Snow White? Snow White? Who was that in here singing? Nino Martini. Well, he ought to gargle. <laughs> I know it was that Prince Charming, and I told you never to see him again. But I love him, Stepmother. He's so handsome and romantic. And besides, he's the only man I've ever seen. Well, then, for heaven's sake, wait a while. <laughs> yes. If you hold out, you can get one that wears shoes. <laughs> But, Stepmother, please. Anyway, I'll put a stop to this affair, you little fool. Here. Have an apple. Don't take it, Snow White. It's poison. Stay out of this, you gray-haired ham. <laughs> hmm. But he's right, Stepmother. This apple is poison. It is not. Then why is that worm waving a red flag? <laughs> you see... <laughs> I'll make you eat it. Come here, Snow White. No, no, I'll run away from home. That's what I'll do. I'll run away from home. Stop! Stop! No, no, I'll never see you again. Never, never. Goodbye, stepmother. Goodbye, worm. Goodbye. <laughs> Snow White runs away from home. And two days later, we find her lost in a dense forest somewhere in Long Island. Oh, here I am in the woods. And look at the animals following me. Oh, see the pretty bird. Hello, bird. <laughs> Well, the same canary we had last year. You know? Gee, none of these animals are afraid of me. Look at that little silver fox with a bushy tail. Isn't he cute? Come here, silver fox. Oh, no, you got my brother around your neck now. <laughs> All right, smarty. Gee, I'm so tired and hungry. Oh, look, there's a farmhouse over yonder. Maybe I can get food and shelter there. Here I come, farmhouse. <laughs> We're ready to rob the bank. Now, remember, this ain't no picnic, so everybody work fast and be on your guard. Say, Bashful, have you got the machine gun? Oh, sure. I care to see the boss. It's there across the street. It's on the street. It gets a quarter street fessering. Does that mean yes or no? Stop it flat. <laughs> okay. Hey, Dopey, stop chewing that dynamite. You'll blow your brains out. If I had any brains, you wouldn't be chewing it. Oh. Well, we're all set now. Hey, wait a minute. Where's Sleepy? <laughs> hey, Sleepy, wake up. we got to go to work. <laughs> Oh, well, we can do without them. Now, let's go, men. And here's my final instructions. While we're robbing that bank, there's one thing that's very important. What's that, Chief? For heaven's sake, do 
Don't whistle while you work. Don't whistle while you work. Or the cops will come. We'll have to run. Be as quiet as a turd. You mean quiet as a mouse. But I couldn't make it rhyme. Now come on, boys, and make no noise. We haven't got much time. Now remember each of you. We know what we must do. Now you must be still. I know I will. La, 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 la. Don't whistle while you work. Or the cops are sure to hurt. They'll get their men put in the candle. Whistle while you work. I'm screaming, honey. Don't whistle, whistle while you work. I'm shouting, baby. Don't whistle, whistle while you work. And I'm repeating. Don't whistle, whistle while you work. All right, men, we're on our way. Let's go. Wait a minute. I know it. It's the cops. The cops? Gee, I'll bet they give us life this time. <laughs> All right, I'll handle this. Come in. Hello, everybody. My name is Snow White. Why, it's a girl. A girl? <laughs> yes, a girl. What do you want, Snow White? See, I thought this was a farmhouse. Aren't you all farmers? No, we're not farmers. We're bandits. And right now we're going out to rob a bank. Rob a bank? Oh, you mustn't do that. Why not? Because it's antisocial and unstatutory. Oh, it is. Did you hear that, fellas? It's antisocial and an unstatutory. <laughs> it's also pulled in quinsend and bulgin for salt and for ticket. <laughs> Never mind that. <laughs> Tie this dame up and throw her down the cellar. Throw me down, too. Grab her, man. Now, wait a minute, Chief. She can't harm us. Well, we're not taking any chances. Tie her up. But why do all you nice boys want to rob a bank? Money isn't everything. We're not going after money. We're going after blotters. <laughs> now, scram. <laughs> She's right, Doc. Let's call the whole thing off. I'm in favor of it. Yeah, maybe I can get me old job back. Your old job back? What did you do? I was a tenor in a tough quartet. <laughs> hmm, some tenor. And I used to be an orchestra leader. That's a lie. <laughs> what were you, Dopey? I used to be a beautiful baby. Mm. But look at you now. <laughs> Fine bunch of gangsters I got. Now listen, Snow White. You listen to me, you big bad man. Hmm. You're all going to throw your guns away and stay right here. You're never going to rob another bank again as long as you live. Nothing doing. This is our racket and we're going to stick to it. Oh, come on now. Give me your gun. I will not. Here's my gun, Snow White. I'm going to turn over a new leaf. Here's my gun. Here's mine, too. Thanks. Be careful. There's water in it. <laughs> All right, Doc. You're the last one. Now hand over your gun. Oh, here. But Santa Claus will never forgive me. This is a Christmas present. Here, take it. Hurry, hurry, Doc. Hurry, hurry, Doc. Hurry, Gee, I feel better already. Come in. Mr. Benny? Yes? Say, what are you doing here? I'm Prince Charming, and I'm looking for my sweetheart, Snow White. Now, wait a minute. You're not Prince Charming. He is, too. I just sold him my title. Oh. Come, come my little Snow White. We'll go to the booby hatch and live happily. <laughs> At last. At last. Someday we'll go away. Mary Little Snow White, Andy went back to Van Nuys, and Doc Benny went back to his old job as lifeguard in a Turkish bath, Playville. And we'll be with you again next Sunday night at the same time. Jack had to rush away to do another broadcast, folks. Say, Mary, you know we forgot to do one of the best songs in the picture. Which one is that? The wishing well number. You know where you heard the echo? Oh, yes, we'll do it now, Andy. So you get down in the well and be the echo. Okay. 
I'm wishing. I'm wishing. For the one I love to find me. To find me. Bill, hand me that bucket. No. Good night, everybody. The Jell-O Program, starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston and Phil Harris and his orchestra. So now, ladies and gentlemen, we bring you a man who hasn't made a picture in over a year and still thinks he's a movie star, Jack Benny. Uh, Hello again, this is Jack Benny talking. And Don, I don't know what brought the subject up, but it might interest you to know that you don't have to make a picture every five minutes to be considered a movie star. Well, Jack, I didn't mean that. You know, after all, Adolf Zucker, the head of Paramount, gave me a four-year contract. And Mr. Zucker certainly knows his onions. He certainly signs them up, too. (laughs) Mary. You don't come in till the next page. Oh. As I, uh, as I was saying, Don, I have a four-year contract with Paramount, and next season I get a raise. Oh, you get a raise, huh? Yeah, you see, my contract calls for so much money per week and lunch in the studio restaurant every day while I'm making a picture. Oh, well, uh, where does the raise come in? Well, next season, instead of getting the 45-cent lunch, I get the 60-cent lunch. <laughs> It may not sound like much, but believe me, it adds up. But what I can't understand, Jack, is this. As long as you're under contract there, why don't they use you? Now, take George Raff, for instance. He's always busy. George Raff? Yes. Well, they're scared of him. <laughs> you know, he's a pretty tough kid. Crosby and Fred McMurray, they're always making pictures at Paramount. Sure they are. Sure they are. And you want to know why? Why? They bring apples to Mr. Zucker. <laughs> Teacher's pets, that's what they are. (laughs) Well, if that's the case, Jack, why don't you bring him an apple? I did, and the worm got a screen (laughs) test. You know what kills me? This program has only been on five seconds, and already I'm in a corner. (laughs) Say, Jack. Yes, Phil? What happened to that picture you're going to do with Francisca Gall? You certainly talked about it enough. Oh, that epic. It was uh, called off. You see, the studio and I couldn't get together on the scenario... And how it should be cast. Oh, you couldn't, eh? No, you see, I wanted to be Francisca's lover, and Paramount wanted me to be her father. (laughs) And you should have seen that so-called happy ending they had. Here we go through a whole love story, and at the end, Ray Milan gets Francisca, and I get an old age pension. An old age pension? Yeah, it's a fine thing to take to Niagara Falls. (laughs) Well... One of these days, they'll wake up and give me the proper story and a strong leading part. And then you know what'll happen? Sure, you'll get the 75-cent lunch. (laughs) You said it. It'll work out by itself. Uh, Page two. Hello, Jack. Oh. Hello, Mary. Uh, What are you talking about? Oh, Don and Phil seem to think that just because I don't make pictures every two seconds, I'm not a movie star. Well, gee, Harold Lloyd only makes one picture a year, and he's a big star. Why, certainly, and we're very much alike. Yeah, he wears glasses, and you have rings around your eyes. (laughs) It's not rings, it's nightclub mascara. (laughs) And let me tell you something, fella. Sometimes you can make too many pictures, and people get tired of you. Now, you take Clark Gable. See, he's in more pictures than Leo the Lion. You know, Jack, I'm pretty tired of Clark Gable myself. There you are, fellas. Even Mary is tired of him. I'll say. I had to stand in line three hours to see him last night. Oh. Gee, he's a dream man. So you stood in line three hours to see Gable. Yeah, and you know what burns me up, Jack? What? Carol Lombard gets the dates and I get the bunions. (laughs) Well, that's beside the point. Anyway, to show you that I'm doing all right... Sid Grauman asked me to put my footprints in the forecourt of the Chinese theater. And you know that's some honor. Well, did you do it? Yes, sir. (laughs) Tell him what happened, Jack. That has nothing to do with the tribute. (laughs) What was it, Mary? Now, listen. Well, Jack went over there and he didn't want to get his shoes dirty. Now, look, Mary, I... (laughs) So he stepped into the wet cement in his bare feet. Well. (laughs) And he said they're taking bows so long that the cement hardened. Now, what of it? I got out, didn't I? Yeah, but tell him where your big toe is. <laughs> well, let's drop all this talk about footprints, and I don't want to hear any more about my cinema career. 
So please change the subject. Okay, Jack. Uh, how about your new house? How's it coming along out there in Beverly Hills? Sick and tired of all this talk about movies. What'd you say, Don? I said, uh, how's your new house coming along in Beverly Hills? Fine. And if you want to know something, I'm starting a new picture for Paramount next week. <laughs> It's called Artists and Models Abroad, and it's going to be swell. Well, that's changing the subject. I can't help it. I'm too enthused. Say, where's Kenny? Here I am, Jack. Oh, where were you, Kenny? Well, I was just sitting over here in the corner with a book. A book? What is it? It's uh, Einstein's new lowdown on the theory of higher mathematics. Well, say. Were you reading that? No, I was just pressing a flower in it. (laughs) Now I feel better. I was worried there for a minute, eh? But you know, Kenny, it wouldn't hurt you to read a book like that once in a while. It would improve your mind. Oh, I like Einstein, all right. Yeah. Of course, a lot of his stuff is debatable. Oh, quite, quite. (laughs) Yeah, but at that, he's a pretty level-headed guy. I'll say he is. Yes, sir. He seems to have both feet on the ceiling. (laughs) Oh, definitely, you know. And furthermore, Now, look, Kenny, Kenny, look. Before somebody asks us both who Einstein is, how about doing your song and we'll carry on with the program? Okay. Here, Phil, hold my book. Don't read it now. Don't worry, it's a strain for me to read the funny papers. (laughs) Yeah. And don't you... (laughs) And don't you bother reading it either, Kenny. You'd never understand Einstein. He'd have trouble with me, too. (laughs) I know that. Sing, genius. Hey, whatever happened to my picture? I don't know. That was Love Walked In from the Goldwyn Folly, sung by Kenny Baker. And, Kenny, I've always complimented you on your song, but I want to tell you something. That performance you gave as Dopey in our Snow White last Sunday proves that you're an actor, too. Oh, really? You... And you were swell. Yeah, Jimmy Fiddler gave me four bells and a popsicle. (laughs) Well, you deserved it. You were great. You know, Jack, I don't want to be hammy, but I thought I did a pretty good job as Prince Charming. You weren't Prince Charming, Phil. You were one of the dwarfs. You were sleepy. Well, I can dream, can't I? (laughs) Well, that's what you've been doing ever since I hired you. How anybody can sleep in front of such an unlullaby-ish band. (laughs) I don't know. See, Jack, I took the part of Snow White and you didn't even mention me. Well, I was just going to, Mary. You were really great. You surprised me when you sang. Gee, why, you you were a regular lily pond. Yeah. Yeah. Say, Jack, can't you just see this in lights in front of the Metropolitan Opera House? Mary Livingston and Rigoletto. Yes, Mary Livingston and Rigoletto. Also the Ritz Brothers. (laughs) Why, Mary, the Ritz Brothers will never play in Rigoletto. You don't know (laughs) Zanuck. And you won't, you won't be in it either, huh? I don't care. Yeah. I met Walt Disney on the street yesterday, and he liked me so much as Snow White that he wants me to make a silly symphony. And I'm going to do it, too. A silly symphony? Why, that's marvelous, Mary. I bet you'll be as cute as a bug. I better be. That's my part. <laughs> so, you know, fellas, wouldn't be bad making one of those crazy cartoons. Believe me, can you imagine the fun? Huh? Yeah, I'd like to be Pluto the Pup. I'd like to be Donald Duck. Not me. I'd like to be Mickey Mouse. I'd like to be Walt Disney. <laughs> Why, Kenny, you're getting pretty smart. Yeah, I better go and sit down. (laughs) Now, stick around, Kenny. You can take a cold shower when you get home, you know? Say, Jack, let's get down to business. What are we going to do for tonight? Well, Phil, I really wanted to do another play, but I must get over to my house. You know, the one that's going up in Beverly Hills. Oh, yes, I asked you about that before. Uh, How's it coming along, Jack? Well, it's worrying me. You see, Mr. Burgess, my builder, has gone haywire again, and I must get to the house. But why do you have to leave right now? Well, he's already built eight stories, and I want to get over there and stop him. (laughs) And such extravagance. They've used over six kegs of nails already. Say, Jack. How many nails are there in a keg? 18,967. I thought you'd know. (laughs) Well, someone's got to keep track of those things. Uh, I'm going over there now. Do you want to come along, Mary? Yeah, I'll go with you. Can I come too, Jack? Sure, Kenny. I'm not having enough trouble with Burgess. (laughs) Say, Don, you and Phil take care of the rest of the show, will you? Okay, Okay, Jack. Jack. Well, goodbye. Oh, wait a minute, Jack. I won't be seeing you until next week. I'm flying down to Louisville for the Kentucky Derby. Oh, so you're flying down to Louisville. Going to take a plane or use your ears? (laughs) 
，来换英语。Bill, Bill, as long uh, Bill, as long as you're going down there, will you uh, will you do me a favor? Bill, uh, put two dollars on stage hand for me. I'll give you the money when you get back. Oh no! Why not? Well, you still owe me two dollars on the Dempsey Tunney fight. <laughs> well, they're still arguing about it. <laughs> so anyway, I thought I gave you that two dollars. No, you didn't. Oh, that's. Terrible. I must tie a string around my finger. Make it a rope and around your neck. <laughs> Phil, you're the one that should commit suicide. I didn't lose anything. <laughs> well, see you next week, Phil. Come on, Jack. Let's get started. We're going over to your okay, house. Okay, come on, Kenny. So long, boys. See you later. Come on, Jack. Come on. That was Tippy Tin, played by Phil Harris and his orchestra. Now, ladies and gentlemen... We take you to Jack Benny's property in Beverly Hills, where his home is under construction. Well, well, fellas, here we are. There's my house. What do you think of it? Oh, boy, I think it's swell. Of course, it's not finished yet. All those things take time. How do you like it, Mary? It's all right, but what's the idea of all those statues on the roof? Those aren't statues. Hey, you guys, get a move on up there. (laughs) Get busy. Oh, go boil an onion. Mm. I wonder where Mr. Burgess is. He's much too lax with the workmen. Hey, fella, do you know where I can find Mr. Burgess? He's around here somewhere, but you're out of luck, buddy. We don't need any more help. Now, hold on there. I'm Jack Benny. I don't care who you are. We got all the men we need. Never mind that. Where's Mr. Burgess? What do you want a job for, Jack? You're doing all right. Benny, I don't want a job. I'm looking for my builder. Say, Jack, isn't that him over there? Where? Coming towards us on horseback. Oh, yes. Whoa! Whoa, La Cienega! La Cienega? This is where I get off. Why? <laughs> well, Mr. Burgess, this isn't a ranch, you know. What's the idea of riding around on a horse? I got a cowboy suit for Christmas. Oh. <laughs> Well, I just thought I'd drop around, kind of look the place over. Well, I'm glad you did. We're coming along fine, just dandy. That's good. Oh, by the way, I want you to meet Miss Livingston. How do you do, Miss Livingston? The pleasure's all mine. No, half of it's mine. You're cute. <laughs> Mary. And this is Kenny Baker. He works on my program. Oh, how do you do, young man? Hello, Mr. Burgess. So you're the man Jack's always complaining about. Kenny. <laughs> Well, Mr. Burgess, let's have a look around. I'd like to see the grounds first. All right, we'll go around here to the backyard. You'll be mighty proud of it. Oh, so. We're coming around to the backyard, man! <laughs> hmm. Well, that was a spurt. <laughs> Things are sure going fast back here. They, ah, there's the uh, tennis court. Yes, sir. We just finished that tennis court this morning. Isn't it a beauty? It sure is. Hey, wait a minute. There's nothing on the other side of the net. There's only half a court there. Oh, were you going to play with someone? <laughs> Why, certainly. Of course I'm going to play with someone. Well, in that case, we'll put the other half in right away. Yes, it'll help a lot. Can you imagine that, Mary? How can I play on half a tennis court? You never hit the ball over the net anyway. <laughs> I do, too. I'm a regular Donald Fudge. Say, Jack, didn't you say you had a swimming pool over here? Yeah. Oh, sure, it's right. Hey, Mr. Burgess, where's the swimming pool? The what? The swimming pool, where is it? Well, now, that's funny. It was here yesterday. <laughs> I'll check on that. Hey, Doe Bill! Yes? Have you seen Mr. Benny's swimming pool? I haven't even seen his last picture. <laughs> well, my pool wasn't in it. Isn't that awful, Mary? How can a swimming pool disappear? Don't worry. It'll come home wagging its diving board behind us. <laughs> come on. Let's go inside the house. Uh, yeah, maybe that's missing, too. will be a bit surprised. Come on, Mr. Burgess. I want to see the inside of the house. Okay. This will give you a real thrill. Yeah. All right, men. We're coming into the house. <laughs> My, what activity. I hope President Roosevelt is listening in. Well, uh, here we are. We uh, better go through this window. The door sticks a little bit. Oh. You better get that fixed right away, then. 
Yeah, the window sticks, too. Yeah, fine house. The window stick, the doors stick. And you're stuck. How are we going to get in? Uh, come on, Mr. Benny. I guess we can get through the door, all right. Just help me push it a little. Okay. It's a fine how do you do. Well, I always have trouble with that darn door. <laughs> <laughs> That is certainly very funny. <laughs> oh, Jack, look at that darling little breakfast nook. Isn't it cute? Uh, I'm sorry, Miss Livingston. That's the front hall. Front hall? Well, that shouldn't be out here in the back, should it? No, it shouldn't. I ought to get a zero for that. <laughs> yes, you're a bad boy. Now, look, Mr. Burgess, I want to see all the rooms downstairs first, and then we can go upstairs later. Yes, sir. Right this way, Mr. Benny. Program, program. You can't tell the bathroom from the kitchen without a program. <laughs> program. <laughs> hey, what's going on here, anyway? This house ought to be put in a straitjacket. You're right. And, oh, Jack, look at that sign over the fireplace. Where? Right there. It says, Big Weenie Roast tonight. <laughs> I wish they'd stop making a picnic ground out of this place. Hey, Kenny! Kenny, come over here with us. Why are you standing there looking at that dumb waiter? It fascinates me. <laughs> well, don't get lost. Now, what else is there on this floor, Mr. Burgess? Uh, just follow me. Now, right here... Uh, right here is the attic. The attic? Why, this is the first floor. Oh, that's right. Uh, then shall we call it the sun parlor? Yes, let <laughs> But if that's a sun parlor, there ought to be at least one window in it. If I put in one window, I might as well put in ten. Well, of course, that's the whole idea of a sun parlor, to get sunlight, window. Oh, you're exasperating. <laughs> well, we'll settle that later. Now, let's go upstairs. I want to see the bedroom. All right. Uh, okay, men, we're coming upstairs. <laughs> Say, hey, this is a regular beehive, isn't it? <laughs> oh, they're practically slaves. Uh, now, follow me upstairs. Come on, kiddies. Last one up is a baked potato. <laughs> Come on, let's go. <laughs> Kenny, you lost. You're a baked potato. Okay, put some butter on me. <laughs> now, Mr. Burgess, where's my bedroom? I want to see that first. Uh, do you want the master bedroom, the guest bedroom, or just any old bedroom? I want to see my bedroom, the one I'm going to sleep in. Oh, well, that's the master bedroom. Yeah. Here it is, right here. Say, it looks kind of... Why, Rochester! <coughs> Hello, Mr. Benny. Why, what are you doing here? I moved in already. Well, the house isn't ready yet, and besides, your room is over the garage. I looked at that one, but it don't seem to fit my personality. <laughs> Well, you'll just have to alter your personality. This happens to be my room. Well, I saw it first. That's not the point. You want to know something? I was here ahead of you three days ago. You didn't stick out no claim. <laughs> now, Roger, I'm not going to argue with you. Oh, Jack, let him have the room. I'll do nothing of the kind. Now, you get out of here, Rochester, and get to your quarters in the garage. I don't want to sleep with Joe Maxwell. It snows. <laughs> Only when it's on its back. Now, you can nudge it. Now, get out. Okay, you win. Come on, Jezebel. <laughs> Fine. Glad he had to bring a dog in here yet. You think that's something? Kenny scratching. Now, look, uh, Mr. Burgess, uh, where does that door lead to? The one at the far end of the bedroom? Oh, that's a private balcony. It'll be nice when I get the ivy and everything on it. Oh, that's swell. I've always wanted a balcony. Uh, you'll have to pardon me now, Mr. Benny. I'll see you later. Why, where are you going? It's quitting time, and I want to go downstairs and wake up the men. Oh, by all means, yes. Don't have them sleep overtime. That's double. Well, I'll uh, see you next week, Mr. Benny. Yes, sir. Goodbye, Mr. Burgess. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> That's the silliest laugh I've ever heard. He slid down the banister, too. He did? Hmm? He's a smart fellow, you know that, Jack? Yeah, Kenny, he's smarter than I am. Where are we going now, Jack? Well, I want to go out in that balcony because I know I'll spend a lot of time there taking sun baths and everything. Oh, let's see the rest of the house. Oh, we can do that later. I want to see the balcony. It'll just take a minute. Darn it, this door sticks too. I got it. My, look at that. <laughs> oh. 
cement mixer. Oh, my goodness. Come on, Mary. Let's slide down the banister. Okay. Whee! And we'll be with you again next Sunday night at the same time. I want to take just a moment to thank Ed Vanderveer for driving my Maxwell in the annual Fresno State College Hack Race last Friday. But, Jack, that Allen's car beat yours. Yes, Mary, Allen won by a nose, which he talks through. (laughs) (laughs) Chalk up another one for me. How do you make a zero? Good night, folks. The Jell-O program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston and Phil Harris and his orchestra. For now, ladies and gentlemen... This being Mother's Day, we bring you the mother of the Jell-O program, Jack Benny. Thank you. Yes, sir. Jello again. This is Mrs. Benny talking. And, Don, that introduction may have been spoken in jest, but there's an element of truth in it just the same. Well, Jack, I thought it was very apropos. You are sort of a mother to the gang here. Yes. We honor and respect you, and you're the first one we come to when we need money. That's right, Don. At 6%. That's right, too. <laughs> but, Don, you know, of all the children in my little radio family, you're my favorite. I mean that. No kidding. I, I, I think the world of you. You uh, mean because I'm such a good boy and I always am so nice to you? No, because you're less of a heel than the rest of the gang. (laughs) That's why. Well, anyway, Jack, I think Mother's Day is a marvelous idea, don't you? Yes, Don, it's a great thought. But you know what burns me up with some children? What's that, Jack? Well, take the ones that are away from home. Now, some don't even bother to write their mother a letter all year. And then on this one day, they send her a telegram and scare the dickens out of her. (laughs) <laughs> ah, here comes the black sheep of my family, folks. <laughs> Hello, Philip. Hello, Mammy. <laughs> Mammy, eh? Listen, sonny boy, Mammy's gonna slug you if you don't behave. <laughs> anyway, you're a fine son. I bet you didn't even send your real mother anything today. I did, too. I sent her a picture of my band with me standing in front of it. Oh, well, that was a sweet thought. Yes, no. sir, and I wrote on it, Phil Harris and his orchestra. You'll be mighty proud of that. She probably will, but you might have put Phil Harris and his orchestra on the Jack Benny program. Oh, no, I couldn't do that, Jack. Why not? She thinks I work in a beer parlor. <laughs> oh, I see. You don't want her to know that you're slipping. That's it exactly. Shut up. <laughs> anyway, that's a nice present to send to your mother. A picture of you and those 18 headhunters. <laughs> They look like any minute they're going into a war dance. Now, wait a minute, Jack. The only savage in my band is the drummer. I picked him up in Pango Pango. Oh, a real savage, eh? How'd you happen to meet him? I used to go with his sister. (laughs) Well, I can believe that, but you know, Phil, your drummer seems to be fairly civilized. He doesn't look so vicious. You should have seen him before I had his teeth pulled out. (laughs) Well, you sure have a novel organization there. A drummer from Pango Pango. But at that, he looks mild compared to your guitar player. My goodness. Oh, really, where'd you pick him up? Walt Keegan. Oh. <laughs> now, that's a lie. Look at him. We don't wear rings in our noses and Walt Keegan. Well, he's gone Hollywood. Oh. Well, if they're the rage, I must get one. <laughs> ah, here comes my little daughter now. Hello, Mary. Daughter? What are you talking about? Well, this is Mother's Day, and you're all my kiddies. You see, Mary, you see, I'm, I'm like a mother hen, and the rest of you are my little chicks. Gee, is Don Wilson one of your chicks, too? Yes, he is, Mary. <laughs> What'd you use for a nest, the Hollywood Bowl? <laughs> no. <laughs> you don't get the significance of it at all. By the way, Mary, did you send your mother a telegram today or flowers or anything? Yes, and I've been trying to get her on the long-distance phone all afternoon. Well, why don't you call her from here, Mary? Now, wait a minute, Don. Calls made from the studio are all charged to me personally. What are you doing, Mary? I'm calling Mama. But don't worry, I'll pay for it. Oh, go ahead. I'll treat you. But talk fast, will you? Operator, get me Plainfield, New Jersey. Goose liver, 8400. <laughs> I don't mind goose liver, but 8400 is unbelievable. Well. Yes, that's it. I want to speak to Mrs. Bubbles Livingston. Bubbles, yes. <laughs> Hope Mama's home. Yeah. M is for the million things she gave me. O means only that 
Uh, yes, operator. She's growing old. <laughs> uh, T is for the tear she... Hello. Oh, hello, Mama. Well, you finally got her. Uh, Mama, this is Mary. I said this is Mary, not Harry. Mary. Oh, hurry. Uh, listen, Mama. Mary. M is for the million things you gave mm, An me. encore on my money. <laughs> yes, Mom, it's me. I want to wish you a happy Mother's Day. Did you get the package I sent you? You did? Isn't that wonderful? Congratulations. What is it, Mary? I sent Mama a one-piece bathing suit, and she was just elected Miss Plainfield. <laughs> Say, that's marvelous. Did you hear that, fellas? It must have been foggy. Oh. Uh, what else is new, Mama? He did? Oh, isn't that cute? <laughs> <laughs> you want to hear something sweet, Jack? What? My little brother gave Mama a baseball bat for Mother's Day. She's so happy. Oh. Does your mother play baseball? No, Papa's been acting up again. Oh. Now, hurry it up, Mary. That costs money, will you? Well, Mama, I just called up to say hello. I better hang up because Jack is paying for the call. Yeah. Uh, what? Oh. Uh, hold the line a minute. Uh, uh, Mom wants to talk to you, Jack. Oh, I'm busy, Mary. Well, you better talk to her. Oh, all right. Hello, Mrs. Liv. <laughs> yes. Yes, no. Goodbye. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> That's a fine way to talk to Mama. You certainly gave her the rush, Jack. Well, she asked me how I was feeling. How do I know at $7 a minute? <laughs> Well, Mom is very sensitive. I don't care how sensitive she is. We've got a program to do. Jack, Jack, remember, you're a mother yourself today. Oh, that's right. What am I thinking of? Play, Phil. Now, where did I put my knitting? <laughs> that was Morocco, played by Phil Harris, and he's Pango Pango Palookas. <laughs> Say, Phil, I meant to ask you, you flew down to Louisville for the Kentucky Derby. Did you have a good time there? Oh, marvelous, Jack. There was a big crowd and a lot of excitement. Yeah, I'm sorry I couldn't go gone along with you. Who'd you pick in the Derby? Well, there was a little blonde sitting in the... I don't mean the brown Derby. <laughs> who'd you pick in the Kentucky Derby? Well, I didn't know who to bet on. So just before the race, I went in the clubhouse to think about it over a mint julep. Oh, over a mint julep, huh? Who'd you finally bet on? Fighting Fox, they tell me. <laughs> Oh, I see. Say, I can believe that. I've had a couple of those mint juleps myself, and they're dynamite. Huh? Uh, what are they like, Jack? Well, Mary, after two mint juleps, you sneer at tigers, which you see. <laughs> so why do you sneer at the tigers? Because you hope they'll start something. <laughs> Anyway, Mary, this talk is for us men. You don't know anything about the Kentucky Derby. I do, too. I had a little bet on a horse called Mountain Ridge. Oh, so you bet on Mountain Ridge, eh? Yeah, but the moon came over him before he got in. <laughs> well, I know that horse ran last, Mary, but it wasn't after dark when he came in. It wasn't, eh? No. And why was a jockey wearing a nightshirt? <laughs> I don't know anything about that, and leave me alone. Hey, Mama, here comes your problem, child. Oh, hello, Kenny. Hello. Well, well, how's my youngest son tonight? Son? What are you talking about? Now I have to go through that again. Look, Kenny, this is Mother's Day. I'm a mother hen, and you're all my little chick. A mother hen? I don't believe it. <laughs> You don't believe it. Lay an egg farm, Jack. <laughs> I won't. I'm not in the mood. Mood nothing, you can't. Well, of course I can't. I'm not really a can, Henny. I'm not really a hen, Henny. <laughs> said that because I thought it would be cute on Mother's Day, that's all. You know, Jack, I made up a swell riddle and it just fits Mother's Day. Want to hear it? Well, a riddle, yes, if it'll make you any happier. All right, here's the riddle. Oh. Why did I send my girl a hot dog on Mother's Day? I don't know, Kenny. Why did you send your girl a hot dog on Mother's Day? Because she's a red-hot mama. <laughs> mama, don't you get it? Now, wait a minute, Kenny. Control yourself. 
say, Jack, I've got a riddle, too. Here we go, folks. What is it? Uh, why is Kenny's head like a ping-pong ball? I don't know, Mary. Why is Kenny's head like a ping-pong ball? Because it is, and there's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> Hey, that's not bad, you know. <laughs> that marries a riot. <laughs> yes, she is. Say, this is fun. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we'll have another musical selection sung by Kenny Baker. What's it going to be, Kenny? <laughs> oh, boy. Red Hot Mama. Wow! <laughs> now, forget that riddle. What about your song? Oh, you mean my sideline? <laughs> yes, what are you going to sing? It's a brand new number written by Pinky Tomlin called Lost and Found. Well, go ahead. What children? We have more trouble than the Jones family. <laughs> Very good. That was Lost and Found, sung by Kenny Baker. And now, folks, I have a little surprise for you. A very dear friend of mine who was on my program once before is here in Los Angeles on a vacation. And again, I have persuaded him to appear with us. So now, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to present once again a young fellow I went to school with and who is now the mayor of Waukegan, Illinois, the Honorable Mansell Talcott. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. And it wasn't an imposition, Jack. I'm very happy to be here. And we're glad to have you, believe me. Well, Bitey, that's what we used to call him in school, folks. Uh, how are you enjoying California, Bitey? Just fine, droopy. <laughs> droopy? That's what we used to call Jack. They sure did, folks, until I got suspenders. Ah, <laughs> oh, those were the happy days when we were all just kids in school. And now you're the mayor of Waukegan, and I'm a movie star. Well, I'm a mayor anyhow. <laughs> hey, that's pretty good, yes, sir? But, Bidey, will you ever forget the day we graduated? Remember that funny-looking suit you had on with cuffs on the sleeves and was too tight on you? <laughs> Where'd you ever get that suit? Huh? Your father sold it to me. <laughs> well, I always traded across the street. <laughs> well, things have changed plenty in Waukegan since then, haven't they? Hmm? I'll say they have. You know our fire department. Yes. Well, we've got a hose now. <laughs> you have? What did you do with the bucket? Oh, we put geraniums in them. Oh, well, isn't that marvelous? Say, Barty, you met Mary and Kenny and Don last year in New York, and now I'd like to have you meet our orchestra leader, Phil Harris. Phil, this is the mayor of Waukegan, Mansell Talcott. Glad to know you, Mr. Harris. Same here, Your Honor. You know, my band played in Waukegan once. You did? Yep, the whole town turned out, and we still lost money. <laughs> now, Phil, Waukegan is a big town. Hey, Barty, you want to hear a riddle? Kenny, it's Mayor Talcott, and he doesn't want to hear a riddle. <laughs> That reminds me, Jack, I've been listening to your program tonight, and I couldn't get all that stuff you were saying about Mother's Day. I couldn't figure out whether you were a hen or not. Well, it's very simple, Bidey. I was just making a comparison, that's all. I still don't get it. Gee, if he can be a mayor, I can. <laughs> Kenny. Now, look, Bidey, I have a little surprise for you. As soon as I heard you were going to be up here tonight, I thought it'd be nice to do a special play in your honor. And that's just what we're going to do. Now, you're going to be the star of the play. You know, the lover. Oh, goody. Stop jumping up and down. Now, Mary Livingston is going to be your leading lady. Well, what about Loretta Young? Fidey, don't be unreasonable. Yeah, listen, Mansell, you're no Gable, you know. Mary, quiet. Huh? Well, if he wants Loretta Young, let him have her. Oh, I didn't mean that, Mary. You're better than Loretta Young any day. That shows what you know. <laughs> All right, now I've had enough of this. The next one that insults the mayor has to vote for him. <laughs> uh, now let's go on with our play. Here's what it's all about. It's a modern love story about a wife who has more boyfriends than Snow White has dwarfs. Now look, Bidey, I play the husband, Mary is my wife, and you, Don, Kenny, and Phil, and the orchestra will be her boyfriends. Uh, here's your part, Bidey. Thanks, Jack. I better look it over. I want to be good. Oh, you will be. Don't worry. Now, the scene of our play is the home of Mr. and Mrs. Mortimer J. Bookend in the uh, thriving little community of New York City. As the curtain rises, we find Mrs. Bookend with her husband for a change. Curtain. Music. <laughs> Well, 
Well, darling, it's almost train time. I'll be leaving in a little while for Altoona. Will you miss me? Of course, Mortimer. How long will you be gone? Oh, just a few days. Uh, can't you make it longer? I'm lonesome. <laughs> All right, three weeks, then. There's the phone. I'll answer it. You better not, or you won't go to Altoona. <laughs> I'll take it. Hello? Oh, hello, darling. What, dear? In a little while, honey. Yes? Yes? All right, darling. Goodbye, sweet. Hmm, who was that? The gas company. <laughs> the gas company? Well, they're getting awfully fresh. Oh, Mortimer, why are you so jealous? Oh. Why don't you trust me? Is it because you find cigars around here and you don't smoke? No, it's because I find hats around here and they don't fit me. <laughs> Well, I'll put some paper in them and shut up. Okay. Well, Faith, I must leave you now. <laughs> Goodbye, Faith, dear. You'll be true to me while I'm gone, won't you? Yes, Mortimer. Oh, Faith, my darling, at last we are alone. You don't come in yet, Bidey. Oh, pardon me. <laughs> Fine mare. Well, goodbye, Faith. I'll write you every day. Uh, never mind. Just wire me when you're coming home. I sure will. So long. We now take you to the same house three seconds later. Uh, come in. Hello, honey. Has bookend left yet? <laughs> yes, Philip, my angel. <laughs> they think I've gone, but I'm really peeking in the window, folks. I'll lift it up a little and listen. Oh, Phil, darling, I feel a draft. Close the window, will you? Okay, honey lamb. Ouch, my nose. <laughs> oh, Phil, I can't tell you how much I've missed you. I know, dearest. I had to come here tonight as there's something I must ask you. Uh, what is it, Philzy Pie? Oh, Faith, my darling, at last we are alone. Not yet, Your Honor. Oh, pardon me. <laughs> I wish he'd wait. I'm sorry I put him in here. <laughs> Tell me, Phil, what were you going to say? Listen, Faith, how long can this go on? Why don't you give up Mortimer and fly away with me? You've got something there. Oh, quick, quick, hide it. Maybe my husband. Your husband? I'll hide in the clothes closet. No, no, Fred Allen is in there. Fred Allen? What's he doing here? It's town hall tonight. <laughs> quick, quick, hide under the sofa. Okay. Uh, come in. Oh, Kenny, my love. Hey, darling, has Droopy left yet? Yes, he's on his way to Altoona. Ah, little does she know who lurks beneath this window. With a broken nose. Quiet. <laughs> go ahead, Kenny. Hey, I love you. How long can I go on waiting? Waiting? What do you see in Mortimer? Nothing. Then why don't you give me up and marry him? <laughs> oh, what a cluck. It may be my husband. Your husband? I'll hide under the sofa. No, Phil's in there. Hide in the ash can. Okay, I'm not fussy. Hurry, Kenny. Uh, who's there? Oh, Faith, my darling. At last we are alone. Wait till you get in the house, will you? <laughs> oh, pardon me. <laughs> Mansell, at last you're here. Yes, Faith. Why don't you give up Mortimer and marry me? Marry you? Yes, then we can go on our honeymoon to Waukegan Falls. But, Mansell, there are no falls in Waukegan. There are two. The WPA just built them. <laughs> Say, that's news to me. Quick, Mansell, it may be my husband. You must hide. Where? It's crowded already. Come on, the ice can. It's fun. <laughs> yes, and don't slam the lid. Hurry, Mansell, quick. Uh, who is it? It's me, your husband. Who? Your husband. Husband. H is for the house so full of fellows. U is for you better get them out. <laughs> Here I come, ready or not. Uh-huh, I got you this time. You thought I went to Altoona. But I know what's been going around here, and I'm going to put a stop to it. Mortimer, Mortimer, what are you going to do? I'll show you what I'm going to do. Come on out, all of you, or I'll let you have it. Mortimer! All right, then, take this. I just shot the gas company. Play, Phil, if you can. And we'll be with you again next Sunday night at the same time. 
And I want to wish all you mothers everywhere a happy day every day. And, Bidey, I want to thank you very much for taking part in our little play tonight. Perhaps something you're not used to, but we did have a lot of fun. We certainly did, Jack, and I hope I did all right as an actor. Why, you were swell. You were really marvelous. It's been nice having you here in Hollywood, Bidey. I suppose you'll be going back to Waukegan soon. Uh, yes, if I don't get in the movies. <laughs> well, I'll see you down at the station, Bidey. Good night, folks. The Jell-O Program, starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston and Phil Harris in his orchestra. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we bring you a man who has joined the ranks of Hollywood surfmen and bought himself a racehorse, Jack Benny. Thank you. Thank you. Hello again, this is Jack Benny talking, and Don, I don't know where you pick up all this information about me. Now, how did you find out that I bought a racehorse? Well, Jack, I was talking to Bing Crosby the other day, and he just happened to mention it. Oh, yes, Bing knows about it. As a matter of fact, I've been trying to put my horse in Crosby's stable, but it's too crowded. Uh, well, Crosby has an enormous stable. There's plenty of room there for your horse. All right, then he wanted too much money. <laughs> I wouldn't pay him $80 a week to board my horse if he sang it to sleep every night. <laughs> Oh, I'll find another place for him, all right. Oh, I'm sure you will. Oh, and Jack, uh, you know I'm a pretty good rider, so if you ever need a jockey, think of me. <laughs> I've got a horse, Don, not a 20-mule team. <laughs> Why, your shadow alone would break his back. <laughs> Say, Jack, how'd you happen to buy a race horse? You don't know anything about horses? I don't, eh? Well, it might interest you to know, Phil, that I was kicked in the face at the age of 10. <laughs> By a horse? Yes. How did that happen? Well, my father sent me out to feed him, and it was dark in the barn. <laughs> now, believe me, fellas, I know plenty about horses. <laughs> but why this secrecy? Why didn't you tell us about your horse before? Well, I didn't want people to think I was showing off or doing it for publicity. You know how modest I am, you know? <laughs> yeah, what's the name of your horse? Buck Benny. <laughs> And you're going to hear from that, baby. If I'm any judge of thoroughbreds, he's going places. Well, uh, tell us more about it, Jack. Is it a yearling? Uh, what's that, Don? Is it a yearling? Uh, well, it's a sort of a back bay color. <laughs> with a... with a black spot on his nose. Oh, you don't understand, Jack. Is it a yearling? In other words, how old is it? Oh. Oh! Oh, it, it was two... <laughs> it was two years old in January. So I wish you'd talk a little plainer, Don. I didn't quite get you there, you know? <laughs> But it's a real thoroughbred, and I know. By the way, Jack, who's your horse's sire? What is that, Phil? I said, who's the sire? The sire? Yes. Oh, I am. I paid for the horse. <laughs> what a silly question. <laughs> Gee, Phil, you don't know what you're talking about, do you? I don't, eh? Well, let's see what you know. Is your horse a gelding or a filly? A what? Is it a gelding or a filly? Is it a gelding or a filly? Is it a gelding or a filly? <laughs> Trying to be smart, making up words. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not making up words. Is it a gelding or a filly? In other words, is it a boy or a girl? It's a horse. <laughs> My goodness, you're just a dodo if there ever was one. <laughs> You won't be so smart when he wins the Irish sweepstakes. Well, have you got me. a trainer for him, Jack? A trainer? No, I just bought him a rowing machine. That'll keep him, <laughs> That'll keep him in shape, all right. A rowing machine? Well, that settles it. You don't know any more about horses than I know about music. Oh, I don't. <laughs> I don't. I don't know anything about horses, eh? I used to be a trout. <laughs> a trout? Yes, yeah, a trout, and I gave out plenty of good tips, believe me. You're a fine turf man. Yeah. How many legs has your horse got? My horse has four legs, Smarty. How do you know? I bought him a blanket with two pair of pants and shut up. <laughs> Believe me, I'm sorry the whole thing came up. Hello, Jack. For heaven's sake, what's the matter now? Well, what would it be? Phil and Don found out that I bought a race horse, and you can guess the rest. Have you boys been picking on Jack again? Oh, don't interfere, Mary. I can fight my own battles. Well, you fellas ought to be ashamed of yourself. Mm. Jack knows more about horses than both of you put together. Yeah. He even tried to get Lady Godiva for a jockey. <laughs> I did not. Then why did you put blinkers on the horse? <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, you're just making things up, that's all. So you've seen that nag of Jack's, huh, Mary? Oh, sure, a couple of times. Well, is it a good horse? Uh, what does it look like? Looks like any minute two men are going to step out of it. <laughs> It does not. It's a fine-looking seed. Oh, it is. And gee, fellas, you ought to see the way Jack pampers that horse. Pampers him? <laughs> what do you mean, Mary? Jack bought him shoes with art supporters. Now, look, fellas, Mary's giving you the wrong impression. Now, here's a picture of him, Don. He's a pretty good-looking animal, isn't he? Say, he is at that. Yeah. Hey, Jack, let me see that picture, will you? Here you are, Kenny. What do you think of him? Oh, boy, he's a beauty. Looks pretty fast, doesn't he? I'll say he does. Well, why is he laying on his back? <laughs> Penny, turn the picture around like this. There. Well, I'll be darned. He got up. Yeah. <laughs> he does all kinds of tricks like that. Now, go ahead and sing your song, Kenny, and give me back that picture. Say, wait a minute. Let me have a look at that. Here you are, Phil. Well, is that a real horse or isn't it? A good-looking animal, all right. But wait a minute, what's this stamped on the back of the picture? Where? Right there, it says Man of War. Man of War? Well, that's the name of the photographer, Joe Man of War. <laughs> He's a Greek fella. Oh, <laughs> sing, Kenny. He, I must have picked up the wrong picture. <laughs> Uh, Kenny Baker singing, I fall in love with you every day. That was a beautiful number, Kenny, and a very romantic thought. Thanks, Jack. And dedicate that song to your horse. To my horse? Why? Well, I'm mad at my girl. Oh. Oh, a little snip. <laughs> Kenny, gee, I never saw a kid like you always getting a new girlfriend and then picking a fight with her. What's the matter with you? Oh, I don't know. I guess I'm just a gorilla. <laughs> Kenny, you're a simian, but not quite a gorilla. Well, he's young yet. Yeah. <laughs> Tonight, for the first time this year, we are going to offer our annual murder mystery. We feel that this will be a high spot in the career of the Benny Federal Theater Project. So now we will present a deep, dark mystery entitled Murder in the Library or Book March the Spot. <laughs> Gee, isn't that clever, folks? Uh, and I thought of that all by myself. You laughed all by yourself, too. <laughs> Now, wait a minute, Mary. That was a very funny title. I can't help it if our studio audience didn't get it. But I'll bet our listening audience liked it. We did not. <laughs> now, in our little drama, which will go on immediately after the next number, the cast of characters will... Uh, pardon me, folks. Come in. Hiya, Buck. Hello, Fanzo. Well, well, if it isn't Damon and Pythia. <laughs> well, I haven't seen you two fellas in weeks. Where have you been keeping yourselves? Oh, we've been pretty busy, Buck. Me on my farm and Slip on his. Oh, that's right. Slip did buy part of your farm. How's it going, Slip? Have you planted anything yet? Yes, but believe me, Zeke, it's no good. I'm having plenty of trouble. Well, that's too bad. What's the matter with it? I struck oil last week and it ruined my potatoes. <laughs> Oil? Why, that's great, isn't it? What kind of oil is it? The man oil. He's trying to sell that property back to me. Oh, well, I don't blame him if it isn't good land. Well, he shouldn't complain. I gave him a rock-bottom price on it. Yes, that's all I got was rock. Our cactus wouldn't grow there. Well, naturally, Slep, you got to clear the land first. You know, break up the rocks and cart them off. Say, what am I, a chain gang? <laughs> well, you just don't know anything about farming, that's all. Is that so? I'm a good farmer. A fine farmer. He bends over in front of goats. <laughs> he does Now listen, Mr. DeWine <laughs> What about those rabbits you sold me? Oh, fine rabbits Well, what about it? I sold you two of them, didn't I? That's the trouble, I still only got two <laughs> Now wait a minute, boys Wait a minute Look, boys, you can settle your own troubles when you get home. Let's talk about something else. Uh, tell them about your horse, Jack. Oh, yes. You know, fellas, I bought a race horse. Uh, that's right, Buck. I heard about that. Hey, I'll bet you he's a regular pumpoonie. Yes, he's, he's all right, but I'm having trouble finding a place to keep him. Oh, well, why don't you keep him on my farm, Buck? I got a nice pasture for him. Keep him on my farm. I'll dye the rocks green. <laughs> Well, that's a good idea. I'll tell you what I'll do, fellas. I'll split it between you. Andy, I'll let you feed him for seven days. 
And Slep, you can feed him for seven days. How's that? <laughs> what are you laughing at, Mary? The most tomatoes in one week. <laughs> Never mind. How does that strike you, boys? Now, wait a minute, Buck. If I were you, I wouldn't let Schlepperman have that horse. Why not? He'll put rockers on it and give it to his kid. Well, I'll take a chance. Now, you, you each get him for one week, and I want you to take good care of him. He's a very delicate animal. Well, leave it to me, Buck. I'll take him first. Now, wait a minute, Henry. I've run him for the first week. No, sir. i got to have him right now. i got a lot of plowing to do. <laughs> Oh, that's fine for my race horse. Say, how much are you guys going to charge me? Don't worry about it, Jackie boy. If he wins the Kentucky Derby, you'll break even. I thought so. Now, come over here a minute, boys. We'll talk this little deal over and down. Uh, play something, Phil, while I do a little dickery. Now, look, boys. My... <laughs> that was something tells me played by Phil Harris and his orchestra. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we will present our thrilling, baffling, fine-tingling melodrama entitled Murder in the Library or Book March the Spot. <laughs> See, I love that. Boy, are you corny. <laughs> Go away, Mary. Now, I will play the part of police captain O'Benny, as brave a blue coat as ever wore bulletproof undies. <laughs> Bill Harris and Kenny Baker will be my brave, loyal, and stupid assistants. Here's your badge, Phil. Okay, Chief. Here, Kenny, here's your badge, your uniform, and your club. Okay, where's my flat feet? <laughs> On the opposite end of your flat head. <laughs> oh, that's right. Hmm. <laughs> Now, Mary Livingston will play the part of Mrs. Sugar Clunkenbush, a much-married society woman who makes a hobby of collecting husbands, guns, and life insurance. Gee, do I have to kill all my husbands? You've already killed seven of them, Mary, and there's just one left. Oh, one little husband sitting on a fence. Boom, 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 I shot him in the pen. <laughs> well, I suppose that wasn't corny. I suppose you didn't write it. Quiet. <laughs> Now, the part of the butler will be played by Don Wilson, who has been in the service of Mrs. Clunkenbush for about, uh... Oh, Don, how long have you been with Mrs. Clunkenbush? It'll be, uh, six husbands in October. I think. <laughs> and now for our play, folks. The scene opens at police headquarters where we find Cap O'Benny very busy playing solitaire. Curtain. Music. <laughs> hmm. Now, let's see. There's the jack of clubs. Here's a seven of hearts. I'll put that on the jack. No, I won't do that. That would be cheating. Or should I? No, I won't. Hey, Cap. Yeah? What's the idea of playing solitaire with handcuffs on you? I don't trust myself. I need the ace of spades and it's up my sleeve. <laughs> I'll get it for you. Oh, no, you won't. Why, you dirty crook, I ought to put you in jail. Now, let's see. Is that the phone, Cap? It ain't a Swiss water, the lack. <laughs> Cap O'Benny speaking. Yes, sir. What? You say your wife ran away eight months ago. Well, why didn't you report it sooner? Oh, you wanted to give her a good start. <laughs> what? No, don't worry. I won't rush. Goodbye. Now, let's see. The six of hearts goes on the black king. Oh, I wish I wouldn't do that. But how else can I win? <laughs> Oh, Cap! Cap! What is it, Sergeant Baker? Somebody's been passing phony one-dollar bills all over town, and I've got one of them. A dollar bill, eh? How do you know it's phony? Washington is wearing Lincoln's beard. <laughs> hmm. Let me see that. You're right, and he's wearing Lincoln's hat, too. You think that's something? Turn the bill over. Good heavens, Carol Lombard is sitting on the eagle. <laughs> nice work, Baker. we got to report this to Washington. Can you get any more of these bills? Yeah, my uncle makes them. <laughs> Your uncle, well, you better tell him to stop or else. Hey, Cap, Cap, what is it, Harris? You know the prisoner in cell 21 that sent his suit out to be pressed? Yes. Well, he was in it. <laughs> I'll wait for that one. All right. <laughs> Hang out the vacancy sign and don't annoy me. <laughs> hmm, I'll take it. Hello, Cap O'Benny speaking. What? A murder? Yes, yes, hold everything. We'll be right over. Hey, fellas, what do you know? We've got a murder. Hooray! We've got a murder. We've got a murder. Yippee! I knew we'd get one if we waited long enough. Come on, fellas, let's go right over. Where are we going, Chief? To, uh... Oh, darn it, I forgot to get the address. Gee, I hope they call back. That's a fine how do you do. We wait around all year for a murder, we get one and you lose it. 
Wait, I know. It must be Mrs. Clunkenbush on Park Avenue. She married her eighth husband two months ago, and he's about due for his lead anniversary. <laughs> Come on, boys. Let's go. Calling all cards. Calling all cards. Go to 215 Maple Street. Man beating up wife. That is all. Mm, man beating up wife. Make a note of that card. I got it, Chief. Calling all cards. Calling all cars. Go to 215 Maple Street. She's beating him up now. That is all. <laughs> Turn up that note, car. Okay, Chief. Come on, pass you, car. Come on, Here's the place. This is the house right here. Baker, you break down the door. Okay, hold my banana. <laughs> I told you a thousand times not to eat on the job. Now, break down the door. Let's give him a hand, Harris. Ready, set, go! Well, we've got that down. Here comes somebody now. Did you ring, gentlemen? Ring? No, he didn't. We're the police. Who are you? I'm Blimp, the butler. <laughs> Blimp, the butler, eh? Yes, and I didn't do it. You didn't do what? Goodness, haven't you heard? We think Mr. Clunkenbush has been murdered. What makes you think so? Well, he's in the library reading a book, and he hasn't turned a page in three days. <laughs> make a note of that, Sarge. Gotcha, Chief. Can I make a note, too? Quiet. Now, tell me, Blimp, where's Mrs. Clunkenbush? Right this way, gentlemen. She's out in the garden, burying the gun. Oh, burying the gun, eh? Her husband is murdered, and she's out in the garden, burying the gun. What do you make of that, Baker? She doesn't need it anymore. <laughs> now you're clicking, you cluck. Come on, Glenn, take it to Mrs. Clunkenbush. Right this way, you bum. Come on, men. Aha! We got you this time, Mrs. Clunkenbush. Oh, how do you do, Captain? I've been rather expecting you. Oh, you have. Now there's no use calling, Clunky. <laughs> Your butler, Glimp, broke down and confessed. Glimp broke down, eh? Yes. I knew I should have filled him with helium. <laughs> now, listen. You just buried a gun in this garden, didn't you? I buried a dagger, too. Oh, so you not only shot your husband, but you stabbed him, too. Yep, I got the daily double. <laughs> well, you've gone too far, Mr. Funkenbush. Now, you've had eight husbands in four years, haven't you? What about it? And they all met untimely death. Take your first husband, the big game hunter. You went on a hunting trip with him, and he's the first thing you shot. Well, he looked like a gazelle. <laughs> That's no excuse. And your second husband. Uh, you mean Pat Qualley? Yes, yeah, Pat Qualley. You no know, sooner fell in love with him than we found him laying on the floor with an arrow in his back. You did that. Could have been Cupid, you know. That's what you told the jury. And your third husband was killed, too. What happened to him? All I did was slap him on the back. Yes, but he was leaning out of a penthouse window at the time. <laughs> and what about your fourth husband? Oh, this is getting boresome. It is, eh? Oh, hello, Filthy. I didn't see you standing there. Hello, sweetheart. Sergeant Harris, do you know this woman? Yes, we're engaged to be married. I'm going to be her next husband. Well, congratulations and rest in peace. <laughs> now, let's go in and look at the body. Hey, Cap, Cap. What is it, Baker? I was in the library just now, and I don't think Mr. Clunkenbush is dead yet. How do you know? I went to reach for his pulse, and he shook hands with me. <laughs> well, let's hurry up in there. Imagine a man shot and stabbed and still alive. There he is, Cap. Mr. Clunkenbush. Mr. Clunkenbush, how do you feel? A little drafty. <laughs> well, I shouldn't wonder. Now, tell me, can you name the person or persons who try to kill you? Why, of course I can. I was here at the time. Then tell me exactly what happened. Make notes on this, Harry. Okay, Chief. Now, go ahead. Well, I was sitting here in the library reading a book. Uh-huh. When all of a sudden, the door behind me opened. Uh -huh. So I turned around and said, please, see the party Of course, I couldn't tell the way to see the weather. I said, it a dog. And I think you might want to see the way to see the and right at the time we lost the scene, yeah. Big Beat, who sent it? Oh, it was ghastly. <laughs> the man must be hysterical. Now, Mr. Conkenbush, say that again and slower. This is important. All right. I was sitting in the library reading a book, and I was saying the sent it to you. Oh, she seven. came in. No, they were saving five o'clock. Oh, she didn't come in. No, I was in a set Oh, she came in. Oh, oh, he's she delirious did. now. He's getting weaker. Quick, get him a glass of water. Here you are, Captain. Thanks. Now, drink this, quick. How do you feel now? Oh. Good heavens, he's dead. Mrs. Clunkenbush, what was in that glass of water? Well, I only put in a half of caffeine, and I was a half of clock, and then a half of... And that's the truth. 
Move over, slunk and bush. I'm tired. Play, Phil. <laughs> and we'll be with you again next Sunday night at the same time when we will present our version of David O. Selznick's outstanding film production, The Adventures of Tom Sawyer. So be sure and listen in. And guess who's going to be Tom Sawyer, folks? No kidding, Jack. Are you going to be Tom Sawyer? Of course I am, Mary. Do you think you can have your face lifted by next Sunday? I think so, yes. Good night, folks. The Jell-O program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston and Phil Harris and his orchestra. For now, ladies and gentlemen, put on your carpet slippers, move your chairs up to the fireplace, and throw the radio on the fire, because here comes Jack Benny. Hello again, this is Jack Benny coming to you through a lot of smoke. And, Don, I must admit that was a very funny introduction, but I guess I'm just not in the mood for it. And, incidentally, if I happen to be a little bit irritable and nervous tonight, you'll have to excuse me. Why? What's the matter with you, Jack? Well, Don, I've been on a very strict diet for about a week now, and it's kind of getting on my nerves. Oh, a diet? Well, now, that's something new for you, isn't it? Yes, since I've been doing well. (laughs) But, uh... You see, Don, uh, I'm starting my new picture next week, and Paramount insists that I take off some weight. Oh, I see. Well, just what are you allowed to eat, Jack? Well, for breakfast, I have orange juice, and for lunch and dinner, I have nothing but green salads. I've eaten so much lettuce lately, rabbits follow me down the street. (laughs) And all because I have to make a movie. Well, that is pretty tough. I'll say it is. But, Don, I told Paramount that I'd stick to the diet for the first part of the picture. But when I get to the love scenes, I gotta have raw meat. (laughs) You know, Don, I'll never go through this again. Leave me. Say, Jack. What is it, Mary? (laughs) I had an uncle that was on a diet of nothing but soup, and he lost 23 pounds in one week. Nothing but soup? Say, he must have had a lot of willpower, huh? Yeah, besides that, my aunt hit his teeth. Oh, Hit his teeth. Well, no wonder. Huh? But you know, Jack, she never should have hit him in the fridge there. Why not? After he got him back, they chattered for a month. <laughs> well, never mind your uncle. My diet is really doing me some good. Can't you notice any difference in me, Mary? Well, uh, your hair is much thinner. <laughs> That's not what I meant. Anyway, my hair isn't thin. It's just the way I got it parted. You should have a part that big in your new picture. <laughs> Don't worry about me. I'm only the leading man, that's all. Oh, uh, by the way, Jack, I understand they're going to make this picture of yours in Technicolor. Is that right? Uh, no, Don, they're not. I had tests made in Technicolor, but it it didn't work out very well. well. Why? What happened? Well, due to a peculiar pigment in my skin, I photographed plaid. <laughs> <laughs> With a face like that, I'd have to get Annie Laurie for my leading lady. Well, who is going to be your leading lady, Jack? Has anyone been selected yet? Uh, Yes, Don, it's Joan Bennett. We had our first rehearsal yesterday, and I want to tell you, she is beautiful. See, I was so excited working with her. Oh, you were? Yeah, Mary was there. I I couldn't remember a line, could I, Mary? No, and she couldn't remember your name. (laughs) She could, too. She only called me Hey You once. Now, believe me, as soon as I saw Joan Bennett, I didn't mind going on this diet. She's worth it. Oh, hello, Phil. Hello, flat face. (laughs) All right, Phil, now don't you start in. I got other troubles. I know, Jack. I heard you talking about your diet. And I wouldn't go through that for all the pictures in the world. No, you wouldn't, eh? No, sir. You know what I just had for dinner? What? My mother fixed me a heap of southern fried chicken with hot biscuits and gravy. Mm -hmm. And the fluffiest mashed potatoes I ever tasted. Yeah? And then I had corn on the cob with melted butter just oozing out of it. (laughs) Yeah? Oh, boy. Stop drooling, Jack. I'm not drooling. Tell them what we had for dessert, Phil. Oh, were you there, Don? Yes, sir. And Phil's mother prepared a bowl of jello that was a production. A production? Yes, sir. She had raspberry jello on the bottom, and then a layer of sliced bananas, and on top of that, a combination of cherry, lemon, and lime that was the most beautiful sight you ever saw. Well, I must admit that was a marvelous meal, but the way you guys eat is disgraceful. See, even when I could eat all I wanted, I never made a pig of myself. Not much. Well, I didn't. Go on, I saw you in a cafeteria one day with a caddy. <laughs> you 
Well, I had a club steak. <laughs> now, let's not mention food anymore. Uh, there must be something else we can talk about. Hello, Kenny. That's my line. Hello, Kenny. Hello. Now, look, Kenny, you just got here, so before you say anything, I want to warn you about something. What is it, Jack? Well, now, don't do anything silly tonight to upset me because I'm not feeling well. I'm very nervous and irritable and jumpy and jittery. Gee, you ought to go on a diet. <laughs> Kenny, that's the whole trouble. I am on a diet. You are? Yes. Wouldn't I make a lousy doctor? <laughs> Kenny, I wish that next Sunday you'd just come in singing. <laughs> now, if you want to make me feel good and forget my diet, go ahead and sing your song. Okay. Here, hold my chocolate bar. Oh, all right. What's the use? I'm not going to hold out any longer. Yum, yum. Sing, Kenny. Oh, boy, this is good. <laughs> Uh, that was Kenny Baker singing Love Light in the Starlight from the picture Jungle Love. And, Kenny, I don't have to tell you that it was very good. I'll say you don't. I heard it. <laughs> now, Kenny, that sounded very hammy and also in very poor taste. See, you never see me pat myself on the back. You can't. You got rheumatism. I have not. I might have a little shooting pain once in a while, but that's all. And now, ladies and gentlemen... As we announced last week, tonight for our feature attraction, the Benny Chautauqua Players <laughs> will uh, present their version of Mark Twain's great novel of American youth, recently brought to the screen by David O. Selznick. None other than that immortal classic, The Adventures of Tom Sawyer. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, and go away. Uh, now, in our production... I will, of course, enact the uh, title role. That is, I will be Tom Sawyer. Tom Sawyer? Of course, that lovable, freckle-faced, barefoot little boy. No kidding, Mary. Can't you just picture me as Tom Sawyer? Yes, if George Arliss is Huckleberry Finn. <laughs> now, that's silly. Imagine George Arliss running around in his bare feet. Gee, that would be some scandal. Hmm. No doubt. But no kidding, fellas. I love to play this part because, well... When I was a kid, I was just like Tom Sawyer. I used to play hooky from school and go swimming in the old swimming hole. Ah, those were the days. Of course, the nights were kind of dull. You know. <laughs> but I'll bet none of you fellas have the real childhood memories that I have. I don't know about that, Jack. I had a lot of fun when I was a kid. Oh, go on, Phil. You weren't a real outdoor country boy like I was. I bet you were teacher's pet. I would if she would. <laughs> That's not what I mean. I'm talking about the kind of kids that Mark Twain wrote about. And that was me. I was a real Tom Sawyer. I had rosy cheeks, big blue eyes, and long curls way down to my shoulders. You weren't Tom Sawyer. You were Shirley Temple. <laughs> well, I was talented, if that's what you mean. Anyway, there's no use getting sentimental around this bunch. Now, but... wait a minute, Jack. I love all this reminiscing. Well, I can remember how limber I was when I was a kid. You know, in those days, I could bend over and touch the floor with my hands. Well, you can do that now, can't you, Don? Yes, but I can't get up. <laughs> oh, then I wouldn't reminisce if I were you. But it is fun, though, isn't it? You know, Jack, I'm not as old as you fellas, but I've got my memories, too. You have, Kenny? Yeah. Gee, I can remember when I smoked my first cigarette. Your first cigarette, eh? When was that, Kenny? Last night. Boy, am I sick. <laughs> Well, it serves you right. So a cigarette made you sick, eh? Yeah. I guess I shouldn't have swallowed it when my mother came in the room. <laughs> no, that was the wrong move. <laughs> but you know, fellas, in all, in all this talk, we've overlooked the biggest thrill of all. And it came to every one of us. What's that, Jack? Will you ever forget the day when we got our first pair of long pants? Yeah. 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 I pass. <laughs> Mary. Well, that's enough chatter about our childhood days. Now, getting back to our play, I will be Tom Sawyer, and Phil, you're going to be Sid Sawyer, my half-brother. I ain't going to be no fraction. You're going to be what I say, and if you remember the picture, Phil, you're a little tattletale and a sissy. I object. Now, don't spoil the plot. 
Now, Mary, you play the part of Becky Thatcher, my little sweetheart. Kenny, you'll be Skinny Baker. And Don, let's see, what do we call you? What do they call you when you were a kid, Don? Puddinhead. That's it. <laughs> Puddinhead Wilson. Well, we're all set now, except for one of the most important characters in our play. Who can we get to be Huckleberry Finn? Hi, you buck! Why, Andy Devine, you couldn't have come in at a better time. No fooling. You're just the type we need for a Huckleberry Finn. Uh, now, wait a minute, Buck. Is that a dignified part? Why? Well, I got to be careful now. You see, I was just elected mayor of Van Nuys. Oh, that's right. You are the mayor. I read about it in the papers. Congratulations, Van Nuys. <laughs> yes, sir. Congratulations, Andy. <laughs> How do you feel and being on the level, folks? He really is mayor of Van Nuys. And you know, Andy, that's quite an honor. Huh? Yeah. Ma says it's just a question of time now till I'm in the White House. <laughs> I wouldn't be a bit surprised. My friends... Didn't... Now, wait a minute, Andy. <laughs> wait a minute. Don't rush things. Huh? And say, uh, now that... And now that you're mayor of Van Nuys, I suppose you're going to make your paw chief of police. No, I'll be satisfied if I can just get him out of jail. <laughs> well, you're the boss now. Say, Andy, I'll bet there was a lot of excitement around the old farm, wasn't there? <laughs> I'll say there was. You know that hen I got that ain't laid an egg in over four years? Yeah. Well, when the news of my election came in, she hit the jackpot. <laughs> But jackpot, good heavens, how many eggs did she lay? I don't know, Buck. She ain't stopped yet. <laughs> Still all right, Andy. Well, settle down now and get ready for our play. We're going to do it right after Phil's number. Okay, Buck. And while you're at it, uh, wipe that lipstick off your face. Where'd you get it? Well, you know us politicians, Buck, we got to kiss a few babies. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Yes, sir. Play, Phil. We sure got a high-class program today. That was Cry, Baby, Cry, played by Phil Harris and his orchestra. Now, folks, as our play happens to be very long, we are going to present it in two installments. Tonight, we will offer Chapter One in The Adventures of Tom Sawyer. Take it, Phil. And now, come with us to the sleepy little hamlet of St. Petersburg, Missouri. A lazy, peaceful river town. Nestled on the banks of the mighty Mississippi. It is a bright spring morning many years ago. The sun is up. Aunt Polly is up. Everybody's up. And even eggs are 80 cents a dozen. As the curtain rises, we are in the home of Aunt Polly just before breakfast. Curtain. Music. I'll be right down. That, that boy, he's enough to give a body connection. He gets into more trouble than any child in this town. I'm a good boy, ain't I, Aunt Polly? <laughs> yes, you are, Sidney. You're always so neat and clean and tidy. Got pretty hair, too. <laughs> you, you sure have. Now, Tom Sawyer... You come down here this minute or you won't keep me breakfast. Oh, boy, I'm starved. Here I come, Aunt Polly. No, oh, I always fall down these steps. I don't care. I can take it. Good morning, Aunt Polly. Hmm. You certainly got there fast enough. Well, I was hungry. Good morning, Brother Tom. Good morning, Brother Rat. <laughs> You put lard on those steps, and I ought to slug you. You, you let me alone now. Aunt Polly, Aunt Polly. <laughs> Aunt Polly, Aunt Polly. You big baby. Now stop this falling, children, and let's have our breakfast. Tom, did you wash your hands? Yes, ma'am, I washed them. Then take off your gloves and sit down. <laughs> Some gloves, they got fingernails on them. Now oh, shut up, you little squealer. I'll take a poke at you. You're lucky Aunt Polly is here. And you're lucky this is a play. <laughs> That's 
so. Gee, I'm hungry. What do we got for breakfast, Aunt Polly? I mean, what do we got for breakfast, Aunt Polly? <laughs> Here's your kidney. Here's some hot cakes with sausages, coffee, and cinnamon buns. Thanks, Aunt Polly. And Tom, here's some orange juice for you. Darn my diet. <laughs> I'm starved, too. Now eat quickly, children, or you'll be late for school. Mm, eat quickly. I'm going to steal a hot cake from you, Sydney. You do, and I'll tell Paramount. Why, you... <laughs> you little... Now, now, children, stop fighting. Sydney... Uh, please pass me the crackers. What was that, Aunt Polly? Pass me the crackers. Why? Polly wants a cracker. Ha, ha, ha. Ouch. I thought it was funny. There's the first bell. Hurry, children, or you'll be late for school. I don't care if I am. Ouch again. Gee whiz. Now get along to school. Tom, where are your books? In my pants. I thought you were going to hit me there. <laughs> Well, I'm going. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye, Sydney, dear. Goodbye, Aunt Polly. Goodbye, Aunt Polly. Goodbye, Aunt Polly. Gee, but you're cute. I ought to sock you. Now, don't you hit me, Tom Sawyer. I'll scream. <laughs> children, children, you'll be late. <laughs> Gee, I hate school. I wish I didn't have to go. You never go anyway. You and that Huckleberry Finn are always playing hooky. Well, don't let me catch you snitching, or I'll give you a good kick in the shins. Oh, look who's coming down the street on his bicycle. Hello, Tom! Hello, Sid! Hello, Puddinhead! Say, Puddinhead, your bicycle tires are flat! They'll be all right when I get off! <laughs> yeah, I wish... I wish I had a bicycle. Me too. Oh, you always want what I want. I ought to give you a good punch in the nose, you little copycat. I'm getting sick of this. Take off your coat. Quiet. <laughs> Gee whiz. Oh, hello, Mrs. Newton. Oh, good morning, my little men. Little men, yes. Yeah, huh? <laughs> good morning, Mrs. Newton. Well, Thomas, I can see by the look on your face that you're on your way to school. Could have been a toothache, you know, you old battle axe. Well... <laughs> Aw, oh, Tom, you ought to be ashamed of yourself talking that way to Mrs. Newton. She'll be awfully mad. Wait till she finds out I set fire to her bustle. <laughs> <laughs> Hiya, Skinny. Hiya, fellows. You coming along to school? I don't have to go to school. I got the measles. The measles? Oh, yeah. Look at those red spots all over your face. Can I touch them? You can eat them, too. They're ketchup. <laughs> I cannot. It's fattening. <laughs> oh, gone. I wish I had the measles. I never have any luck. Hey, Tom! Tom! Oh, that's that bad boy, Huckleberry Finn. Hiya, Huck. Where you going? Down to the swimming hole. You want to come along? I haven't got a bathing suit. Bathing suit? What's that? Now, oh, that's right. We never swim formal. <laughs> See you after school, Huck, and we'll go fishing. All right, drop by the city hall and pick me up. <laughs> okay, so long, Your Honor. <laughs> fishing, eh? I'm going to tell Aunt Polly. You do, and I'll tie knots in your curls. <laughs> Let me tell you another thing, Sid Sawyer. Hey, Tom, what? here comes your girl, Becky Thatcher. Oh, yeah. Gee, she's pretty. Wish I'd washed my neck. Tommy loves Becky. Tommy loves Becky. Now, you cut out. Now, get away from me, you little pest, or I'll get away. And Polly, and Polly. Well, I got rid of him. Hello, Becky. Can I walk to school with you? Yes, Tommy, you can. Gee, thanks. But I shouldn't even talk to you, Tom Sawyer. You promised to take me to the medicine show last night, and you didn't do it. Well, I'll take you tonight. It's even better. You know who's playing there? Who? Jack Benny and his violin. <laughs> you want to hear him? Yeah, let's get some ripe tomatoes and go. Oh, that'll be fun. <laughs> Say, Becky. What? Give me a kiss, will you? No, I won't. Oh, come on. It ain't nothing. I will not, Tom Sawyer. Oh, come on. Give me a kiss. It ain't nothing. Oh, all right. Well, how was that? You were right. It ain't nothing. <laughs> well, gee, 
Becky, I'm only nine years old. <laughs> and now we're engaged. Isn't it great, Becky? Gee, I'm all excited. Yeah, look at your toupee jumping up and down. <laughs> oh, yes, I've been looking for that frog all day. Be quiet, Sherman. Well, anyway, Becky, you kissed me, so we're engaged to be married. But, Tommy, I can't marry you. You're so poor. Don't worry. I'm going to get a job in the movies, and I'll have a lot of money when I grow up. Oh, yeah? I know another kid who fought that. <laughs> yeah. And it won't happen to me. Say, who's that boy coming down the street? I never saw him before. Oh, I know him. He just moved into town. Who is he? His name is Freddie Allen. Freddie Allen, eh? I don't like him even now. <laughs> Oh, I think he's awfully cute. Isn't he handsome? Handsome. He's got a face like a mud turtle. I'm going over there and talk to him. Now, don't you start anything, Tom Sawyer. Just leave him to me. Hey, you. Is your name Freddie Allen? Well, sir, if my ears were at my christening, and I think they were, that's my name. Oh, trying to be smart, eh? And look at you standing there with that big water gum in your mouth. I ought to take a poke at you. You'd better not. This gum happens to be chewing tobacco. <laughs> I don't care if it is. You want to fight? No, it, it's not nice to fight. No, it's not, eh? Come on, knock this chip off my shoulder. Now, I told you I don't want any trouble. Well, if you don't do it, I'll give you a sock in the nose anyway. You leave me alone now, or I'll tell your Aunt Polly. Oh, so you're a squealer as well as a coward, eh? Tommy, Tommy, leave him alone. Take off your coat, you little fraidy cat. I'm going to let you have it. <laughs> you leave me alone now. I didn't do anything to you. Oh, no, I heard what you said last Wednesday night. <laughs> Take that! Ow! And that! Oh. And that! <laughs> you leave me alone now, you big bully! And Polly! And Polly! And Polly! <laughs> <laughs> look at him run down the street. That was Alan as a kid, folks. And he hasn't changed a bit. <laughs> this will be continued next Sunday night. Will Tom Sawyer marry Becky? Will Freddie Allen stop crying? Will Mark Twain ever forgive us? Tune in next Sunday night and find out. Play, Phil. We're a little late, so good night, folks. The Jell-O program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston and Phil Harris and his orchestra. For now, ladies and gentlemen, as is customary every Sunday at this time, we bring you a man who, uh, a man who, uh, Oh, say, Phil, where's Jack? I don't know. I didn't see him. He came in with Rochester a few minutes ago. I think they're in a little studio next door. Yes, he's in there rehearsing a scene for his new picture, and he's got Rochester reading Joan Bennett's part. <laughs> Rochester reading Joan Bennett's part? Now, how do you know? I peeked over the transom. That's fine. You used my shoulders to stand on, didn't even tell me. I'd like to get a load of that. Let's open the door and listen. Okay. There they are now. Quiet, everybody. Gee, I hope I don't sneeze. Listen. Well, Mr. Benny, how am I doing? Now, Rochester, you're not giving me anything. How can I be romantic if you don't put feeling into your line? Now, when you read when you read Miss Bennett's part, for goodness sake, get into the mood of it. Mood? I did everything but kiss you. <laughs> now, look, Rochester, all I want you to do is read those lines with a little punch. I want to be good, and it's your job to help me. You always find a job for me. I am, eh? I started out driving your car, and now I'm your leading lady. <laughs> You're not my leading lady. You're just helping me out so when I go to rehearsal, I won't make a chump out of myself. Now, let's continue. Okay. Is this the scene where we're on a honeymoon? No. No, we're not even married yet. You, you mean we're still in the platonic stage? <laughs> That's it. Now, here's the situation, Rochester. It is a warm summer afternoon. You're in the garden surrounded by poppies, roses, and gladiolas. Yeah? Yeah. Birds are twittering in the branches of the weeping willow trees. Yes. Yeah. Little bees are flitting from blossom to blossom, droning a soft, soothing lullaby. Yeah. Butterflies are floating through the sweet scented air. All is peaceful in the garden. <laughs> Rochester, wake up. Rochester. Yes, sir. You'll please do me a favor and not fall asleep until my picture comes out. <laughs> now, let's take the scene again. You're by the garden wall picking rosebuds. All of a sudden, you hear a sound. I leap over the wall, and there I am beside you. 
Now, I'll use this chair for the wall. I wouldn't jump over that if I was you. Don't worry about me. If you want to know something, I was the champion high jumper of Waukegan High School. You had arches then. <laughs> Never mind that. Now, this chair is still the wall. All right, let's go. Now, start picking flowers. Okay, I'm picking them. And you're singing. See, that's how I know you're in the garden. Now, here's the song right here. Go ahead. Well, go on. Love your magic spell is here. <laughs> Love. Oh, I feel silly doing this. Now, Rochester, it's only to help me out. Now, take it again. Okay. But love your magic spell is everywhere. Love, I found you and I know not where. Oh, Vivian. Vivian, are you alone? Yes, Conrad, my sweet. <laughs> and I will leap over this wall and join you. Here I come, Vivian. I knew you couldn't make it. <laughs> Just pick me up and no comment. Hmm, I would have to have my fountain pen in my hip pocket. Now, let's go on from there. <laughs> quiet, Mary. This ought to be good. Good. It'll be better than the picture. Oh, boy. Shh. Quiet, Jerry. Now, come on, Rochester. Let's get this. Vivian, my darling, I knew you'd be waiting. I'd be waiting forever, comrade. You're the answer to a mad man's prayer. That's a maiden's prayer. <laughs> Ah, oh, Vivian, you're so beautiful. You're like a fragile little flower with your dimpled cheeks and golden hair. My what? Your golden hair, and don't interrupt. Hark, I hear someone talking. It must be your father. Who's that behind yon magnolia tree? It's such a big dope. Who? Yes, it's us. <laughs> oh, so you guys were eavesdropping, eh? Oh, I'm sorry, Jack, but we were looking all over for you. Well, I was just rehearsing a scene for my picture, and Rochester was helping me. You know, we start shooting pretty soon. Gee, you're going to be swelling it, Jack. Thanks, Kenny. Do you think so? Yeah, Rochester, too. <laughs> Kenny, Rochester isn't going to be in it. He was just reading Joan Bennett's lines. Whose lines were you reading? My own. I play the part of Conrad Bagel. A dashing... <laughs> a dashing young playboy. Well, you didn't seem very convincing or romantic. Well, naturally, I was just rehearsing. I can't be romantic working opposite Rochester. You cramp my style, too. <laughs> All right, let's call it a draw. Say, hey, Jack, are you really going to jump over that wall? It'll be a little tough for you, won't it? Oh, no, Don. Jumping over a wall is very easy in pictures. You see, it's all done with wires. They hook a wire to the seat of my pan. And then when I say, here I come, Vivian, they yank me up and I fly right over the wall into the garden. Oh, it looks so natural. Hey. Wouldn't it be funny if just your pants came over the wall? <laughs> yeah, it sure would. It would be funnier if you came over just ahead of your pants. Well, let's not get involved in this. If the worst comes to the worst, they can shoot me out of a cannon. Out of a cannon? Yes. If they had a cannon at Paramount, they'd have shot you a long time ago. <laughs> yes, so. I doubt that very much. Do eh? you need me anymore, boss? Yes, yeah, stick around, Rochester. You're going to be in our play later on. I am? Yes, yeah, so go over in the corner and sit down till we're ready for you. Okay, see you later, Conrad. <laughs> mm, the things I do for Paramount. That, uh, that was Phil Harris and his orchestra playing You Couldn't Be Cuter. And now, ladies and gentlemen, tonight, the Benny Greek Theater Players will present the uh, second episode of Mark Twain and David O. Selznick's story and production, The Adventures of Tom Sawyer. Uh, once again, I will play the part of Tom Sawyer, that symbol of American youth. And Mary, again this week, you're going to be little Becky Thatcher, my sweetheart. Remember remember that kiss I gave you last Sunday? No. You don't remember? Why, Mary, I kissed you right smack on your lips. Well, I've been around a lot since then. <laughs> oh, stop bragging. Now, <laughs> now Phil Harris... Now, uh, Phil Harris will be my half-brother, Sid Sawyer, a sissy if there ever was one. Why don't we change parts tonight, tonight, Jack, and let me be Tom Sawyer? Definitely not. 
See, Phil, I was talking to Norman Toro, the big director. You know, he's the man who directed the picture. Well, he listened in last Sunday night, and I wish you could have heard what he said about my performance. Uh, tell him what he said, Jack. Oh, what does he know? He's in pictures. This is radio. <laughs> Hmm. Those directors think they know everything. No kidding, Barry. What did he say? Well, it wasn't so much what he said. It was the way he kicked Jack. Kicked me? Huh. I could hardly feel it. You say, Jack. What, Kenny? When a big director kicks you, does he say action first? No, Kenny. It comes as a pleasant surprise. <laughs> now, let's go on with the casting. The part of the principal of the school, Mrs. Newton, will be played by that well-known actress... Miss Marlene D. Truck. Are you here, Miss, uh... Are you here, Miss D. Truck? Here I am, Mr. Penny. Now, uh, you had quite a bit of experience in pictures, haven't you? Yes, I have. Well, tell me, what was your last starring role? I was awful in The Awful Truth. <laughs> oh, you were? <laughs> That's funny. Jack had the same part in Artist and Model. Mary. <laughs> By the way, Miss D. Truck, didn't I see you in old Chicago? Yeah, I used to live near the stockyard. <laughs> I thought so. Huh? Well, you'll do. Now, let's see. There's Huckleberry Finn. Where's Andy? Say, is the mayor of Van Nuys here yet? Here I am, Buck! Well. <laughs> well, hello, Your Honor. How's everything in Van Nuys? Have you made any changes in the town? Yeah, Buck, I passed a new curfew law last week. A curfew law? What is it? All bulls have got to be home and in bed by 10 o'clock. <laughs> oh, you're on the reform ticket, huh? Well, how does your own bull feel about it? You mean Casanova? Yeah. <laughs> He's trying to get me impeached. Well, I don't blame him. Say, Andy, have you made any new appointments since you've been elected mayor? Yes, Buck, I made my paw head of the Department of Sanitation. You did? Well, what was his first move? He took a bath. Oh, so you finally got him in a tub, eh? Yeah, and say, Buck, you know that long beard that Pa had? Yeah. That wasn't a beard at all. It was just hay and dust. <laughs> well, I'll be Joe Go. <laughs> say, say, did Don Wilson tell you that I made him chief of the police out there? No kidding. Is that right, Don? Yes, Jack. I'm the law in Van Nuys, and uh, there hasn't been a single crime since I was put in office. Is that so? Well, were there any other, were there any crimes in Van Nuys before then? I'll say there was an awful wave of jaywalking. <laughs> there was. How did you stop it, Chief? Well, I just put signs on every corner. And now that Mayor Huckleberry Finn is here, our play will go on right after Kenny's song. Oh, uh, wait a minute, Jack. Uh, who's going to be uh, Mr. Dobbins, the school teacher? Well, Don, I tried out several actors to play that part, but none of them seemed to suit me. I don't know, they just couldn't seem to get the feel of it. I mean, they were too... Well, they were too... Too expensive, we know. <laughs> it wasn't a question of money, they just couldn't do it. Uh, anyway, I will solve the problem by playing a double role. That of Tom Sawyer and Mr. Dobbins, the schoolteacher. So go into your song, Kenny, while I get into the mood for my double part. Okay. Wait a minute. Come in. Mr. Benny? Yes? Are you going to play two roles tonight? Yes, I am. Well, we ought to get together. Uh, who are you, anyway? Just a frankfurter. Goodbye. <laughs> I wish I had some mustard to go on Sing, Kenny. Kenny Baker singing Silver on the Sage from the picture of the Texan. Say, Kenny, that number was written by Robin and Ranger, the two boys who wrote Love and Bloom and Thanks for the Memory, wasn't it? Yes, but they told me not to tell you. Oh. Okay. <laughs> well, I'll play it anyway. And now, folks, for Chapter 2 in The Adventures of Tom Sawyer. As you may remember last Sunday, we finished Episode 1 with Tom Sawyer on his way to school. Now, does he get there? Let us see. <laughs> Take it, Phil. Come again with us to the sleepy river town of St. Petersburg, Missouri. We take you to the little red schoolhouse on the corner of Maine and Vermont. Ah, folks, that little red schoolhouse with its rusty old pump in the front yard and the lilac bush in the back. It's a bright Monday morning. And school is a begotten... 
about to begin. Curtain music. <laughs> Come to order now. We will start the day with our usual morning greeting. One, two, three. Good morning to you. Good morning to you. Good morning, dear teacher, and fooey on you. <laughs> Quiet, children, please. I will now call the roll. Puddinhead Wilson. Here, teacher. Becky Thatcher. Here I am, Mr. Dobbins. Sidney Baker. Here, teacher. Skinny Baker, rather. Here, teacher, and here's a big red apple for you. Thanks, Skinny. That's very nice of you. It is not. There's a worm in it. <laughs> oh, yes. Sylvester Worm. Present, teacher. Hmm. Huckleberry Finn. Mr. Chairman, fellow citizens and taxpayers, I am here. Quiet! <laughs> and sit down, Mayor, before I give you a recount with this ruler. Scarlett O'Hara. I'm here. Scarlet Nohara. Right here, teacher. <laughs> hmm. Imagine in the third grade and already he's in the market for a toupee. <laughs> How old are you, young man? Seven, going on 35. <laughs> well, the least you can do is plant some geraniums on that head. <laughs> Rochester Van Jones. Rochester, why don't you answer me? I thought I was busy. <laughs> Not in school. Sidney Sawyer. Here I am, teacher, and I know all my lessons like anything. I'm sure you do, Sidney, and you have the highest marks of anyone in the class. That's because he won't bend over. Quiet, Becky, or you will. <laughs> Tom Sawyer. Tom Sawyer. Sidney, where's your brother, Tom? He's playing hooky, teacher. That's what he's doing. Sidney is a tattletale. Sidney is a tattletale. Sidney is a tattletale. Sidney, you stay out of it. <laughs> and now for our morning exercises. Stand up, kiddies. Now, everybody, close your eyes and hold your hands up over your head. Oh, no. You'll pick our pockets. I will not. <laughs> now, hands over head. Now lean back, a little further, back, back, back. Ah! Now get up, you little brass. That'll teach you. <laughs> now first, we will take up our history lesson. Puddinhead Wilson. Yes, teacher. Who was the first president of the United States? George Washington. That's correct, George Washington. Now, Skinny Baker, tell me, what was the name of his wife? George Washington's wife? Yes. Well. Come on, now, come. Come on, I'll give you a hint. Martha. Martha. Ray. Martha Ray. <laughs> That's right. Now, wait a minute. That's silly. So we'll skip it. Now, uh, Sidney, tell me, what great invention is Eli Whitney noted for? The cotton gin. The cotton gin, that's very good. It's even better without the cotton. <laughs> I think so, yes. Now, Becky Thatcher, stand up. Yes, teacher. Who was Captain John Smith? Uh, he was an early American settler. Right. And when he was going to be executed... What beautiful Indian girl saved his life? Pocket Pocket. That's Pocahontas. <laughs> Pocket Pocket. But you were close. <laughs> now, Skinny Baker. Skinny Baker. Yes, teacher. Tell me, who discovered America? Wouldn't you be surprised if I said Columbus? <laughs> oh, so you know it, huh? I know more than that, you old goat face. <laughs> Go face, you're lucky I'm deaf. <laughs> now, Becky Thatcher. Yes? Columbus discovered America. Now, what are the names of the three ships he sailed with? Uh, the Pinta. Yes. The Nina. Yes. And the Albany Night Boat. <laughs> the Albany Night Boat. Columbus never traveled on the Albany Night Boat. Sure missed something. <laughs> you said it. And now, children, we will take up physiology. Physiology? What's that? I don't know. Let's make it arithmetic. 
Now, children. I, I don't know my arithmetic. Let's make it spelling. No, I got a good idea. Let's make it geography. Oh, I got a better idea. Let's burn down the schoolhouse. <laughs> No, first, we must have our geography. Sylvester Worm. Yes, teacher. Can you tell me how many countries there are in Europe? Yes, I can, teacher. Well, then name them. There's England, France, Belgium, Salafrovity, Lars Sedermissen, Baron Salafor, General Senior Father Sedermissen, Wilgen Fulgendeden, Safford Zolovic, and Czechoslovakia. <laughs> That's very good. And what are the principal industries of Czechoslovakia? A solid corporate citizenry and plump raising. <laughs> what raising? Plump. Oh, I thought you said twelve fast. <laughs> now, Rochester. Yes, boy? Can you name the seven wonders of the world? Yes, sir. What are they? The Sphinx, the Pyramids, the Hanging Gardens, and four pork chops. <laughs> Now, Rochester, pork chops are not included among the seven wonders of the world. I guess you ain't never seen a Harlem geography. <laughs> I guess not. Now, Huckle Huckleberry Finn. <laughs> Huckleberry Finn, stand up. Yes, teacher. Tell me, what is the capital of California? Van Nuys. It is not. <laughs> Stop plugging your hometown. Sidney Sawyer, what is the capital of the United States? Waukegan. Right. Wait a minute, teacher, you... Shut up! <laughs> we'll now take up zoology. Huckleberry Finn, what animal is it that crawls around like a lizard, has red eyes, a long pointed nose, and a yellow streak down its back? Fred Allen! Right! <laughs> Fred Allen, Fred Allen, that's... Now, what is an outstanding characteristic of this peculiar animal? It hangs by its tail and chews tobacco. Correct. Now, Becky Thatcher, tell me, what does this odd beast do for exercise? It always walks up three flights of stairs when it buys a suit. I see. And will this queer specimen rack its brains out so it will drool a feeble retort next Wednesday night? Yes! Bravo, children! And now, Kitty, since you've all studied your lesson so carefully, I have a little surprise. Our principal, Mrs. Newton, has an important announcement to make to you. Oh, Mrs. Newton, will you come in, please? I'm right here, Mr. Dobbins. Mm. <laughs> now, my little men and women, I have a very lovely surprise for you. What is it, Mrs. Newton? Next Sunday, we are all going on a picnic at the Old Indian Cave. <laughs> There'll be ice cream and cake and sandwiches for all. Now, don't forget, will you? <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Newton. So, children, be good little boys and girls, and you can all go on the picnic. Oh, teacher. Hey, what? teacher, look. Here comes my brother, Tom. Look, he's trying to sneak in. Oh, I see him. Tom. Tom Sawyer, come here. Tom Sawyer, come here this minute. You've played hooky for the last time, and I'm going to give you a good fraction. You got to catch me first, you old grunion. <laughs> There he goes through the window. And here I go after him. I'll catch me, the little scallywag. Tom Foyer! Tom Foyer! Tom! This will be continued next Sunday night. Will Jack catch Jack? Will the class go on their picnic? Will Vivian marry Conrad? Tune in next Sunday night and find out. Play, Phil. <laughs> be with you again next Sunday night at the same time when we will bring you the third and final chapter in the adventures of Tom Sawyer. So be sure to listen in and hear the exciting episode in the cave. What laughs? What thrills? What echoes? I don't know. What echoes? Oh, good night, folks. <laughs> The Jell-O program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston and Phil Harris and his orchestra. Yes? Yes? What's that? Now, look, Mr. Hornblow, I know you're the producer of the picture, but I'm the star. And after all, I have some right. All right, I'm stubborn, but I will not do that scene where I'm hanging out of a window upside down by my heel. 
Imagine me hanging out of a window. I'm supposed to be a lover, not Monday's wash. <laughs> now, look, Mr. Hornblow. Jack, Jack, we're on the air. The program started. I know, Don. I'll have to call you back later, Mr. Hornblow, but I want this thing ironed out or Mr. Zucker will hear this. Goodbye. Hmm, nothing but trouble. Go ahead, Don. Introduce me. Okay. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we bring you that happy-go-lucky fellow, that carefree comedian, that bubbly... All right, lady. all right, that's enough. Hello again, this is Jack Benny talking. I tell you, Don, it's enough to drive a man crazy. Well, what's the matter this time? The same old thing. Every time I make a picture, Paramount wants me to kill myself. Well, uh, why don't you do something about it? Do something about it? I've been walking around the studio all week with a sign on my back saying, Fragile. <laughs> But they still won't change the story. Say, Jack, is that the same picture you were rehearsing last week with Rochester? Yeah. You know, where he was reading Joan Bennett's part? Yes, Phil, but I had to give up reading lines with Rochester. Why? Well, we were commencing to sound like Amos and Andy. <laughs> anyway, fellas, I don't like the whole setup. I have to go through all sorts Hello, of... Hello, Jack. Hello, Mary. I have to go through all sorts of physical contortions. I have to jump over walls, fall down flights of steps, and worst of all, hang, hang by my heels out of a window. Gee whiz, Jack, you ought to have a double for those scenes. You know, a, a stuntman to take your place. That's what I told Paramount, but they claim it's too dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> I rehearsed that scene yesterday with Joan Bennett. You were there, Mary. I'll say. Now get this, Don, for a silly idea. Joan Bennett is passing by on the street, and I want to propose to her. So Paramount has me hanging out of a window upside down to do it. Fine picture. But you know, Jack, you look much taller when you're hanging by your heels out of a window. Well, no wonder my knees fly out of joint. <laughs> well, anyway, Don, I rehearsed that scene four hours yesterday, and believe me, I was all in. <laughs> Tell him what happened, Jack. Oh, it wasn't that important. What was it, Mary? Well, Jack was hanging by his heels upside down talking to Joan Bennett. Well, sure I was. That's what I was supposed to be. Was your toupee supposed to fall off, too? <laughs> Well, that was just an accident. No kidding, Mary. Did that really happen? Yes. Jack's toupee fell off and landed right on Joan Bennett's head. <laughs> it did? <laughs> yeah. She thought it was a spider and fainted. <laughs> and not only that, the guy that was holding my feet went out for lunch in the middle of the scene. <laughs> I fell right on my head. On your head? Did you hurt yourself? No, Don. I've always had a short neck. <laughs> hurt myself. And Mitch Lyson, the director, he was a big help. He just stood there laughing at me. Oh, Mitch Lyson. Yeah. Say, he's a swell director, isn't he, Jack? Yes, but he's so temperamental. See, I made one little mistake at rehearsal the other day, and he bit me. <laughs> I tell you, fellas, someday I'm going to make a real picture and handle the whole thing myself. I'll be the star, the writer, the director, and the producer. You'll be the audience, too. <laughs> I don't know about that. My picture will do business if only my relatives go to see it. You ain't kidding. <laughs> well, anyway, I'm not going to worry about it anymore. They'll have to rewrite the story or else. Answer the phone, Mary. Okay. Hello? Who? Yes, he's right here. It's for you, Jack. It's Mr. Zipper of Paramount. That's Mr. Zucker. <laughs> Gee, I wonder what... Hello? Hello, Mr. Zucker. Yes. Yeah, but look, Mr. Zucker, all I said was I will not play that scene. Absolutely not. But I do want to make pictures. Gee, I even went on a diet. If you don't shut up, you'll stay on it. Quiet. <laughs> now, look, Mr. Zucker, I'm the star of this picture, and I certainly have a right to discuss it. Hmm. Why, even Washington didn't cross the Delaware without talking it over with someone. I said, Washington, I know he isn't in the picture. <laughs> Now, now, Mr. Zucker, I'm the star, and if I'm going to fall out of a window on my head, i got to get more money or a helmet. I'd like to get both. <laughs> well, how about my having lunch with you tomorrow, and we'll talk about it. Oh, right after lunch? Okay. Goodbye. <laughs> what I have to go through to make a picture, I wish Vaudeville would come back, play, Phil. The way I'm treated, no rights, no respect, no nothing. Yes, sir, that was.
was uh, Phil Harris and his orchestra playing Jungle Love from the picture of the same name. And, Phil, that was very realistic. I don't know, I could just smell the jungle. You could? Yes, I could smell the music, too. <laughs> I didn't mind the music, but how can you smell a jungle? The monkeys are wearing Christmas night. Well, that's about the corniest routine we've done in a long time. <laughs> Yeah, to top it off, here comes Kenny. No, I'm cooked. <laughs> Hello, Kenny. Hello, Jack. How am I doing? How are you doing? You just got here. But you're looking good, Kenny. You got a sunburn and everything. Where have you been? Oh, I, I've been to Lake Arrowhead for decoration day. I just got back. Oh, oh. I took my girl and her mother. See, I had a swell time. You had a lot of fun, eh? Yeah. Her mother lost her glasses. <laughs> Oh, I get it. Did she find them yet? I don't think so. I dropped them in the lake. <laughs> Why, you little devil, you. Say, Ken, did you do any fishing while you were up there? Yeah. And a funny thing, Jack. Hmm? Everybody around me was catching trout and bass, but all I got was a barracuda. Kenny, a barracuda is a salt water fish. What was he doing in Lake Arrowhead? I only catch them. I don't explain them. <laughs> Fisherman, you couldn't catch a herring in a delicatessen if you used Slepperman for bait. Oh, I could too. Yeah. Say, Jack, did you go anyplace over the holiday? No, I had to stay here and worry about my picture. I wish I had it easy like you fellas, nothing to think about but have a good time. Well, if you'd relax a little more, you'd be better off. Oh. Every time you make a picture, you try to run the whole work. Well, Mary, I have to protect myself. After all, I'm the star. Star, star, that's all I've heard. Well? You're no more star than a three-dollar sapphire. That's so. Well, let me ask you something. When my picture comes out, what do you see on the marquee in front of the theater? Jack Benny and free dishes. <laughs> well, if you can see me and pick up a soup tureen for the same price, I suppose that's bad. <laughs> anyway... Don laughed at that. Anyway, I'm the star. <laughs> so let's forget artists and models and get on with Tom Sawyer. And now, ladies and gentlemen, if you will overlook our silly arguments, we will present the third and final episode in the adventures of Tom Sawyer. Now, as you may remember, our play last week ended with... Oh, darn it. See who that is, Mary. Okay. Hello? Who? Yes, he's here. Who is it this time? It's Mr. Winkler. He says he's Joan Bennett's manager. Oh, I wonder what he wants. Hello? Yes, this is Jack Benny. What? Well, yes, Mr. Winkler, but I didn't mean that I was the only star in the picture. I know Miss Bennett is, too. What? Now, wait a minute. You've got the wrong slant on this, and I'm not a termite. <laughs> I don't care how I photograph. <laughs> but, but, Mr. Winkler, but, 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 but... But, but... Shut up, Jack. You sound like a motorboat. <laughs> well, all right. I apologize. Goodbye. It's a fine time to call me up and argue about billing. And now, folks, getting back to our dramatic offering, I will be the star of Tom Sawyer. There'll be no arguments about that. But, Jack, I'd be a little careful if I were you. You're not so big that you can go around telling Paramount what to do. I'm not telling him what to do, Phil, but I'll be darned if I'll play a love scene upside down. The blood will rush to my head and I'll forget my lines. <laughs> if you haven't got any more lines and you have blood, don't worry. <laughs> well, anyway, that scene is out, so for heaven's sake, let's get back to our own play. Now, Mary, you'll be Becky Thatcher again. And Phil, for the third consecutive week, you'll be my half-brother, uh, Sid. A big sissy. Gee, I wish that part would last one more week. Why? I'm making a doily, and it's nearly finished. <laughs> well, you'll have to finish it on your own time. Now, let's see. The part of Aunt Polly will be... Oh, heavens to Betsy. <laughs> Is that the phone again? Hello? Yes? Oh, Jack, it's Mitch Lyson, your director. Well, I might as well talk to him, too. Hello, Mitch. Yes. Yes, and I mean exactly what I said. I'm not going to hang out of a window by my heels 
to play a love scene. I fell on my head once already, didn't I? Stop laughing. Stop laughing. What? I don't care if I do get the Academy Award. I still want a round head. All right, tell Mr. Hornblow. See if I care. Goodbye. Well, if this isn't getting to be a joke or something, I tell you, I'm going nuts. Oh, Jack, let's do our play, Tom Sawyer, and forget all about it. All right, but I'm in a fine mess. I've aged ten years tonight, and I'm supposed to play a nine-year-old kid. <laughs> well, I'll sing your song, Teddy. Maybe that'll soothe me a bit and quiet my nerves. Okay, Jack. What's it going to be? I'm going to sing, Let's Sail to Dreamland. Now, dedicated to the United States Navy. <laughs> I'd like to hit him with the SS Pennsylvania. That was Let's Sail to Dreamland, sung by Kenny Baker. And now for our play, The Adventures of Tom Sawyer. As you may remember, in our last episode, Mrs. Newton, the school principal, had promised the children a picnic at the old Indian cave. And this is the big day. The scene is the home of Aunt Polly, where we find her getting Tom and Sidney ready for the picnic. Curtains may use it. <laughs> Come on now, children. Hurry up. It's time for you to leave. I'm ready, Aunt Polly. I'm ready, Aunt Polly. You big gumdrop. You stop calling me names, Tom Sawyer, or I'll scratch you. Children. <laughs> children, behave. Thomas, did you brush your hair like I told you to? Yes, ma'am, I did. Well, then put it on and get going. <laughs> <laughs> Now, I want you to be good little boys when you get to the picnic. Is your basket all packed, Sidney? Yes, Aunt Polly. I got my sandwiches, my milk, and a book to read. It's so thrilling. A book? What's the name of it? The Campfire Girls at the Cotton Club. <laughs> that sounds mighty interesting. Thomas, is your basket packed? Yeah, I got my peanut butter sandwiches, my jelly roll, my lady fingers, and a can of beer. <laughs> Let's see that. Why, you bad boy, you forgot your can opener. I don't need one. I got a buck, too. <laughs> Comes in handy, too. <laughs> All right, now. Now run along, both of you. And remember, be good little boys. Yeah. Hello? Who? Yes, he's here. It's for you, Tom. A uh, Mr. Hornblow. Hornblow. <laughs> Give me that on, Aunt Polly. Hello, Mr. Hornblow. What? Now, wait a minute. I don't care what Mr. Lyson says. I'm not going to hang out of a window by my heel. Have you been in mischief, Thomas? Quiet, Aunt Polly. Well, go ahead and tell Mr. Zucker. I don't care. Hurry, Thomas, or you'll be late. Now, look, Mr. Hornblow, I haven't time to argue with you now. I'm going to a picnic. Goodbye. Hmm. They think they can bulldoze me into making that picture. They got another thing coming. Now hurry, children. It's getting late. Okay, goodbye. Goodbye, Aunt Polly. Goodbye, Aunt Polly. Goodbye, Aunt Polly. You're as bad as Hornblow. <laughs> this is a fine play. Our audience won't be able to follow without a Ouija board. Quiet. <laughs> so Tom and Sidney go on their way, and a little while later we find them at the picnic ground by the old Indian cave. The picnic is in full swing. Oh, hey, Jenny, hey, let go of my coat. I'll tag you in. Children, not so noisy and stop slugging each other. <laughs> That's it. Aren't we having the nicest time? I'm having a lovely time, Mrs. Newton. Gee, this food is good. Hey, look at Puddin' Head Wilson. He's got a 10 decker sandwich. <laughs> Hey, Sidney. What? I'll trade you a big piece of custard pie for your ham sandwich. Okay, here's your sandwich. Thanks, and here's your custard pie. Yeah, I told you I'd get you. Hey, huh? Tommy, there's Becky Thatcher, your sweetheart, over there under the oak tree. Oh, yeah. Hello, Becky. Hello, Tommy. Tommy loves Becky. Tommy loves Becky. Becky loves everybody. <laughs> Now, it isn't true, is it, Becky? You don't go out with other boys, do you? No, Tommy. Hey, Becky, can I hold your hand? Yes, Tommy. 
Can I put my arm around you? Uh-huh. Can I hold you tight and hug you? Yeah. <laughs> Can I have some of your potato salad? What a cluck. <laughs> oh, I get it. You want me to kiss you. Huh? Gee, even I knew that. <laughs> Here you are, Becky. <laughs> wow, how was that? <laughs> I should have given you the potato salad. <laughs> Well, you kiss me anyway. Huh? Now we love Becky. You ought to see the Becky. You better go down and save her. Say, Becky, I got a swell idea. Let you and I go over in the big cave. Huh? No, I'd be scared. They say the place is full of goblins and ghosts and all kinds of creepy spooks. Ah, oh, who's afraid? Come on, let's go. Hey, where are you going? We're going in the cave. You want to come along, Skinny? Sure. You won't be afraid, will you? Who, me? Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, it's nothing. Come on, both of you. She whiz. Betsy, we ain't even in the cave yet. What are you shaking for now? My nerves are having a preview. <laughs> Come on, let's go. And so Tom, Becky, and Skinny steal away and enter the old Indian cave. For hours, they wander deeper and deeper into its mysterious caverns. <laughs> and now we pick them up. They're trying to find their way out. But they are lost. This is awful. Hang on to me, Becky, so we won't stumble over this ledge. Huh? All right, Tommy, but be careful. Yeah. No! No! Oh, boy, this is spooky. And it's getting darker, too. I'm scared. Hmm. Now, let's stick close together so we don't get separated. Huh? Wait. Wait, what's that? Oh, oh, oh. Well, there's hitting me in the face. Oh. Don't be scared, Becky. It's just bad. Gosh, there are a lot of them. Yeah, get away from here, you old bat. Watch your language, young man. <laughs> Gee, they, they talk, too. Oh, yeah. Maybe he can tell us how to get out of here. I'll find out who he is. Hey, mister, are you a caveman? No, I'm an Eskimo. An Eskimo? What's an Eskimo doing in a cave in Missouri? What was that Barracuda doing in Lake Arrowhead? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Say, mister, how do you... Go on, say, we got to get out of here. What do we do, Tommy? Let's crawl on our hands and knees through the tunnel. It may lead somewhere. Come on, follow me. See, that's scary. What's that noise? Just my bubble gum. <laughs> now, don't shoot so loud. Look, Tommy, we're coming in a great big cavern. Yeah, gee, look at the size of this place. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Hey, there's an echo in here. Listen. Hello there! Hello there! Gee, there's an echo, all right. Gee, there's an echo, all right. <laughs> can you hear me? Yes, can you hear me? <laughs> hmm, a fine echo. A fine price you're paying me. <laughs> Echoes, bats, Eskimos, we gotta get out of here. Hey, Tommy, look, look down there. Where? Right underneath this ledge. There's a lake hole with daylight coming through. Gee, that means we can get out. Yeah, but how are we going to get down there? That's easy. Skinny, you hold on to my ankles, and I'll hang down by my feet over the ledge and let Becky down first. Come on, Skinny, grab my ankles. Okay, Tommy, I got them. Now, come on, Becky, give me your hands. Gosh, I'm afraid. Oh, don't be scared. I can hold you. All right. Now, hold my ankles tight, Skinny, while I bend over the ledge. Now, here we go down over the ledge. Hmm, how did that door get in this cave? Come in. Telegram for Jack Benny. That's fine. In the middle of a play. Reach up and take it, Mary. Okay. Hmm, this burns me up. Oh, Jack, this telegram's from Paramount. What is it? Paramount? What does it say? It says if you can hang by your heels on your program, you can do it in your picture. Oh, there's no use. We might as well give this up. No, this is fun. Shut up. Play it. <laughs> and we'll be with you again next Sunday night at the same time. Am I going to be Becky Thatcher again next week? No, Mary. We're all through with Tom Sawyer. Is that right, Jack? Yes, Phil. Then take this. Ah!
Paul. And Polly. And Polly. Good night, folks. <laughs> The Jell-O program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston and Phil Harris and his orchestra. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we take you to Jack Benny's dressing room at the Paramount Studio. It's Jack's first day in his new picture. Take it away, Paramount! I hate to see that evening sun go down. I hate to see that evening Rochester. sun go down. For the last time, will you please stop singing? I'm trying to memorize my lines. Okay. I can't concentrate with all that noise going on. You know, your voice is nothing to write home about. Even if it was, I couldn't. <laughs> well, be quiet. You clean up this dressing room a little bit. I'm expecting Miss Joan Bennett in here to rehearse the scene we're going to shoot today. Is that the scene where you was hanging out of the window upside down? Yes, I wasn't going to do it at first, but they finally talked me into it. I knew they would. You got about as much willpower as me in a chicken coop. <laughs> I just gave in to keep Paramount happy. And besides that, my option had shooting pains last night. <laughs> Rochester, hand me my gray suit. I can't be standing around in my shorts when Miss Bennett comes in. That's right, they are kind of loud. <laughs> That's not what I mean. Say, boss, isn't that your makeup man standing outside there? Where? Oh, yes. Hey, Newt, Newt, I'm going to work in a little while. Aren't you going to put some makeup on me? That's the scene where you're sticking out of a window by your heels, isn't it? Yes. Well, you won't need any makeup. Your coat will hang down over your face. <laughs> over my face? Not if I have anything to say about it. You won't. So long. <laughs> well, that settles it, Rochester. I'm not going to do that scene. You can bet on that. You, I can lose on it, too. Shut up and give me that phone. Operator, get me Mr. Hornblow, the producer, and hurry. Rochester, I asked you to get me my gray suit. Doggone, I can't relax for a second round here. That's too bad about you. If you didn't know me so much, I'd have a nervous breakdown. <laughs> All right, now go in and get my... Hello? Hello, Mr. Hornblow. Now listen, I agreed to play that crazy window scene, but I didn't know that my coat was going to hang down over my face. How will people know it's me? By my feet? Listen, Mr. Hornblow, all feet look alike. Oh. Well, you're just saying that to be nice. <laughs> but look, now look, here's the trouble. In the first scene, my face is covered up by my coat. In the next scene, I go to a mass ball, so I'm covered up again. And then in the third scene, I'm sitting in a barber's chair with a hot towel over my face. My goodness, when do I unveil? <laughs> what? Well, all right, you're the boss, but I tell you one thing, Mr. Hornblow. When I'm in the barber shop under that hot towel, I better have sparkling dialogue. Goodbye. Hmm, I don't know why I ever let people talk me into things. Rochester, I told you Miss Bennett will be here any minute. Now, where's my gray suit? Here's the pants, boss. I just pressed them. Thanks. Pressed them? Why, you've burnt them. Look at that spot right there. Where? Right there on the seat. That is a little crisp, ain't it? <laughs> Fine, burnt pants. Now what are we going to do? I don't know. If there was toast, I could scrape them. <laughs> the lucky thing, I got two pair of pants with this suit. Oh, that must be Miss Bennett. Quick, Rochester, help me on with my pants. Okay. Make it snappy. Just a minute. Hurry up, Rochester. There you are. There you are. Okay. All right, you can come in now. Hiya, Jack, old boy. What was the delay? Oh, it's you, Phil. I thought it was Joan Bennett, so I put my trousers on in a hurry. You sure did. You got one leg left over. <laughs> oh, yes. I thought they were a little tight there. Here, Rochester, help me get this on right. So you're expecting Joan Bennett, huh, Jack? I'll have to stick around and meet her. Oh, fine. I don't mind if you stay, but for heaven's sake, Phil, the minute I introduce you to Joan, don't ask for her phone number. I won't. Thanks. I got it. <laughs> Now, wait a minute. You said you didn't know Joan Bennett. How can you have her phone number? She's got a maid, hasn't she? <laughs> oh, so you go around with her maid, eh? That Mr. Harris sure is a ladies' man. A ladies' man? If he took some of that padding out of his coat, he wouldn't be so much. I hate anybody that tries to deceive people about their physique. You should talk. You tried to buy a coat with built-in muscles. 
I did not. I merely told my tailor to allow for them. But you haven't got any muscles. Well, I'm taking a course of exercises, and they'll be along any minute. <laughs> I wish Miss Bennett would get here so we could start rehearsing. There's the phone, Mr. Bennett. Well, why don't you answer it? It ain't for me. <laughs> Well, don't put yourself out. Hello? Oh, hello, Kenny. You are? Well, we'll be listening in. Yes, you can come over later. Goodbye, Kenny. Hey, Phil, turn on the radio. Kenny's going to sing his song. Okay. I hate to see that evening so Quiet, Rochester. We want to hear Kenny. <laughs> Turn off the radio, Phil. Say, that was very good. And you know something, Phil? Your orchestra boys play much better when you're not there to lead them. Yeah, I get them all mixed up. <laughs> you sure do. Rochester, I asked you a thousand times to clean up this dressing room. Now look at those socks dangling on the chandelier. Why don't you take them down? They ain't dry yet. Oh. And another thing, I told you to plug up that hole in the floor. The floor is full of holes. Did you look at those mouse traps I set last night? Yes, sir. We caught three mice, two rats, and a beaver. <laughs> a beaver? I was wondering who built that dam in the bathtub. <laughs> Gee whiz, Jack, I don't see why Paramount doesn't give you a better dressing room. This place is a mess. Well, it is a little bohemian, Phil, if that's what you mean. <laughs> oh, that must be Joan. Just a moment. Rochester, empty those ashtrays. Yes, sir. Come in. I guess there he is over there. Yeah. Hello, Jack. Hiya, Jack. Are you surprised to see us? Oh, so it's you guys. Yes, this being your first day on the picture, we just drop in to wish you luck. We won't be in the way, will we, Jack? No, Kenny, but I want you all to behave yourselves. Uh, Joan Bennett is coming here any minute for rehearsal. Gosh, Jack, do you really have the nerve to invite her over here to this dump? Uh, Looks like Mr. Zucker's wastebasket. <laughs> Listen, Mary, there's nothing wrong with my dressing room. It's very comfortable. And look at that rug there. It says Idaho potatoes on it. <laughs> well, Idaho is a beautiful state. If you want to know something, plenty of big stars have occupied this dressing room. You know who had it before me? Yeah, Tom Mix and Horse. <laughs> Did not. This room was occupied by Carol Lombard. Well, she left her bridle on the coat rack. <laughs> not a bridle. That's the harness I wear when I'm hanging out of the window. Hanging out of a window? I thought you said last week you weren't going to do that scene. Well, I wasn't, but I had a conference with Mr. Hornblow, and, well, he convinced me that I ought to do it. You know, Jack, you haven't got any backbone at all. You let people talk you into anything. Mary's right, Jack. You're just a chump. A chump? I told him that, but he wouldn't listen to me. Shut up, Rochester. <laughs> Now, look, Mary, I've got a mind of my own, and neither Mr. Hornblow nor anyone else can sway me. Not much. No. You're the kind of a guy who goes into a barber shop for a shave and comes out with a haircut, a manicure, and a ticket on a turkey raffle. Well, that has nothing to do with my picture, and besides, I haven't been in a barber shop for months. Then where'd you get that haircut? <laughs> it's, it's a Lulu. <laughs> it's not my fault he wouldn't hold still. <laughs> Well, I was nervous. Now, Jack, don't tell me that you make Rochester cut your hair. Well, he told me he used to be a barber. I told you why I got fired, too. Oh, sure. <laughs> Say, Jack. What is it, Kenny? I was just singing at something. As long as you're going to do that scene where you fall on your head, why don't you take... Kenny, a... I won't fall on my head. I'm going to hang out of a window, and I'm going to have a harness around my stomach. Are you going to have a bit in your mouth, too? <laughs> No, Kenny, it's to hold me up. I'm not going to... I'm not going to play the part of a horse. Part of a horse? Quiet. <laughs> now, listen, fellas, I've had enough of this silly chatter. I'm nervous today, so if you want to stay here, be quiet. Oh, quit hammering on that door and come in. I'm sorry, Jack. I didn't mean to disturb you. Oh, it's you, Joan. Well, I'm terribly sorry, Joan. I must apologize. If I'd have known it was you, I wouldn't have shouted like that. Do you want me to go out and come in again? Oh, no, no. <laughs> Say, you've never been over here before, have you, Joan? No, I haven't, Jack. This is quite a dressing room you've got. Oh, it's nothing much. <laughs> no, it isn't. <laughs> 
Well, I was going to have it redecorated, but you know, one never knows how long one's going to be here, does one? Well, you're right. One never can tell about one's job. And <laughs> Jack's the one. <laughs> <laughs> Marry you, little minx. <laughs> Say, Joan, I want you to meet my radio gang. This is Kenny Baker, our young tenor. Hello, Kenny. How do you do, Miss Bennett? I've enjoyed your singing so much, really. I think you have a very fine voice. I don't care whether you mean that or not. You're my dream girl. <laughs> dream girl? Who does he like when he's awake? <laughs> I don't know. And Joan, uh, this is Phil Harris, our orchestra leader. Oh, so this is the curly-headed heartbreaker I've heard so much about. Yes, he's our corny Casanova. <laughs> How are you, Phil? How do you do, Miss Bennett? It's going to be nice knowing you. You better be careful there, Joan. You know, Phil is a pretty fast worker. He is? Yeah, man. <laughs> First thing you know, he'll ask you to go to the Trocadero with him. Oh, I wouldn't dare go out with Phil. Why not? My maid would never forgive me. <laughs> hey, that's very good, Joan. You're the first one that ever put Phil in his place. And now I want you to meet our little leading lady, Mary Livingston. Hello, Mary. I'll bet you're as old as I am. <laughs> Mary. I could be a blonde if I wanted to. Mary, that's very impolite. Now, you kiss Joan and make up. I won't. Then I will. Oh, no, you won't. <laughs> oh, no. Well, we're right back where we started from. And now, Joan, last but not lightest, I want you to meet our announcer, Don Wilson. Well, how do you do, Miss Bennett? May I tell you how thrilled I am to meet you? Yes, do. Really, my, my heart is just going pity-pat. Mine's not. Now, Mary, behave. <laughs> well, thank you, Mr. Wilson. Now, Joan, how about you and I going over these lines where I'm hanging upside down out of the window? Huh? Oh, you mean that scene where you fall on your head? Joan, I'm not going to fall on my head. That was merely an accident at rehearsal. Well, it was very funny. <laughs> funny? Especially when you bounce. <laughs> She would think it was funny. Well, it was funny, and shut up. <laughs> All right, Joan, let's go over that scene once anyway. Now, you're passing by, and I'm hanging out of the window. I've got the first line. Okay. <clears throat> oh, Vivian, Vivian. Conrad, why are you hanging out of that window? Are you crazy? No, Vivian, I'm head under heels in love. <laughs> Vivian, there's something I must tell you. I know what you're going to say, Conrad, but it can never be. Why not, dearest? You love me, don't you? Yes, but Father will never permit our marriage. He says you have no money to support me. He's got money, all right, but he won't part with it. <laughs> Watch it! Now go in the other room. There isn't any. <laughs> and keep quiet. Go ahead, Joan. Oh, Conrad, why must we continue like this? Neither of us is happy. Let's call everything off. What? Call everything off? Not so loud, you'll give Paramount an idea. <laughs> now, Mary, we're trying to rehearse. Continue, Joan. Oh, just a minute. Come in. They're ready on the set for you, Miss Bennett. I'll be right there. They want me to? Yes, you can come along. <laughs> Well, that's sweet of them. Come on, Joan, we better get over there. Can we come along too, Jack? Oh, sure, all of you. Say, Rochester, run across the street to the camera shop and buy six rolls of moving picture film. Okay. But, well, Jack, what are you buying that for? Well, I'm going to shoot a scene. I've got to have film, don't I? But the studio furnishes that. They do? Why, for the last three pictures, I've been buying my own. I'm going to see Mr. Zucker about this. Come on, gang, I'll get a refund or else. <laughs> Pretty big set, isn't it? Oh, it sure is. Boy, what they do in pictures. Gosh, look at those chorus girls. Are they working in your picture, Jack? Of course they are, Phil. Well, I'd better go over and put in a good word for you. <laughs> now, Phil, I should think you'd have learned a lesson when Miss Bennett puts you in your place. Not me. I'm always in there punching. See you later, fellas. <laughs> mm, I bet he won't have any more luck than I did. 
Say, Jack, what? isn't that Mr. Zucker standing over there? Oh, yes, I must speak to him. Hello, Mr. Zucker. Hello there, Bing. <laughs> Bing? Imagine the head of the studio doesn't know me from Bing Crosby. He does on payday. <laughs> you know, Mary's like that with everybody. He just can't remember names. Hello, Mr. Zucker. Hello, Kenny. Hmm. <laughs> now, that was just a wild guess. Is that so? Well, I'll see. Hello, Mr. Zucker. Hello, Herman. <laughs> You're right, Jack. You see, I told you. Oh, say, Jack, who's that tall fellow way over there in the corner talking to Joan Bennett? Where? Oh, that's Mitch Lyson, the director. Hiya, Mitch. Be right with you, Jack. <laughs> Excuse me a minute, fellas. I've got to go over there and see him. Say, Mitch, I want to tell you something before Jack gets over here. What is it, Joan? Anything wrong? Well, I'm not one to complain, and I like Jack personally very much, but... But what? What's the trouble? Well, I rehearsed with him two or three times, and frankly, Mitch, he cannot play a love scene. Yeah, I know, Joan, but we can't get Gable for that kind of money. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd be willing to chip in. <laughs> so would I, but I'm afraid it's too late now. You know, Mitch, Jack's a very sweet fellow and all that, but he hasn't any more sex appeal than a fresh vegetable plate. <laughs> he doesn't seem to have any fire. Well, I did everything I could. I even fed him sterno. <laughs> Just the same, Mitch. I think that... Quiet. Here he comes. Hiya, Mitch. Well, here I am, raring to go. We're just about ready for you, Jack. Okay. Light him up, boys. Now, quiet, everybody. Let's settle down. Well, Joan, do you think we better run through our love scene again before we shoot it? No, Jack. You're as good now as you'll ever be. <laughs> oh, thank you, Joan. Thank you. You know, none of us is perfect. Say, Mitch, do you mind if my gang sticks around and watches the scene? No, not as long as they're quiet. Oh, they'll be quiet, all right, won't you, kids? Sure. Sure. Not me. I'm a Shriner. <laughs> Convention is over, Kenny. We're all ready for you, Mitch. Okay. Oh, that's Teddy Tetzlaff, fellas, our cameraman. He's one of the best. Hello, Teddy. How are you, Jeffrey? <laughs> Jeffrey, I don't even know anybody by that name. It's going to be a great picture. I've got a blind cameraman. You think that's something? The sound man is deaf. He is not. Hello, Chuck. Hey. <laughs> well, that's news to me. All right, Jack Joan, we'll have one good rehearsal and then we'll shoot the scene. Now, Jack, you climb up there in the window. Okay, Mitch. Hey, give me a booze, somebody. Righto. Thanks, Mr. Zucker. <laughs> Such a democratic studio. <laughs> now, Joan, we'll take it from where Jack stops you as you pass by his window. You mean right here? Yes. Are you ready, Jack? Yep, I'm up here on the windowsill. All right, now get a good grip with your feet and hang all the way down. Come on, come on, don't be afraid. Okay. Oh, there goes all my change. <laughs> hey, get away from there, you. Oh, pardon me, Mr. Zucker. <laughs> well, I'm all set, Mitch. <laughs> all right, ready for rehearsal. Action. Go ahead, Jack. Oh, Vivian. Vivian. Conrad, why are you hanging out of that window? Are hold you... it, hold it. Now, Jack, please don't blush when you're talking to Joan. You're not supposed to be bashful in this scene. But, Mitch, I'm not blushing. You are, too. Your face is all red. Well, naturally it's red. I'm hanging upside down and the blood is rushing to my head. Well, stop it. <laughs> stop it? What do you want me to do, put a detour sign in my stomach? You're just being unreasonable. <laughs> what are you laughing at, Mary? Your face isn't red anymore. It's blue. <laughs> oh, go away. All right, now take the scene again. Gosh. And Jack, remember, when you start proposing to Joan, be sure and get down on your knees. But Mitch, how can I get down on my knees when I'm hanging out of a window? Gosh, I'll fall down and break my neck. All right, what's the difference? It's only a rehearsal. <laughs> oh, this is awful. Say, Jack. Yes. What would you give to be back in Waukegan right now? Never mind that. <laughs> now, 
Now, please, Mitch, let's get going here. I can't hang like this all day. All right, let's try it again. All right, we'll shoot it this time. Light him up. Fire on the set. We're turning. All right, ready? Right, action. Oh, Vivian. Vivian. Conrad, why are you hanging out of that window? Are you crazy? No, but Lyson is. <laughs> Vivian, there's something I must say to you. I know what you're going to say, Conrad, but it can never be. But why not, dearest? You love me, don't you? Lunch! Lunch! Everybody lunch! 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 Everybody back on the test. I'm oh, away. Away. Hey, wait a minute. What about me? Hey, get me down from here. Hey, Mitch! Mitch! Somebody help me! Take it easy, Jack. I'll bring you back a sandwich. Thanks, Mr. Zucker. <laughs> Gee, he's a nice fella. <laughs> with you again next Sunday night at the same time. I want to thank Joan Bennett and Mitch Lyson for coming over here tonight and helping us out. Say, Jack. What is it, Mary? I was only kidding before. I think Joan is awfully cute. Yeah. And you know what? What? I'm going out to dinner with Mitch Lyson. You are? Well, then I'm going out with Joan. Are you ready, Joan? Right here, Jack. Uh, come on, let's go. Oh, but Mitch and I have a better time than you two. So do I. <laughs> mm, good night, folks. The Jell-O program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston and Phil Harris in his orchestra. And now, ladies and gentlemen, this being our next to the last broadcast of the season... We bring you a little man who had a busy year, Jack Benny. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Hello again, this is Jack Benny talking, and Don, you're right, I'm just about worn out. Naturally, week after week with radio and pictures, it takes a lot out of you. Well, at that, Jack, for a man who works as hard as you do, you're in excellent shape. Yeah. How do you hold up so well? Where do you get all that energy? Well, I'll tell you, Don, with Popeye, it's finished. <laughs> but with me, it just comes natural. <laughs> of course, I do have an egg malt now and then, you know? Oh, but no kidding, Jack. It's really amazing how you keep in such good condition. Oh, it is, Don, it is. Well, only this morning, when I was shaving, I looked right square in the mirror and I said to myself, Jack, Benny, how do you do it? <laughs> how do you do it? <laughs> I tell you, it's unbelievable. <laughs> yes, it is, Jack, but I must repeat, you look marvelous. Thanks, Don, thanks. Say, Jack. Yes, Phil. You know, that's a pretty bad sign when you start talking to yourself. Well, I wasn't really talking to myself. I was just thinking out loud. Don't you ever think out loud, Phil? Not around here. You'd fire me. <laughs> now, wait a minute. This is a free country and a free program. Nobody has to be afraid to speak their minds around here. Oh, they don't? No. Well, in that case, Jack, you, you look lousy. <laughs> now, don't you chime in, Harris. After the carousing around you've done, you don't look so hot yourself. I don't know about that. Why, only this morning when I was shaving, I looked right square in the mirror and said to myself, Phil Harris, you're cute. Cute. I'll bet you look cute first thing in the morning, huh? I do after I take the curlers out of my hair. <laughs> Listen, Phil, any man that would put curlers in his hair before going to bed, well. <laughs> what do you think of that, Don? Don't look at me. I wear a chin strap. <laughs> Well, you could use one. Huh? Hey, Phil, do you wear a chin strap, too? That ain't a sunbonnet I sleep in. <laughs> well, that kills me. What you fellas won't do to look beautiful. Hello, Jack. Oh, hello, Mary. Say, Mary, you want to hear something? Phil sleeps with curlers in his hair, and Don wears a chin strap. Isn't that awful? It certainly is. Hmm. Even if I weren't handsome, I'd never go that far. <laughs> of course not. No. <laughs> Tell about that argument you had with your laundry man yesterday. There was no argument. What was it, Mary? Mary, if you tell him, I'll fix you. <laughs> Come on, Mary, what was the argument with the laundry man? Well, Jack was mad because they ripped the lace off his shorts. <laughs> that wasn't lace. They were just frayed at the bottom. <laughs> what were they afraid of? <laughs> 
Well, just to think of answering that makes me ill. <laughs> anyway, I don't go around trying to beautify myself like those two guys. Oh, no. I saw you in a barber shop this morning under a mud pack. A mud pack? Yes. Yeah. Well, that was just a sample. The barber was trying to sell me a piece of property. <laughs> I hope he had better luck than the boot black. Is that so? Every time he'd go to shine your shoes, you'd sit on your feet. Well, I had on black shoes and white socks, and I wanted him to stay that way. Oh, hello, Kenny. Hello, Jack. Oh, boy, am I all in. I tell you, I'm exhausted. Wow! <laughs> Kenny, if you're exhausted, you don't come in here like a cyclone. Now, come in again. Okay. Hello, Kenny. Hello, Jack. Am I all in? I tell you... I'm exhausted. <laughs> All right. All right, Kenny, you didn't have to fall down. Now get up. Imagine a young kid like you exhausted. What from, singing a song once a week? Well, don't forget I had to take vows when it's over. Oh. I suppose that's a lot of work. Well, from now on, Kenny, when you sing your song, just eliminate the vows. Not me. I'm a ham. <laughs> You're certainly getting to be, and it's not nice. You ought to be ashamed of yourself, huh? You should talk. Yeah? You're so hammy, your eyes look like two fried eggs. Well, they're large, if that's what you mean. <laughs> I've always been told I have very big and expressive eyes. In fact, I often use a soup bowl for an eye cup. I really do. Huh? <laughs> no, really, I do. I do. Huh? I think you have lovely eyelashes, too. Thanks, Phil, but they're nothing now. You should have seen the long eyelashes I had when I was a kid. How long were they? How long? They used to call me cow catcher. That's how long. <laughs> oh, I was the envy of the whole neighborhood. Hmm? You know, Jack, it's too bad you haven't got those long eyelashes now. Why? You could pin them back over your head. <laughs> yes, I could. Of course, every time I'd wink, I'd tip my hat. That's the only problem. <laughs> Isn't it a silly routine? No kidding. <laughs> Say, Jack, I don't like to horn in, but uh, I don't think I'm so bad looking myself. No, you're not, Kenny. In fact, you're quite attractive. I'll right? say. Why, only this morning when I was shaving, I looked right square in the mirror and I said to myself, Kenny Baker, there's no getting around it. You're the nut. <laughs> Well, Kenny, you were right. But you know, fellas, I think we ought to stop. I think we ought to stop all this bragging. Sing, Kenny, while we're in such a happy mood. Wait a minute. Come in. Mr. Benny? Yes? Don't you think I have beautiful eyes? Why, of course. Of course. Who are you? Just an old potato. Goodbye. <laughs> oh, I'd like to match him. Sing. That was, uh... I was Let Me Whisper, sung by Kenny Baker. And, Kenny, stop bowing. No wonder you're exhausted there. Well, I got some new suspenders on, and I want to break them in. Oh. Well, anyway, Kenny, your song was very good. And you know, folks, uh, that's the last time this season you'll hear Kenny Baker sing. He's uh, flying to New York tonight right after the broadcast. And Wednesday, he sails for England, where he's going to make a very important picture for Alexander Corda. Uh, what's it going to be, Kenny? I'm going to play the leading role in the Mikado. Well, well. Oh, that's well, well Kenny. Congratulations. Well, I say, that's marvelous. The Mikado. I know you'll be great in it, Kenny. I hope so. Yeah. Say, Jack, what's a Mikado? <laughs> it's fine. He's going to play the Mikado and don't know what it is. Well, what is it? Well, Mary, a uh, Mikado is a sort of a... Well, it's a kind of a... Is it like an avocado? <laughs> well, not exactly, Kenny. A Mikado is a... Well, it's a precious stone. I know that much. Jack, Jack. Mikado is the title for the Emperor of Japan. That's it. That's it. The Emperor, a man that wears precious stones. You didn't say that at all. You said a Mikado was a precious stone. I did not. I said the Mikado was a man that wears precious stones in his crown. And I'll leave it to anyone that wants to work on this program next year if I didn't. <laughs> Well, that's settled. If I'd have saved my money, it wouldn't be. Yeah. 
No, you saved your money, Harris. You always talk about spending, but you've got the first dollar you ever earned from me. That's blood money. I always save that. (laughs) Now, listen, Phil. Blood money, nothing. Nobody here has any trouble getting their money out of me. I pay off, don't I, Mary? Yeah, like bank night in Glasgow. I was just trying to be funny. (laughs) Don, have I ever been late with your check? Oh, you haven't, Jack. I always get it on time. There you are. Of course, I'm bigger than you are. (laughs) Your left leg is bigger than I am. (laughs) But anyway, that has nothing to do with it. Jack always puts my salary under three walnut shells, but I never guess the right one. <laughs> All right, Kenny. I was I was going to let you win next time, but now I won't. Huh? Well, I think there's something fishy about the whole thing. Never mind that. Now, tell us about your trip, Kenny. Uh, what... Uh, what boat are you sailing on? The Normandy. Oh, the Normandy. See, I made a round trip on that boat last year, and it was it's very deluxe. They even have neck rests on the portholes there. <laughs> what, uh, what stateroom have you got? Uh, room 280 on C deck. 280 on C deck. Why, I had that room. See, now there's a coincidence. You're going to Europe on the same boat, the same deck, and the same room. It's the same ocean, too. Yes, it is. <laughs> And, Kenny, as long as you've got the same stateroom, I wish you'd do me a favor. I left my washcloth in the bathroom there. Will you... Will you pick it up for me? Oh, sure, Jack, but uh, how'll I know it's your washcloth? It's got patches on it. <laughs> That's a lie, matey. It's in good condition. <laughs> anyway, I hope you'll have a swell trip, Kenny, and that your picture in England will be a grand success. Thanks, Jack. And now, ladies and gentlemen... We have a special treat for you. This being Father's Day, we have prepared an original... Uh, Come in, Andy. I mean, come in. (laughs) Hiya, Buck! Why, Andy Devine, of all people... This is some surprise. Well, how's the old mayor of Van Nuys? Okay, Buck, I got everything running smooth and under control. Well, that's good. You know, Andy, I was beginning to think you were high hat nuts. You haven't shown up in a couple of weeks. Well, I've been pretty busy at the city hall, and besides that, I just put on a big beauty contest. Oh, a beauty contest. Well, there are a lot of pretty girls out in the valley, huh. there. Yep, and you know, Buck, during the contest, Pa got slapped three times. <laughs> Your pa got slapped, eh? Was he one of the judges? No, he was just standing there. Oh. So he was acting up again. Where was your ma at the time? She was third from the end, Miss Pasadena. <laughs> well, there's certainly a lot of excitement being a mayor. Oh, say, by the way, Andy, Andy uh, Kenny won't be here next Sunday. He's leaving for England. Well, doggone, that's a surprise. Say, Kenny, can I take your place? See you next week. Sure, Andy. Glad to have you. Hold on there. I got something to say about that. I'm afraid we can't use you, Andy. Your voice isn't that good. Oh, now, wait a minute, Buck. Did you ever hear me hit a high C? Only when you're talking. (laughs) But I think we can manage next Sunday without a solo from you. And now, folks, getting back to our play, as I started to announce, this being Father's Day, tonight we are going to present an original drama entitled Back Home in Indiana or Clem Benny's Children. Now, uh, I will play the part of Clem Benny, the father, and Mary Livingston will be my loving, loyal wife. That's me. Yep. We've been married nigh on to 40 years, and she still feels the same about me as the day we were married. You said it. Boy! <laughs> All right, sit down, Ma, and wait for the play. Anyway, Mary will be my wife, Phil Harris will be my oldest son, and Kenny... I'm going to be the Mikado. Not in this, you're not. <laughs> They're going to be my youngest son. We also have a married daughter, and as we're short of actresses, Andy Devine will... Now, play. wait a minute, Buck. Remember the dignity of my office. Well, we got to have a girl, Andy. I can't have all sons. This house will look like the Elks Club. Oh, sh- shucks. I don't want to be a girl. Now, get into your dress, Your Honor, and shut up. <laughs> 
Now, let's see. Uh... And that's my part, Jack. No, Don, I'm not going to tell anybody what it is. I want it to be a surprise. <laughs> Gee, I can hardly wait. <laughs> Control yourself, Don. Now, this play will go on immediately after the next number. Hit it, Phil. Hold it. Come in. Mr. Benny? Yes? Was I in here a little while ago? Yes, you were. You were an old potato. Well, I'm boiled now. Whoopee! Kenny, can't you take him to England with you? Play. That was uh, What Do You Hear from the Mob in Scotland, plaid by Phil Harris and his orchestra. Do you hear that, Phil? Scotland plaid. I said plaid instead of play. I'll forget it if you will. <laughs> Now, I thought that was clever, didn't you, Mary? Well, Jack, as long as you ask me, personally, I... Now for our play, uh, Clem Benny's Children. The uh, locale is the thriving little town of Number Two Breakfast, Indiana. (laughs) It is Father's Day. As the scene opens, we find Clem and his wife, Mariah, seated in the parlor of their broken-down farmhouse. Curtain. Music. Doggone Mariah, it sure is hot today, ain't it? Yep, Clem, it's a sizzler. The hens ain't laid nothing but three-minute eggs for a week. I don't mind that so much, but I was milking the cow last night and scalded myself. We sure could do with a little rain around these parts. I'll say we could. We had an awful dry spell around here. I was out in the pasture this morning and found four camels. Was there any shriners on them? No, they left town. But I think it's going to rain pretty soon. How do you know? I just got a buzz from my rheumatism. <laughs> Say, Ma, I wonder what's keeping the children. They ought to be here by now. Oh, don't be impatient, Clem. Remember, they got a long ways to come. That's right, but I haven't seen them for years, and I'm mighty anxious. By the way, how many children have we got now? Well, let's see. There's Philip, our oldest boy. He's a musician. A musician? Hmm. If he's a musician, Stokowski is a fuller brush man. <laughs> That Philip is about as musical as a bagpipe with asthma. I don't know how that would be. I never had the bagpipe. <laughs> no, but with your asthma and my snoring, the bedroom sounds like an airport. <laughs> <laughs> Who else is coming, Ma? Well, there's our youngest son, Kenneth. He's a movie actor out in Hollywood. Oh, in the flickers, eh? That boy is just plain dumb. How did he get to be an actor? What else do you need? I resent that. Who else is coming home, Ma? Well, there's our daughter, Petunia. Oh, yes, little Petunia. Doesn't seem possible. She's been married two years. Well, it's darn nice of all our children to come home on Father's Day. Wish they'd hurry and get here. Say, that must be one of our kids at the door now. Must be. The wolf went to Atlantic City for the weekend. <laughs> I don't blame him in this heat. Come in. Hello, Ma. Hello, Pa. Happy Father's Day. Fill up, my boy. Welcome home, my son. <laughs> Here, Pa, I bought you a present. It's a combination safety razor and fountain pen. Thanks, son. I'll sit right down and write myself a lather. <laughs> What you doing, Philip? Still playing in an orchestra? No, I got a band of my own now. Curly Harris and his fugitive from a music lesson. <laughs> well, well. And you want to know something, Paul? I'm on the radio, too. Well, well. Making any money? No, I'm working for a chiseler. <laughs> well, well. Shut up. <laughs> I wish Kenneth and Petunia would get here. I'm hungry. I could go for a nice thick steak. Why do you chew it with? You ain't got no teeth. Don't need any. I got sharp gums. <laughs> well, Philip, before I forget it, I want to thank you for that old suit of clothes you sent me last month. Oh, did you like it? No, but there was a bottle of gin in the hip pocket. <laughs> that wasn't gin. That was rubbing alcohol. I should have guessed that. I had the DTs and the snakes were massaging each other. <laughs> Well, let's go in and eat. I can't wait any longer. Wait a minute, Pa. That's either Kenneth or Petunia. Could be the landlord coming for the rent. I better hurry up a little. I might have to vamp him. Well, this suspense is terrible. Come in. Why, Kenneth? 
Come in, my boy. Come in. Hello, Mater. Hello, Governor. Happy Pater's Day. <laughs> Pater's Day? The brats go on Hollywood. Well, Mother, how about a maternal kiss for your offspring? You hear that, Ma? He wants a kiss. Comes near me, I'll slug him. <laughs> Don't blame you. Go on, son. Take off your beanie and sit down. <laughs> So you're a movie actor, eh? Yes, Father. The cinema has beckoned, and I have heeded its call. Why, you little... Hold on, Ma. Don't throw them out till I get my present. <laughs> Come clean, son. What did you bring me for Father's Day? A cravat. That's cravat. Oh. <laughs> well, open up the package. Here it is. A cravat? I don't see nothing there but a necktie. Well, lift it up. It must be underneath. <laughs> Why, Pa, a cravat and a necktie are the same thing. Go on, you don't even know what a Mikado is. You didn't do so well with it either. Quiet, Ma. Oh, by the way, Kenneth, this is your brother, Phil. How do you do? Glad to know you. <laughs> you two ought to get together sometime. Come on, let's eat. My stomach's emptier than a theater when Fred Allen was playing Vaudeville. <laughs> Who's he? Oh, some hillbilly goes around selling toothpaste. Is it any good? Don't know. Never ate any. <laughs> well, come on, kids. Let's go and chase the goat out of the dining room. Say, that must be Petunia now. Come in. Petunia! My daughter! Hiya, Ma! Hiya, Pa! Well, well, our own little Petunia, sweet and pretty as ever. Oh, gosh, Pa. Ain't you going to give your daddy a kiss? Not if I can get out of it. Oh. But I want to kiss Ma, though. Skip it, Petunia. I'll take a rain check. Well, daughter, did you bring me something for Father's Day? Sure did, Pa. Here it is right in this basket. Where? Right here. Go ahead and lift up the blanket. Okay. Well, I'll be swift. <laughs> A grandson. Ah, uh, cushy, cushy, cushy. <laughs> Dog gone, Petunia. I never thought you'd be a mother. Neither did I. Well, he sure is a cute little rascal. What's his name? Donald. Oh, hello, Donald. Go, go, go. Hey, Mariah, look at our little grandson. Isn't he a cute baby? Some baby's got an inner tube for a teething ring. <laughs> he sure has. Well, now that we're all here, let's go in and eat. Come on along, Petunia. I'm starved. Oh, wait a minute, Paul. I want to go upstairs and shave. Oh, you can shave later. Let's go in the dining room. Hey, wait a minute. What about me? Did you hear that, Petunia? The baby said something. Why, those are the first words he's ever spoken. I'm sure glad he can talk. So am I. I'm sitting on a safety pin. Oh, the poor thing. Come here to Grandpa. <laughs> Shut up, John. You're making a fool of yourself. Play, Phil. We're a little late, so good night, folks. The Jell-O program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston and Phil Harris and his orchestra. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for the last time this season, we bring you our master of ceremonies, a man who stands apart the state of famous seat, and not only the state of our state of the state of the the greatest state of famous seat of our state of the state Jack Benny. <laughs> Well, hello again. This is Jack Ralstram talking. <laughs> and hey, Don, what's the idea? What was that all about? Well, I'll tell you, Jack, this being our last program, I thought I'd hand you a little surprise, so I had a friend of mine introduce you. Well, you surprised me, all right, but say, he's a kind of a screwy guy. What does he do, anyway? He's a test pilot for revolving doors. <laughs> oh, Oh, well, that explains it. But at that, Don, I kind of wish you had introduced me tonight. You know, this is the last time this gang of ours will be chatting together for 13 long weeks. Oh, that's right, Jack. It makes me feel kind of sad. Me too, Phil. But then we shouldn't be so gloomy about it. After all, we'll all be together next season. Not at these prices. <laughs> uh, 
That's the trouble with you, Phil. All you think about is money. Women and money. There's no use thinking about women without it. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> Anyway, Phil, what do you need with more money? Gee, you spend it right and left. Look at that suit you've got on. I bet it cost you at least $85. Yep, I walked up two flights and got hooked. Uh, <laughs> just the same, you'll be back with me next season and without a raise. Oh, uh, by the way, Jack, where are you going on your vacation? Have you made any plans? Uh, well, Don, I didn't know what to do this summer, so after thinking it over, I finally decided to go to Spain. Spain? Why, Jack, you don't want to go to Spain. There's a war going on. There is? Darn, darn that travel agent. Oh, but Jack, you should have known about it. There, it's been in the papers every day. On the theatrical page? No. Well, it's a wonder Luella Parsons wouldn't say something about it in her column. <laughs> say, Jack, when you pick up a paper, don't you read anything but the theatrical page? Well, yes, I... I always... should think that a fellow like you would try and keep up with current events and know what's going on in the world. Well, I do. I can tell you every move Dick Tracy has made in the last five years. <laughs> Don't tell me about current events. Never mind the funny papers. What about the front page? Well, you know anything about the adjournment of Congress? Do you know anything about the China-Japanese war? Well, Do you I... know anything about the situation in Russia? Well, Do you I... know anything about the crisis in the Mediterranean? Wait till you get to the Lewis Schmeling fight. Well, I... I make a monkey out of you. And listen, Phil, you're supposed to be a musician, an orchestra leader. Let me ask you something. Do you know what crescendo is? No. Do you know what fortissimo is? No. Do you know what pizzicato is? Yes, it's green ice cream. <laughs> That's pistachio. <laughs> Phil, you certainly are a musical genius. <laughs> How'd you ever become the leader of this orchestra? I'm the only guy in the band who looks good from the back. <laughs> That's a fine reason. Oh, shut up. <laughs> Don't tell me to shut up, or you'll be reading the Help Wanted Orchestra ad. You now, boys, that. boys, boys, this is our last program, so act like gentlemen. Oh, yes, we shouldn't be fighting like this on our farewell broadcast. I'm sorry, Phil. Well, it's all my fault, Jack. I shouldn't aggravate you. Oh, well. After all, if you're illiterate, that's your business. <laughs> That's right, Phil. And if you think Beethoven plays third base for the Giants, that's your business. <laughs> hello, everybody. How's business? Oh, hello, Mary. So you want to hear something? Phil, who knows nothing about music, wants a raise next season. He does? Well, maybe he needs it. Needs it? And all he does is throw his money away. Look at that suit he's wearing. He paid $85 for it. Well, what about it? Well, my suit looks just as nice as yours, and I only paid thirty-two fifty. And he got two pair of pants with it. That's right. And a trip to Catalina. That's a lie. <laughs> You're lying, Mary. Uh-huh. I got that trip to Catalina with my sailor suit. <laughs> anyway, as Don was saying, let's not quarrel tonight. Huh? Yes. You know, Mary, this is the last time we'll all be getting together until October. I don't know how you feel about it, but I'm all choked up. I feel all right. No, well, nothing bothers you. But I don't know. I'm sentimental about things like this. Gee, you know, fellas, I just hate parting with people. Oh, you do? Yeah, Jack stayed in the eighth grade three years because he hated to say goodbye to the teacher. <laughs> now, wait a minute, Mary. I was not in the eighth grade three years. Then you were in the third grade eight years. <laughs> well, we were snowbound. <laughs> You know the trouble with you, Mary, you have an ounce of sediment. Or sentiment. <laughs> you wouldn't care if this gang never saw each other again. Oh, yes, I would, Jack. And if you want to know something, I wrote a beautiful poem all about this farewell program. You did? Well, that's more like it. Then. Let's hear it, Mary. Yeah, swing it, kid. <laughs> What's the title of it? Fare thee well and toodaloo. Oh. And I dedicate it to all our listeners. We understand. Go ahead. <clears throat> <clears throat> We have worked so hard all year to bring you laughs and much good cheer. And now we say goodbye to you. So fare thee well and toodaloo. All right, now get hot, Mary. <laughs> I hate to see this season close, but when you gotta go, you gotta go. It's a fine poem. <laughs> but we'll be back to bring you joy. So fare thee well and toodaloo. Toodaloo? You hide me. Hmm. <laughs> Fare 
Joe Harris will be back with us, and so will Kenny, Don, and Gus. Who's Gus? The janitor. Oh. <laughs> but leaving you makes us feel awful. So fare thee well and toodle waffle. <laughs> I'd like to pour some syrup on you, Mary, really. Quiet. There's one more verse. Oh. So once again, I say adieu. You said it ten times. I'll say it again, and nuts to you. <laughs> All right, get it over with. So once again, I say adieu to him and her and he and you. Poems are made by fools like me, but only Jack can make a dollar go further than anybody else. <laughs> What? So fare thee well, and Zazoo Zaz. <laughs> Mary, Mary, tell me, look, how do you ever write a poem like that? Oh, I don't know. It just comes to me. Well, the next time it comes, don't answer the door. Play <laughs> for That was Couldn't Be Cuter with a vocal refrain by Phil Harris. Say, Phil, you kind of surprised us there. Well, this is the last program, and Kenny isn't here, so I thought I'd show off a little. Kind of put it over, didn't I? Yes, I like the way you sing, Phil. You sound like you have Southern Fried Tonsil. <laughs> <laughs> so you were pinch hitting for Kenny, eh? Huh? Yeah. Of course, I don't mean I sing as good as Kenny. Oh, don't you, Phil? <laughs> I don't think I even sing half as good. Well, no. Or a quarter as good. Keep that up, Phil. You'll hit it. <laughs> but you know, fellas, no, all kidding aside, you know, it seems kind of strange Kenny not being here today. Yes, I can just picture him on the Normandy having the time of his life. Four whole days on that boat. He must be almost to England. And the captain must be almost crazy. <laughs> oh, Kenny will get along all right. He may act dumb, but he knows what to do on a boat. Who doesn't? All you have to do is lean over. Well, I'll bet he's a pretty good sailor at that. <laughs> See, I wish I could take a nice long trip this summer. I know there's so many places I'd like to go to. Well, what's stopping you? Oh, I don't know, Don. It's so expensive. But I would like to travel around, though. Why don't you get kidnapped by some gypsies? <laughs> oh, I don't play the violin that good. <laughs> What are, you... <laughs> what are you going to do this summer, Mary? Oh, I don't know. I'd like to go out in the country where there's nothing but cows and chickens and traveling salesmen. Well, yes, yes. The country is nice. And now, ladies and gentlemen, going from the book of the month to another gala event, Mary Livingston will... Uh... Are you ready, Mary? Yes, but I'm nervous. Mary, there's nothing to worry about. You can sing your one little chorus, and Phil will be standing right there leading the orchestra. That's what I'm worried about. Oh, well, I'll tell you what, Mary, you won't need the orchestra at all. If you want to, I'll accompany you on my violin. How's that? That's awfully sweet of you, Jack, but it's a lousy idea. <laughs> well, it was just a suggestion. And if you want to know something, Mary, I didn't even bring my violin. Oh, you hocked it again, eh? <laughs> Listen, Phil, I haven't hocked my violin since I had charge account. <laughs> and now, without further ado, Mary will sing Says My Heart from the motion picture Coconut Grove. Hold it a minute, Mary. Come in. Mr. Benny? Yes? Is this your last program of the season? Yes, it is. Now, will you please tell me who are you? Hi-ho, the bald ranger. Goodbye. <laughs> oh, well, this is his last affair, so I'll be kind. Sing, Mary. <laughs> that was, uh, Says My Heart, played by the orchestra, sung by Mary Livingston, and applauded by our audience. Well, Mary, you see, you did all right. Yeah, but I was pretty nervous, believe me. Oh, we didn't notice it a bit. Oh, no, Mary, it was swell. Yes, sir. Gee, everybody can do a number but me. You know, the only time I ever sing is in my bathtub. You ought to sing more often. <laughs> All right, Phil, that's your last joke this year. <laughs> Say, Andy was supposed to show up tonight. Where is he, anyway? Here I am, Buck. I've been standing over there in the corner for half an hour. Well, I didn't see you over there. Well, Andy, how do you like the program so far? Oh, I think I can still save it. <laughs> hmm. Well, I'm glad you dropped in, though. We wouldn't want to close up shop this season without old gravel throats. Hmm? Uh, what are you going to do this summer, Andy? I'm going to take a boat trip to Honolulu. Honolulu? Oh. 
Well, you'll have a swell time. Believe me, Andy, Waikiki is a very romantic spot. So they tell me, Buck. So they tell me. Yeah. <laughs> you'll find a lot of beautiful girls. I suppose you'll be chasing them up and down the beach. I ain't going there to pick pineapples. <laughs> Why, Andy, you little chicken chaser, are you going on the trip all alone? No, I'm taking Pa with me. He's more anxious than I am. Oh. Well, what about your ma? Isn't she going to Honolulu with you? No, Pa told her that they don't allow women there. Now, that's silly. You must have had travel folders around. Did your ma see all the girls in bathing suits? Yeah, but Pa drew beards on them. <laughs> I can say is your paw sure gets away with murder. Oh, no, he don't. Ma put a dictaphone in his hat. I see. <laughs> well, Buck, I just dropped in to say goodbye, and I hope you have a nice vacation. Well, guess I'll run along now. Now, wait a minute, Andy. I just happened to think of something. This is the last time we'll be together for a while, so how about all of us going over to my house and have a little informal supper and a farewell party? Oh! Gee, I'm glad I thought of that. But, Jack, this will be an imposition on your health, won't it? No, I'll call up Rochester right away and have Swing High, my cook, prepare something. <laughs> Mary, get my house on the phone, will you? Okay. Say, fellas, you remember the last party we had at my house? Oh, we sure had a great time. Will you ever forget those scotch and sodas? Yeah, I never had such a small hangover in my life. <laughs> Is that so? You're just not used to good stuff. Uh, just you know. a minute. Here you are, Jack. Oh, thanks. Hello? Hello, Josephine. How are you? <laughs> this isn't Josephine. This is Mr. Benny. Oh, hello, Mr. Benny. What do you hear from the mob? <laughs> now, look, Rochester. I'm bringing the whole gang over to the house for a bite to eat. So tell Swing High to prepare something. All right, but he ain't gonna like it. I don't care whether he likes it or not. Now, tell him to fix up a big platter of hors d'oeuvres first. Or oh, what? Hors d'oeuvres. You know, those little things you put on crackers. Oh, peanut butter. <laughs> no, I mean appetizers. Now, what have we got in the icebox? Some eggs, some bologna, and your raccoon coat. <laughs> My raccoon coat, Rochester, when I told you to put it in cold storage, I didn't mean in the icebox. Now, you take that raccoon coat right out of there. I tried to, and it bit me. <laughs> Never mind that. Now, tell Swing High to get busy on the food, and you prepare a nice bowl of punch. Punch? We ain't got nothing to put in it. Wait a minute. What became of that quart of gin I bought last week? What's that? <laughs> you heard me. That quart of gin, where is it? I think we got a bad connection. <laughs> Rochester, what became of that quart of gin? That stuff can evaporate, you know. <laughs> Rochester, for the last time, what became of that bottle of gin? Well, if you must know, I thought it was water and drank it. That's fine. We'll get another bottle right away. No, thanks. I'm high enough now. <laughs> I mean for the punch. We'll be over in half hour, so have everything ready. Wait a minute. You better talk to Swing High. He's about ready to go to bed. All right. Put him on the phone. And more trouble with my help. Oh, let's call the whole thing off. No, everything will be all right. Oh, hello. Hello, Mr. Blenny. N this is Swing High. Now, listen, Swing. Uh, I'm bringing my gang over at the house, and I want to prepare a real nice supper. Oh, no, no, no. Me not work it till now. I may go to sleep early. You won't go to sleep. You'll do exactly as I say. Slays you. Slays me. <laughs> Now go in the kitchen and get to work. I know that, but my friends are coming over. I am not. Now that's just about enough. Now listen, Swing High, you're fired. Okay, see you tomorrow. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. Put Rochester on the phone. Darn that cook. It's a gratitude after I taught him how to make chopped suey. <laughs> if I'd have known that that... You want me, boss? Yes, Rochester. Now, it's up to you to fix a little supper for us. So do the best you can. Or the best you can. <laughs> All right, I'll whip up some. How many is there going to be? Well, there's five of us in the orchestra. There'll be about 25 altogether. Is that clear? <laughs> Rochester. <laughs> Rochester. Hey, Rochester. I hung up. <laughs> Oh, 
what to you? Well, what are we going to do? What happens now? Say, I'll tell you what, fellas. I'll take you all to the Trocadero. Hooray! 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 And wait a minute, and it's my treat. No kidding, Jack. Yes, sir. For Jack the Jolly Good Fellow, Jack the Jolly Good Fellow. I'm a jolly good fellow. But wait till you get the check. La 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 And we'll all be back with you again on Sunday night, October 2nd. Well, good night, folks, and I hope you all have a very happy vacation this summer.